You're not lying. You didn't threaten to kill him. Of course I did. He 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 molested me. The only reason I worked with him is because I needed exposure. I really don't know how to get my name out there. Um, I've been trying to be consistent online with my own posting and creating my own stuff. Um, that's besides. I mean, that's why I'm on the videos. Like it's obvious that I'm there for attention. They were gonna film uh, people and their daily lives, and I was like, okay, like cool, like that'd be streaming, like. I would have my own stream show. Like I would have my own TV show. Did you hear him? Oh, he said we'd ha I'd have my own TV show. That's not what he said, bro. It never, I, that's why I kept talking to him because he never, he kept saying the opportunity would come for me. He wanted me to do it. And then he never gave me the chance. Okay, but based off the text messages, see, that's what I'm saying. Like none of this is true. Man, there's always this person in the group. There's always this person in the group, bro, who's a leech, doesn't do anything on their own, e-begs, asks bigger content creators to like give them a boost, has nothing to provide their audiences. It's ego, it's all, all control, it's all a power game. I can, it's so obvious. I don't understand how people- It's it's really not. I think this is a normal narrative that liars do, is liars will claim a, a power imbalance. And look, I feel like I'm very empathetic and sympathetic to real victims because I think we need to be in the world, but I'm just not getting anything authentic from him. And maybe I'm wrong. I would love to be proven wrong. I would love to see something that makes sense in this story. You know what I mean? I haven't come out and like made videos about that and shit. I, like, I think it's disgusting he has a platform and that's what I mean by murder him. That's why I mean I'm gonna kill you because I'm going to end your career. I'm going to not, like, you don't deserve you don't deserve your followers. Caleb Hammer might sue me for this video, and that isn't clickbait at all. He's already threatened Lee. Hmm, do we like him? What's his vibes already? Do we like this guy's vibes? He's putting a lot of effort into this video already, so it better be good. Legal action against me multiple times before I even release this video, simply for looking into a story he doesn't want covered and not immediately accepting his point of view. Now, um, well, it's because if it's not real and it's a fake story, uh, it's really scary to have false accusations about you out there in the world. So you better have some receipts. To me, that seems very suspicious and almost like Caleb didn't want me to find something. And spoiler alert, yes, I found some very interesting pieces of- Did he find interesting pieces of information? Uncut says Caleb's boy crush, super diddly, says I would like to personally stick my blank in his hole, in a hole of his. Any hole will do, thank you. Uncut, gross. Okay, it's gonna get saucy, bro. Right? Everybody like the stream. I'm gonna get demonetized, I can feel it. Information we'll be discussing later in the video. If you guys don't know Caleb Hammer, he does a finance show on YouTube. It's really good. We watched it sometimes. Uh, and I didn't know he was involved with OF until the story came out either. So kind of interesting that he does OF stuff. Now, a few weeks ago, I was presented with some information that Caleb Hammer, a finance YouTuber with 1 million subscribers. Wait, true. Maiden says he's doing that manipulative thing where he has that newscaster voice, which is supposed to imply non-bias, but he's uh, saying something extra biased. Mm-hmm. Kept... Rain says literally off-brand Coffeezilla. Absolutely off-brand Coffeezilla. Had allegedly acted inappropriately with a guest on his show. I reached out to Caleb by email to get his side of the story, as these allegations were pretty severe, and I had no interest in making a video without getting everyone's side of the story. Mm. Caleb initially was very on, friendly over email. Hold on, hold on. The, oh, he's got a pretty big channel. Scott Schaefer, 154,000 views. Okay, he's got a pretty big following. Genuine question for fans of Caleb Hammer that actually watched the video. What's your honest take here? Okay, I would say we're kind of fans of Caleb. I mean, we're just like, we watch people's content, but like, we like Caleb. So let's see what we think. Email and denied all the claims against. Hey, Scott, sorry, I've not seen your other messages, but someone else did ask me and I'll send the same message to you. I've been dealing with that former guest, Zeke, uh, has said for almost a year now, he's been on my show three times in a pilot episode for a show called Dating Money. And after begging to be on for the fourth time for months, I said he needs to make actual progress before he came on again. And he said it was his quote, his career too, and eventually blew up. He started posting random allegations online in different places, many of which didn't catch my attention and knowledge at the time. Over the course of a month, the allegations kept changing until he got something that was picked up by other people online. Let's, let's go ahead and overlap this with the Georgia Not Found and the Dream allegations as well. Remember that there's a commonality and category of accuser. All accusers are different. False accusers, sorry. All false accusers are different. But one kind of vibe in a false accuser is having multiple different stories that change over time with little to no receipts. And there's always a clout-oriented connection. So a desire for something greater. They're kind of like 
not doing the best in life. So they cling to someone who's more successful to hopefully boost their career. I'm not saying that's happening with Zeke yet because we haven't watched the video, but already Caleb is making that argument. Fam says, Britt, give us your best newscaster voice. <clears throat> Hello, everybody, and welcome to today's video where we are going to deep dive into Caleb's butthole. Did I do it? Okay, let's go. <laughs> Tim, and even told me to have a great day. What a nice young man. Unfortunately, that attitude quickly changed when I didn't immediately accept what he had to say as fact. He told me he wasn't interested in doing a Zoom call. Because I appreciate you getting back to me, Caleb. The two of you have very different versions of what's going on. I did a Zoom call with Zeke a few minutes ago, and he claims he thinks there was no friend. You were trying to connect him with it for OnlyFans content, and this was just a ploy to allow you to hook up with him. Well, that's not true, because we know he has a OnlyFans. He also claimed that you inappropriately felt up his leg after one of your appearances on his show and made him uncomfortable. Obviously, these are very serious allegations. Is it the serious allegation that he felt up his leg? Because, you know, my grandma used to do that to me in a non-sexual way. And then uh, I did. That was a joke. That was a joke. Fuck. That was a joke. <laughs> Everybody relax. Um, but also, see how the guy is saying that, like, Maiden said, he, he pretended to be indifferent. But he's already, like, going at Caleb Hammer too hard. He's already coming out as if he is guilty. So I did a Zoom call with Zeke and he said there is no friend. Um, Yeah, Caleb doesn't want to do the Zoom call. Not the biggest fan of the internet drama industry and I do not wish to participate in it. Yeah, unless this guy's a journalist. Hold on, Scott Schaefer. Let's see. Who is Scotty? Scotty. Okay, so he does... Yeah, he does like a uh, drama. He's literally, he is like, like half-assed Coffeezilla, isn't he? Not that I love Coffeezilla. I don't know why his attitude is so pretentious to me. So I don't watch him personally. That's my opinion. But um, okay, so I does he do like interviews? Let me see. Or not interviews. So over the past couple of weeks, I've been pretty sick. I actually went to the doctor for and a half pounds in just one month. Okay, interesting. I guess. I expose scams as well as do deep dives into fraud and scams of the past. Ooh, I could not. It's so negative. Okay. So he's like a scam. Yeah, he is like Coffeezilla light, I guess. Maybe. Okay. Well, let's see. Because he wasn't interested in participating in the internet drama industry, which I found to be quite funny since, in my opinion, his channel is entirely based on drama around other people's finances. He then made his first... Well, it's, it's, it's not... No, it's, it's... Okay, he sensationalizes the content for clicks and views, which is normal, but he's not a drama channel. He's a finance channel that uses, like, sensationalism to bring viewers in. But he's not, you know what I mean? He's not a drama channel. Caleb isn't a drama channel. But anyways, okay. So see how this guy's already mad that Caleb won't talk to him? Bro, relax. First of many legal threats stating that in preparation for your video, we will be ready for legal repercussions for defamatory statements with very clear- Oh, damn. Okay, Caleb coming out with the lawyers. Caleb's talked about this on the Ice Coffee Hour, so I'm a little biased going in. I do watch Caleb. I watch Grab and Stefan. They're friends. I've watched the stuff they've done together. And I've seen Caleb talk about like he's very anxious about all of this stuff. He doesn't love the online stuff. He's not the biggest fan. He also said in interviews that his guests and him choose thumbnails and titles, especially as of late, for the videos. So the, the guests get to pick sort of like the harsh titles with him. So he's not just doing it. He's not like bullying his guests, right? So we'll see. Ah, Villainy says Caleb subreddit turned against him a while ago, I noticed. Ugh, I don't like Reddit. I think it's a cesspool of just mean, mean people, specifically mean autists. Not all autistic people are mean. Just a certain category of mean autistic person tends to be on Reddit. And here we only like nine nice autists, okay? My community is nice. People who are nice and have autism. Other communities are mean people who have autism. And then their special interest hyper focus is bullying you and creating rumors about you, <sighs> ma'am. Your evidence proving our case. Now keep in mind that this was after I had sent him only two emails and was just trying to get the details around the initial case of. I don't know. I don't like this guy already, but I might be biased. Let's see. Appropriate behavior I was first aware of. Threatening legal action so quickly in the initial fact gathering stage without any video being made yet really set off my alarms that something odd was going Maybe. on here. That could be weird. Why was Caleb so defensive about me looking? That could be weird. That could be a weird reaction, but, but 
also the drama channels do tend to like they're like sharks in the water waiting for blood so i'm sure caleb knew that you know what i mean he already knew that uh people were gonna come for him so who knows maybe it was a red flag that caleb did that or maybe he was just getting ready because a lot of youtubers don't have the money to legally defend themselves but I think Caleb might be one of those YouTubers who tries his best to do that, actually. So he might be a different braid of YouTuber, like an old, like a new, because he's new. <gasps> Ooh, epiphany. Caleb is a new YouTuber, which means he might be more open to suing people because he's running a business versus like a lot of YouTubers like myself. We're just like having fun and doing a community thing. And yes, it's our job. But I'm not thinking about suing people. You know, because I'm not running like that kind of a business. But Caleb has employees. Caleb needs to run a really strict business. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Maybe the newer YouTubers are strictly business minded versus I'm thinking more like I'm just in my office streaming. You feel me? You know what I mean? Into this case further. If the initial person who came forward was so obviously a liar, why quickly jump to legal threats against someone who was trying to tell a story that would present all sides equally? Caleb claimed that his lawyer had gathered all videos and text that clearly show his first accuser, Zeke, is lying and made the statement that they had prepared to release these. I asked in the follow-up email if I could see any of the evidence they'd gathered, including videos Zeke supposedly deleted. No, why does this YouTuber think he can just get... Listen to this YouTuber. Hi, I know your lawyer, you are lawyer and you are working on a legal case. Can I have that? Can I have those notes, please? Who is this random YouTuber who's fucking way smaller than Caleb coming in and assuming he can just like get information from his lawyers <laughs> what <laughs> and even told caleb directly that if he can prove to me zeke is lying i wouldn't make any video on this topic and would move on caleb responded upset for some reason that i asked wait 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 video on this topic told caleb directly that if he can prove to me zeke is lying i wouldn't make any video on this how fucking yes, Miss Fishy. I don't like how entitled this is. He's so entitled. Am I going in already with too much bias? I'm like, listen to the way he talks. He's like, well, if you give me your evidence, even though you might need it in court, you want to give it like, who are you, dude? You're a random YouTuber, bro. On this topic and would move on. Caleb responded upset for some reason that I asked for the evidence that two emails before he had said he was prepared to release. I don't understand why Caleb would get mad at me for asking to see the evidence he already stated he gathered and was prepared to release. Maybe this guy is neurodivergent. <laughs> Maybe he just doesn't know why that's so inappropriate. What? That would be so, that feels so inappropriate to me to ask that. Hey, you, this information that you said you would release but haven't released, can you release it to me? What? What? To me, that seemed like a fairly basic request, and as I stated to Caleb before, if the evidence was as strong as he suggested, I would have never made a video covering any of this. Following all this, Caleb decided to publicly post to his community tab and Twitter a long post claiming I was just a drama YouTuber and questioning my integrity. He then happily responded to one post on Twitter saying, I'm excited. I've never sued anyone before. This will be fun. Lawsuits are never... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ethan does the same thing. Ethan gets high off suing people. Caleb says, yeah, I finally got canceled. He's obviously coping because I've seen Caleb basically almost cry on podcasts about it. He's obviously just trying to be brave, but like he's failing. Here comes the drama after a year of Zeke threatening to kill me and dox me and harassing me for not letting him come on my show. Someone is actually going to platform him. YouTube drama shows don't have the best reputation of journalistic integrity. Well, because they're not journalists, but I hope Scott oh, this is the guy we're watching, is better than most, though I personally never consumed his content. I can't believe this guy was tried to ruin my life multiple times, but I wouldn't allow him on my, because I wouldn't allow him on my show again. It happens. He never improved, and I only lied to me on the show. Is still trying to harm my life. I'm glad that most people will be objective and see that he has bragged about it being, quote, for the drama in the past, and he's a compulsive liar. Sounds like it. The problem with Caleb's show is it does attract a lot of struggling people this is gross i hope our culture does better in the future than feed off stuff like this yes as the audience yes as the audience is my life i've always promised to be transparent and always will be f clout chasers okay and questioning my integrity he then ha well he didn't you know but like it's because you he's not okay first of all he's not questioning your integrity he's questioning the industry's integrity and you're it's not it doesn't have a good reputation that's like saying keemstar has a good reputation what? 
Keemstar doesn't have a good reputation. I don't watch drama channels. I'm pr- like, I watch certain drama channels, but I don't watch T channels. If you have T in your name, I'm probably not going to watch you. There's just like too much negativity and too much like wanting to bring people down. But you're not journalists either. So like I know Coffeezilla is in his own league, so I don't want to associate Coffeezilla with anything that I'm saying. Um, but like that's Coffeezilla is in his own league, right? Like he's doing, he's at a level that most people aren't going to be at. So like, it, it does, it makes sense to question these drama channels in terms of their integrity. Happily responded to one post on Twitter saying, I'm excited. I've never sued anyone before. This will be fun. Lawsuits are never fun. And that was in relation to drama alert. Look, it's drama alert. C- Caleb Hammer responds of being accused of allegedly asking a show guest to do inappropriate things. I did. I've never sued anyone before. This will be fun. Lawsuits are never f- Bryson says, do you feel like your content appeals to struggling people? Fun YouTube fact. I try very hard not to attract very struggling people. And I try very hard to attract the middle of the ground people. So my past content used to attract really, really struggling people. And I realized like they weren't ready for my kind of content. They really needed to do other things before they could handle it. I feel like my content is middle of the ground struggle. So you're struggling, but you're not struggling like really struggling. You're struggling like medium struggling. And eventually you'll either outgrow my content because you've just you're just going to do something else or my content hopefully will grow as well along with you but I on purpose try very hard to title my videos and to attract an audience that is like got a good head on their shoulders and might be struggling but isn't like in the depths of their despair because it's just outside of my specialty you know what I mean so I I try very hard to find a struggling community that's ready to get better and ready to like, you know what I mean? I don't want the people that are still in the, I need to be validated about my life sucking because that's just like, that's like more mental health, I feel like, than philosophy. You know what I mean? I I want a very specific kind of struggle. I want the person that's like ready to sign up for the gym and actually like go to the gym. Not the person who says they're going to sign up or the person who does sign up and never goes. I'm trying to find the person who like literally is like, okay, I'm going to the gym. And then they actually go to the gym. You know what I'm saying? And as somebody who signed up for the gym and didn't go to the gym and now goes to the gym, I understand. I was at a stage in my life too. That was a struggle. And now I'm in the other side of it where I'm actually going to the gym. You know what I mean? Fun, Caleb. It doesn't matter if you win or lose. You'll be devoting countless hours to fighting the case. And eventually the discovery process will take place where lawyers dig through every document they can get their hands on and uncover every and any secret currently hidden. I've also spoken to lawyers about this case and you clearly would be classified as a public figure. If you sued me for defamation, you would have to prove actual malice that I- God, I hate him already. Listen to this. Why are you being such a jerk? Caleb's a person. Either treat him with the dignity of being a person or stop coming at him like he's the bad guy. You've already decided he's the bad guy. So this guy has already decided Caleb is the bad guy. So we're not seeing a video where the nuance existed. Like he's already treating Caleb like a bad person. And Caleb was treating him like a possibly dangerous person, which I think Caleb gets to do as the victim. So assuming Caleb is the victim, he responded correctly to this guy. Assuming he's the predator, he could have, I think if Caleb was the predator, he would have probably done the interview and tried to make himself look better. But when you're the victim in a situation, often you don't want to talk to more people because you're dealing with a legal case and it's scary to give your information to some random YouTuber. So I kind of feel like if Caleb was a bad guy, he would have done the interview with this guy like Zeke did. See how Zeke did the interview with this guy for the attention? I just feel like if Caleb being a million subscriber channel and this guy being a 100,000 subscriber channel... I just feel like it's better for Caleb not to talk to this guy than to talk to him. So the fact that this guy thought Caleb not talking to him was a red flag, but Zeke talking to him was a green flag is a red flag. (laughs) A new information presented in the video was false and posted it anyway. Seeing as how I've given you multiple attempts to talk to me about the issue discussed in the video, as well as do everything in my power to verify it's accurate, I think that would be a very hard case for you to win. Wow, that sounded like a threat, bro. In my opinion, any lawsuit you file would just be a sad attempt to try and get revenge for not portraying you in the positive light you want everyone to see you in. Yo, this guy's kind of bad, bro. Not bad. I don't believe in bad and good, you know, but red flag. Yes, Bryson, red flag. This guy's a red flag, bro. 
he doesn't talk very nice. Look, I'm very critical of people, but he don't talk like a like a real person. He talks like a robot, bro, and not in the autistic way. We would have loved that. He talks like a he talks like Keemstar. He talks like Keemstar. He objectifies you. You're not even a person to him. You're a story. Oh, that's fucked. Your sudden legal threats for simply asking questions will also portray you in a negative light if you do end up suing me, and any lawsuit you file will simply be a waste of time. But that's just my opinion, and Caleb can do whatever he feels needs to be done going forward. Now that we've got past all of Caleb's legal threats, let's get into the actual allegations against Caleb. First, we'll be talking about the original accuser of Caleb named Zeke, and then we'll talk about the further- Okay, oh, wait, go back to the vibes. First, we'll be talking about the original accuser of Caleb named Zeke, and then- Okay, what do we think for vibes? Okay, got a 70s vibe. Okay, got a very interesting aesthetic. Uh, got a little bit of f f 70s fuckboy vibes. Okay. Um... I mean, you know, he's kind of like ugly attractive, you know, but I bet he thinks he's really hot. But he's like, he's got to look to him. Like if he was a nice person, he would be attractive. But if he's a mean person, he's ugly. But I'm not sure yet. Let's wait until we hear him talk. But he's got like a 1970s fuckboy vibe, right? Then we'll talk about the further alleged text of Caleb I was given after. Okay, okay. What many people don't know is that many of the early guests on Caleb Hammer's show were actually paid actors hired off of a website known as Backstage to appear on the show. Okay. Zeke was one of the actors that claims to have found out about Caleb's show from the site, and from the listing Zeke showed me, the offer was quite generous with an... Hey, Esteban, would love to discuss having an upcoming episode on our show. He said in the description... Oh, so he's doing like reality TV. Okay, this is a reality TV education shoot, focus shoot... It should not take more than a few hours. We'll provide 24 of an hour for the shoot and 25% commission on all revenue generated from the episode for 12 months. Whoa, that is good. We are anticipating this commission to range 2,500 to 8,000 depending on the video performance. <gasps> oh, so Caleb did like reality TV show in the beginning. I wonder if he did that to build an audience so he could have real people come on. Oh, that's interesting. That is, I've never seen someone do this. A YouTube channel giving you their AdSense for a year? That's cool. Because videos continue to make money over time. That's kind of cool. Okay. We're, uh, are you okay with being filmed in a reality environment? Able to be in Austin, Texas for the day of the shoot? Interesting. Initial small $25 appearance fee and then a 25% commission on all revenue generated wow. from the episode for 12- Man, he wouldn't even have to offer that and people would still show up. 12 months. Anticipated commission was believed to range from $2,500 to $8,000 depending on video performance. Zeke, only 19 at the time, jumped at the chance to make to him what seemed like a large sum of money. Sure. Many people have seen Zeke's episode, have called him an insufferable brat, and way worse things, but don't seem- Leeching off his mom to fund his la lazy lifestyle. ...to understand that the attitude portrayed by Zeke isn't true to his normal- Okay, so the beginning episodes of Financial Audit had paid actors, I guess? personality from what were they paid actors no they weren't paid actors no he made it sound like that he fucked he fucking got me didn't he he made it sound like a paid actor but this isn't a paid actor because caleb said that he expected zeke to do better but he never did do better now i'm confused again wait see this guy's fucking me up with his language what i've seen talking to him and it was designed to get as many views as possible to increase his chance of making more money and getting more screen time this tactic ended up working, and Zeke appeared two more times on the Caleb Hammer show, racking up a total of over 1 million views across the three episodes he appeared. Okay. Those view totals should have netted him a large sum of money if the commission payments seen in the job offer were paid. However yeah, Aaliyah says, so Caleb pays his guests. Yeah, he pays for their travel sometimes, or I think he compensates them because it's an all-day thing. You know what I mean? So he does, he does offer them compensation, which is like, I think it's nice. You know what I mean? I think that's nice. Um, Techno says Caleb has always paid his guests. Yeah, I think that's a nice gesture, honestly. Um, it's paid, but it's reality TV, so it's not acting. It's like probably both, right? Where they play it up, but also don't play it up, maybe? I'm not sure. Let's keep watching. Let's see. However, Zeke's claim to have only received received a couple hundred dollars in total for his time on the show. Caleb no okay. longer offers commission payouts on his newer post. Oh, okay. That makes sense. Okay. Things for actors on his show. And since he won't talk. He keeps calling them actors on the show, but I don't think that's the right word. Is it because he keeps calling it a reality TV show? But the actor implies it's scripted. 
which I think is wrong. I don't think it's scripted. So do you think this is like a manipulation tactic to use this like language actor versus YouTube guest? Do you know what I'm saying? Is this a, is he manipulating us or am I just being like, uh, am I just being snippety snip snip? Talk to me and threaten to sue me. I can't give his side of the story if the commission offered to Zeke was real or if those payments were ever made. So for now, Caleb's side of the story on that will have to remain a mystery. Okay, so we don't know if he was ever really compensated Zeke. There's an old posting I have linked below that shows that commission offer, but I've never heard of any of the actors who appeared on the show receiving that amount. If you were one of the actors who did get those payments, I would love to hear from you, and my email is linked below. While the issue of the alleged missing payments is important, the bigger issue came up in July of 2022 after Zeke's first appearance on the show when Caleb ended up leaving a very disturbing audio message on Ooh. Zeke's phone. Okay. You tell him you're a cool dude. I thought you said you didn't want to wait until you learned more about discussing it in person. You don't have to do anything you don't want to to be very clear. Does that help clear up some things? If you're not interested, it's totally okay. I'm just trying to be a nice person. Uh-oh, red flag when someone says they're a nice person, Caleb. And connect people to opportunities. I can let him know if you're not interested, if you're not. Then he said, I'm dead. Haha, -ha, what? Yeah, I mean, that's easier now. I, I, now I know I have a better understanding of what it is. So what do you think? He still wants to meet, wants me to vet ya and I can make him. Okay, so we're going to listen to a voice message that Caleb sent Zeke in 2022 and i want to like if there's anything any connections that i have which i've built a lot of connections in austin anything that i'm able to kind of link you to you know i definitely want to be helpful the main reason i haven't wanted to have this conversation via text is sorry i had to burp um one i'm not used to only fans <laughs> straight up uh it's not really my scene uh you know i'm a personal finance dude I don't really oh, so Caleb doesn't have the OnlyFans? His friend has it? Or does Caleb also... I thought Caleb also has the OnlyFans. I don't know anything about that. Uh, two, I'm straight. I'm like 90% straight. I've definitely fooled around because I'm open-minded. Um, and, you know, when you get drunk, whatever. But, you know, so... And this is like a... Okay, so maybe some repressed queer feelings, but also not completely straight. So maybe like a little bit... Okay, open. <laughs> you know, a man on man thing. Uh, but essentially, I think, well, from the conversation I had with him, the pay will be dependent on what you're willing to do. And what you're willing to do is set by you. So what he would like to do, you guys make out. He would like to. So Caleb is venting Zeke for his friend who has OnlyFans. Okay, I'm lost. I thought Caleb had the OnlyFans. Oh, interesting. Okay. Because I know Caleb currently has a girlfriend. He talked about her on the show. And he was on the Ice Coffee Hour. So he has a girlfriend as far as I know right now. But he's fooled around with guys. But he's talking to Zeke about his friend instead of his friend talking to Zeke. Okay, that's a little weird. Caleb has also deleted all his Insta posts saying he was gay. So a bit repressed. Yeah, he sounds like he's got a little bit of repression issues. That happens. Do that. What you guys what he would like you guys to do, him fill you up. He would like to do that. You can say no about any of these. He would like to play with your dick and see that that's why I didn't want to type this out either because that's like weird for me to say. I don't, you know, it's not like we're friends or anything, but that's what he wants to do. He wants to uh, give you a blowjob. Uh, Wait, they broke up? Like Caleb broke up with his girlfriend? Damn, that's sad, bro. This must be tough, though. I think she he said she didn't want to be in the public eye and she got really like a lot of anxiety over the fact that he was a YouTuber. So I wondered if this got too much for her. It's a big deal. It's anxiety you're seeing. Even my husband sometimes has anxiety over it. Like, it's just a lot seeing like, your loved ones like on the Internet and people are saying things about them that aren't true. And it's very stressful. My sisters like, you know, even expressed that to me where she's like, this is very stressful. And it is very stressful to watch. Like, like I said, like people say things about you that aren't true on the Internet. But like, OK it's a part of the it's the worst part of the job but it is part of the job uh, it, oh i was also told and confirmed with him that your face would be hidden uh blurred out and hidden uh izzy says caleb offers of opportunities to his guests which people find inappropriate to offer to people in bad financial situations but i don't know that feels sex negative to me 
Um, I feel like whether you give people an opportunity to work construction or work sex work, like you're still just asking them, do you want to work a job that's like a legal way to make money in the country? You know what I mean? So I'm not sure. Lexi says, is this a standard w way to propose an OnlyFans collaboration to someone or is it weird or inappropriate? I just don't know. So if I'm being honest with you, okay, so OnlyFans itself legally makes you sign paperwork if you're on the site. So if I have any guests, if I even do a regular photo shoot with a friend, if they are posted on my OnlyFans, they have got to sign a contract on OnlyFans saying that the person in my video or in my shoot is 18 plus. So just le for legal reasons, like they still have to go through the stage of signing up for OnlyFans and or signing paperwork over to OnlyFans. So even if they said yes, the stages before they actually do the shoot also involve legally making sure they sign paperwork with OnlyFans themselves. So there's a little bit of um like there's like opportunities to think about it and understand the severity or the like, I guess like the consequence maybe of doing this kind of work, but also... I'm not sure what is an appropriate way to have this conversation. I guess it depends on what kind of content creator you are. Because like I said, even with YouTube, I'm so casual. You know what I mean? I'm so casual that I'm like, hey, you want to come on a podcast? Like, oh, hey, you want to do a collab with me? Like DM, Instagram. Sometimes people are that casual about OF stuff. Hey, I'm doing a shoot and I need somebody to do a blowjob. You want to do it? Like some people are that casual. But Caleb, I think the only reason it feels weird is because he's a finance guy and not a sex worker. I thought he was a sex worker, but if he's not a sex worker, he's just a finance guy, that I think feels weird to people because they're not in the same industry. I think that's probably what's weird. I'm surprised Caleb is doing this and not having his, not saying to the guy, hey, my friend who does OnlyFans wants to work with you. Can I send, can I connect you guys through an email? Like, why is Caleb doing the negotiation? I think that's what's uncomfortable. Because it almost makes it sound like Caleb's involved. And I thought that's why I thought Caleb was involved. Because now I'm confused. And your identity would be hidden. Um, um, so he doesn't. OK, hold on. Uh, that, oh, I was also told and confirmed with him that your face would be hidden, uh, blurred out and hidden. Your identity would be hidden. OK. Um, um, and then if you wanted to give a blowjob, you could. Again, you would make more from that and that's uh, standard it's standard that the more you do or the the depending on what you do you will get paid more so that's kind of normal uh you know he would eat your butt <laughs> and you would make more for that you can say no as well uh, uh you know you could top him he could top you whatever you're willing to do comes with more money but you could literally do nothing you could literally just lay Lexi says, I remember back in the day, camming, it was illegal not to show your face so they can make sure it's an adult. So the blurred face thing sounds like a red flag to me. I don't know if that's changed. Well, OnlyFans has their own protocol. So I don't know if the protocol is different because it's OF. Discord says, in fairness, this is like having your account ask a girl out for you. Or your accountant ask a girl out for you. So it'd probably be awkward for the accountant. Yeah, 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 for sure. Yeah, I don't know. Is the blurred face on OnlyFans? I think that's okay. I think OnlyFans has to approve it though, right? Because like, how do they, well, I guess they could just cut off his head instead of blur his head. I don't know. Stay back and let him just touch you for the video. And I guess for some reason, his subscribers love that and you'd get paid for it. So really that's what it is. And, you know, I, there's things that I think I don't feel comfortable talking about in this kind of situation and I'd be happier to talk over in person. Yeah, of course, H Hotep, you're so right. Plenty of people make blurred face videos. They have to because all the teachers on OF blur their faces so they don't get caught or they do something. Yeah, because they must because that's how they do things. Hmm. Interesting. Um, maybe I'm just that kind of person. Uh, so you just let me know what you think. When that audio message was first leaked, a lot of people claimed it was fake. And in 2024, with advancement in AI voice cloning technology, I understand why some people believed that. However, despite- Ah, oh, Marcy, great question. Does he get some sort of recruiter's fee or something? That's a great question. Does Caleb make a commission off getting him collaborations? MS says, as a sex worker myself, this message from Caleb just seems like someone who knows nothing about collab etiquette, committing a fraud. I'm sorry. Oh, my God. My bad. Committing a couple faux pause. I don't think there's something sinister here. Yeah, I agree. I think he's just being very awkward because it's not his industry, which makes me wonder, like, bro, why are you doing this? You know, have your friend do it. But OK.
That. He keeps mentioning he doesn't have to, which is good. He's just setting. So in some ways, Caleb is asking for consent over and over and over again. He's saying, you don't have to do this. I'm just offering it, but you don't have to do it. I think Caleb is anxious from everything I've seen in his interviews. He's a very anxious person and he gets like a lot of, he gets really nervous. And so I could see him triple doubling. I do this too. Oh my God. I just had a collab with somebody. And I will write her when I write her. I'm like, I'm free this day, but you do not have to do it this day. If you're not free this day, my anxiety makes me like give people a thousand ways out of a thing because I never want someone to feel obligated to like do stuff. You know what I mean? Um, so I'm usually like pretty chill about whatever people want to do. But I could so I could see Caleb being anxious in that regard. And Caleb has confirmed on his Reddit, as well as in emails to me, that the voicemail you heard is 100% him. Okay. And he makes no claim to it being altered in any way. Okay. What is That's a good sign. Caleb's admitting it's him. He's not trying to hide it. ...disputed about that voice message is why it was left, with Caleb and Zeke having very different stories. Zeke talked about doing OnlyFans modeling on his first appearance on the show... Oh. ...and wanted help to grow on Twitch and OnlyFans from... Oh, so... Oh! This changes things. ...message is why it was left, with Caleb and Zeke having very different stories. Zeke talked about doing OnlyFans modeling on his first appearance on the show... ...and wanted help to grow on Twitch and OnlyFans from Caleb. Caleb's version of events was that he was simply trying to help Zeke out by connecting him with another guy to hook up with. That's the same fucking story. Are you dumb? Am I dumb? That's the same story. Zeke goes on his show and goes, I'm financially shitty at money. I would love to start an OnlyFans and make money. Caleb goes, oh, I have a friend who does OnlyFans. Let me hook you up. That's the same story. Why does this guy just say they have two different stories? That's the same story. Appearance of Caleb and Zeke having very different stories. Zeke talked about doing OnlyFans modeling on his first appearance on the show and wanted help to grow on Twitch and OnlyFans from Caleb. Caleb's version of events was that he was simply trying to help Zeke out by connecting him with another guy to hook up with and make money from adult content on OnlyFans. After talking to Zeke, he... That's the same story. Those are not completely two different stories. Am I crazy? He made it clear to me that he only ever wanted to fuck bitches and get money. Talking to him further, I asked him why Caleb seemed so interested in trying to hook him up with a guy on OnlyFans and asked Zeke if he led Caleb on into thinking he was interested in doing adult content with other men, which he quickly denied. Zeke said, I have no problem with how you choose to identify, but Caleb wanted to set you up with another guy for sex, only, sex and OnlyFans. Did you lead him to believe you were willing to hook up with men for cash. <gasps> Even the way he asks the questions is so disgusting. Well, maybe not. Maybe I misread the tone. Hold on. I have no problem. I have no problem with how you choose to identify, but Caleb wanted to set you up with another guy for sex and only fans. Did you lead him to believe you were willing? He like accuses people with his language, I feel. That the reason Caleb kept pushing the gay OnlyFans content when I probably wouldn't be too interested in going along with that deal, to be honest. Not my, really my type of thing. I could meet him, but it would be hard to convince me to do anything other than photos for people. And also, anything from the other OnlyFans girl? Oh, no worries. And I can still reach out to her. I'm not as close to her. What would, what all would you be willing to do with him? Get felt up? Maybe get a blowjob? Can't believe I'm typing these things. Caleb is being either incredibly anxious or incredibly dumb. Is Caleb young? I feel like he's being so, so unprofessional about this. I don't love this part. So like, it almost sounds like Caleb's being, I can't tell, is he, is he being dumb on purpose or is he being like really stupid with how he's doing this? The guy just said, it's not my type of thing. Yeah, Zeke did say, hey, it's not my type of thing. Uh, it would take a lot, it would be hard to convince me to do anything other than photos. And then he says, well, what would you be willing to do? Get felt up? Maybe a blowjob? What? Caleb, your reading comprehension's zero. He just said it's not his type of thing. Why the fuck would he get a blowjob? What? No, that's stupid. Okay, point against Caleb is like his reading comprehension is like a zero. He just said, I probably wouldn't be too, like, yeah, the guy isn't fully saying no, but it feels like he is, he's saying like, no, but I get it because like, he's kind of saying yes as well. Cause he's saying, I'm probably wouldn't be too interested. Not really my type of thing. I could meet with him. So uh, it sounds like he wants Caleb to convince him maybe if the money's good enough and maybe Caleb is like, okay, well, if the money's good enough, maybe you'd be willing to do it. But also I would read this and say like, oh, 
this isn't enthusiastic enough for me personally. So I'm not gonna I'm not gonna ask you anymore. I, I would get him in contact with the girl at that point. Okay, so I can't tell because I'm 35 in May and I have a lot more experience with people. So maybe it's that where I have a lot more experience. So I would know how to do this. But I yeah, so Caleb is in his late 20s and this guy is 20 at the time. Yeah, okay. I don't know why Caleb's doing the like innocent act, like, but also asking, yeah, I don't know. Something feels like this is outside of either his depth or he's being manipulative. But let's keep going. Um Okay, let's see. Zeke only wanted to work with women was because Zeke believed this was an attempt by Caleb to hook up with him instead. In oh, wait. With women was because Zeke believed that. Okay, so Zeke believed Caleb wanted to have sex with him actually, which I don't think so personally, but let's see. I'm, I don't know, Caleb, maybe. So, he, so this guy, Schaefer, asked Caleb, are you gay, basically? And then Zeke says, because he wanted to have sex with me, that's it. Plain and simple. There was never anyone else, only him. That's why I'm ask I was asking for women, which he never named or gave contacts. But is there proof that Caleb solicited him for sex? Because, like, Caleb... Yeah. Hmm. Okay, there's something here. There's something here. Okay. Okay, I'm getting a little like neurodivergent uh, intuition, spidey sense. I'm sensing someone's lying. And I think it's partially both people involved, maybe. Let's see. This was an attempt by Caleb to hook up with him instead. Interestingly enough. Yeah, actually, hold on. Who said that? Where is it? Oh, Villainy says, I still want to know why Caleb mentioned his own sexuality. Yeah, that's funny that he mentioned his own sexuality, which is why I thought this was about him doing a scene with him. But this is about his friend. But why did we need to know Caleb's interest in men if it was for his friend? Okay, I was team Caleb, but now I'm going much more neutral now. Let's see. The only piece of evidence Caleb sent me to support his claim actually supports Zeke's claim that he never wanted to do hardcore content or ever brings up doing content with men, saying he was only interested in softcore, lewds, and solo work. Hey, I'm posting more on my OF. Do you know anyone who can help with that? Thanks. Yeah, what kind of stuff are you posting? You can, you want to sign up for, up, it's free right now. Oh. Oh. Wait, so Zeke invited him to look at his OnlyFans. Hey, I'm posting more on my OnlyFans. Do you know anyone who can help with that? Thanks. Caleb said, yeah, what kind of stuff are you posting? And then Zeke said, if you want, you can sign up. It's free right now. Wait, now, Caleb, now Zeke is flirting with Caleb. That's an invitation. Right? Because like, why would you invite him to look at your OnlyFans when you just tell him like, oh, I'm doing boy-boy stuff or boy-girl stuff? But when you say, like, you want to look at my OnlyFans, it feels it could just be a business thing in neutral, but it also could be an invitation. Caleb said, well, I'm just curious because I've made good relationships with people who run theirs in different ways. So I'm just curious what you plan to post and stuff. And I can link you with someone similar. And then Zeke goes, but just softcore and lewds right now as solo. Once I get more followers and money into it, I want to do tapes with different models I meet, like do little vlogs of us meeting on stream and then off stream film content. Okay. <sighs> hmm. I'm not sure why Caleb sent this as evidence to support his claim, as it makes it clear. Ah, Lexi says, I think Caleb was just trying to clarify he wasn't gay because he knew he was going to say some gay <laughs> stuff and very straight male new ally behavior. OK, that's a good point, too. OK, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. OK, Vibe says, yeah, Z could have just said he does what he does instead of telling him to sign up. Yeah. OK, OK. So I'm starting to get back on Caleb's side now. OK. Clear Zeke wasn't interested in the... Eh, let's not take sides. Let's just say, I think... I don't know. I, I don't know. They're both looking messy right now. Hardcore content Caleb went into detail about in the voicemail, so I'm really confused as to why Caleb sent me this. Whoever... Discord said over-explaining is a nervous tick. I actually do that. I do that. That's why I repeat a lot of things. I have, like, a high anxiety about being misunderstood, so I, like, repeat or re-explain things all the time. And so I do see a lot of that in Caleb, which is why I like usually like Caleb, because he seems to have anxiety in the same in a way that feels familiar to me. But again, I don't know if that's just me projecting onto him. Whatever version of events you choose to believe, I think it's safe to say that the audio message Caleb left was creepy and inappropriate. Um, I disagree with that. I don't think it was creepy or inappropriate on 
at face value. Do you guys, what do you think about that? I think it was really awkward and I was a little confused by it, but I'm, I'm really sex positive. I work with sex workers. I mean, I know sex workers, like I love them. I'm a sex worker. Like I'm never going to sex shame someone for talking about sex. Like I'm not about to sex shame, shame someone for adults talking about sex. I'm not going to do that. So in general, the way I heard the message didn't seem inappropriate to me. It just seemed nervous. Caleb runs a finance YouTube channel, and many people call him the millennial Dave Ramsey. If Dave ever had someone call into the show and then ask them if they wanted to give a BJ on OnlyFans to help pay down some of their credit card debt, I'm pretty sure he would lose a large chunk of his audience for- Well, maybe because he's Christian, he would lose a large chunk of his audience. Context, bro. Context. Obviously, if Caleb is sex positive and he thinks it's a decent way to make living- then like it wouldn't, if Dave Ramsey offered people a, you're making it sound weird. No, wrong. This guy is fucking weird. Saying something like that. Caleb claims he was just trying to help Zeke out. And if that was the case, there was clearly a better option to do that. Option one would have been to not talk about OnlyFans at all, since mixing finance content and sex work is probably not the best idea. Why not? Nope, this is a sex negative take. I think this is a sex negative take. I think this is shaming sex workers. I think this guy is sex shaming sex workers. Because again, you're making it sound like it's not just job, like a job. And it's not just a job, but no job is just a job. So this framing, I think is super sex negative and I don't like it. I take offense to that. By the way, just put up a great video on my OF. Thank you for asking. It's super pretty. It's like one of the prettiest videos. Um, yeah. Um, I don't like this idea that like, oh, if you do finance, you can't do sex work. Like, what? Option two would have been to leave a simple message for Zeke, telling him he had an OnlyFans friend who might want to work with him, and then simply give Zeke's contact info to the yeah, friend. Yeah, but Zeke could have simply told Caleb what he was making, but instead he said, do you want to look at my OF? So I think we're both dealing with people who don't know what the fuck they're doing. And so the two of them could work something out. Option three, the nuclear choice that Caleb picked, comes across incredibly creepy, unprofessional, and in my opinion, gives some belief to some of Zeke's claims because of how detailed the voice message was, along with Caleb's self-reveal that he is only 90% straight, and his follow-up text of telling Zeke he would needed to vet him in person before connecting him with his only fan friend. Hold on. He would needed to vet him in person. I don't like that Caleb said, I'm just trying to be a nice person. I think that's a red flag. I think identifying as a nice person, trying to just hook someone up with an opportunity is super possibly like, I would call it narcissistic, but I don't mean in the NPD way. I just mean it's super like, so I don't like that. Here, red flag against Caleb. We should be keeping score. Red flag against Caleb there. Um, He still wants me to vet. I can make him cover your gas for the trip. Well, that makes sense. But why would Caleb be vetting him? So there's something here. There, That's the lie. Why is Caleb vetting the person for the collab for his friend? Okay. Okay. I'm hooked again. Ooh, I'm hooked again. Ooh, why is that happening? What's the explanation for that? Why? Why would he need to vet the guy? Yeah, see? Okay. That's... That's something. We need to talk about that. Mm hmm Before connecting him with his only fan friend. This comment doesn't make any sense to me since Caleb and Zeke had already shot an episode of Financial Audit together, so I don't understand what sort of vetting process Caleb had in mind. This mm. wasn't Caleb's first attempt at offering only fans to people who appeared on his show. Oh, wait. Techno says because he already met him in person, maybe. Wait, that's true. He already met Zeke in person. Oh, wait. Okay, oh, hold on. So to Financial Only Fan Friend. Hold on. He still wants me to vet ya. I can make him cover your gas for the trip. I need the text message after this. No, I want the text message after this because of course Zeke already met Caleb because he was on the show. So I need, he wants me to vet you. What does that mean? Yeah, what? What's the text message after this? What does that mean? He wants me to vet you. Hold on. I'm trying to think of what the context, the, he's already met Zeke. Yeah, does he, does he mean they have to have sex? Now I'm very confused. Wait, now I'm very confused. What? What? 
Oh. This comment doesn't make any sense to me since Caleb and Zeke had already shot an episode of right. Financial Audit together, so I don't understand what sort of vetting process Caleb had in mind. Th Wait, me neither. That's a great question. Okay, fine, Schaefer. I'm listening, but here's the thing. What are the text messages after that? This wasn't Caleb's first attempt at offering OnlyFans to people who appeared on his show. On Caleb's subreddit, early on in his mm. YouTube career, he made a post explaining he had offered OnlyFans work unsolicited to several... OnlyFans, hey y'all, as always here, I want to get your opinion on something because we all should hold each other accountable, red flag. Fuck your audience holding you accountable. Only your morals can. No offense to my audience. I love you, but you can't hold me accountable. Only my values can. As longtime viewers know, some of my first few guests were from a site called Backstage. It's a casting website. As I had no audience to come on the show, now though, these are aspiring actors and more. Nothing was fake. It was still 100% real. I just assumed some people wanted clout as well. That makes sense. During my first six months making videos, I started becoming friends with local creators. Many streamers also have OnlyFans, sure, and only said they are, and they said they're always looking for other people to collaborate with. Being very a very open-minded person, Caleb sounds like a conservative that's trying to say they're pro LGBT, but also are like the gays, and I say the gays too because it's funny, but he kind of sounds like a conservative who's trying to say he's cool. So it comes off really disingenuous and like red flaggy. Like you, it almost sounds like a dog whistle. That's not a dog whistle. So I can see he's like super awkward. He talks like a boomer. He kind of talks like a boomer. Being a very open minded person myself. It's like, OK, dad, I figured it would be nice to it would be nice to offer potential opportunities to some guests. Caleb might be autistic. He might have autism. I've done this for a variety of jobs and connects as I want to see them improve, of course. Three to four times with the actors, some already had an OF. I offered if they wanted the connection to some creators that had an OF, then if so, I would just connect them. Now to me, I wouldn't find this weird if someone offered me a connection, I'd just say no, but I've seen some people say it's weird or creepy. I think those people are sex negative. I don't think it's weird or creepy. I think it could be depending. I don't know. What? All of the actors who appeared on his show and wanted to ask his audience if they felt this was appropriate. After his audience overwhelmingly made it clear they felt this was not appropriate. Don't ask your audience what they want. They don't know. I've heard some from some people in my audience who are like, can you make your video shorter? Um, Your views tell me you like them longer. Don't tell me what you like. No, I don't ask your viewers. You don't ask the audience. That's not how it works. Trust me. Some people were saying, yes, if I went to a personal finance expert for help and they offered me an opportunity to make money connecting me with an OnlyFans creator, presumably to have sex for money on camera, I would find that extremely fucking weird. Well, that's because that's a normie take, you dumb fucks. Guys, normal people aren't sex workers. Just a reminder that sex workers are still discriminated against. Sex workers are still looked down upon in society. Sex workers are still fighting for their lives in these streets, bro. Just a reminder that being a sex worker, being an OnlyFans model, is absolutely not a glorified position in society. So of course, if you go to a normie job like accounting and you associate it with sex work, people are going to find you fucking weird. Because sex workers are still discriminated against. Why would anyone treat a sex worker with dignity, generally speaking, when that is not what humans have been doing, even if it is the oldest profession? It makes no sense to ask a totally normie audience if they're sex positive. If they're watching you for finance, they're probably not sex positive. Or maybe they are sex positive, but you know what I'm saying? Like, it's such a weird leap. It's like he mixed a completely normie bubble because he's so, like, young. Like, that's the problem is, like, who's watching financial videos? Is it Gen Zers? No, it's probably fucking not. So again, like they're not going to be, you know what I mean? What a weird fucking, that, so I'm saying autism. I feel like only a person who's neurodivergent could ever think that a normie bubble wouldn't think it's weird to mix sex work with any job because everyone is sex repressive. Lacro says his thumbnails are dehumanizing to marginalized people, sex workers, anyone who isn't a white man. Um, I think it's just clickbait. I think like you're making it too big of a deal. I think you're blowing it up. I'm going to say that. I just think like, it's just like, it's just clickbait, guys. Relax. You know what I mean? It's just clickbait. But I don't think they're any more dehumanizing than any other clickbait. So like, I just think they're like clickbait. I don't think they're, you know what I mean? They're mean, but they could be, they could be a little nicer, you know? But like, who, like his, 
the the guests in him collaborate as far as I know in the titles and thumbnails now recently. So I don't know about that. Um Fishy says, yeah, it makes me wonder why are we more iffy around coercion or perception of it into sex work and not other types of jobs? Because there's a stigma against sex work. There's just a stigma. Guys, you're less likely to get pressured into sex work than any other job because it is not normalized. Because it is so not normalized, of course, you're less likely to say yes to sex work than a regular job that is normalized because a lot of people work off shame. And since people are shamed of society, they're less likely to say no to sex work, I think, in my opinion. You know what I mean? So I'm just like, I don't really understand this. I think this is a mixture of sex negative people mixing in with sex positive people. And it's getting very confused. Colleen says, as someone who was undiagnosed in my 20s, I totally agree. I made so many mistakes not understanding bubbles. Not everyone is sex positive. Bro, not only is not everyone sex positive, but people will fucking hate your guts if you're pro-sex work. They will hate you if you're on OnlyFans. They will think you're like the scum of the earth if you're a sex worker. You know what I mean? So like, again, like people just, they hate sex workers. So I think that's probably a part of what's playing a role in this is people hate sex workers and they don't trust anybody in sex work and they think everyone in sex work is a bad person. You know what I mean? And then in combination, he's in a very normie bubble and he's trying to combine a normie bubble with a non-normie bubble. You know what I mean? So that's kind of weird. Fishy says, why is there a stigma against sex work? I think I need to do some historical deep diving because I'm trying to logic it and I don't get it. Oh, but you know, Fishy, like it's about property. It's about ownership. It's about sharing. It's about jealousy and envy. It's about intimacy and what we view as intimacy. It's about the idea of like, if someone can sell intimacy, it cheapens it to some people. And because that's their relationship with it, they get like, aggressive it's like watching Jordan Peterson talk about how evil like um casual sex is but it's not evil to have casual sex it's just maybe not as spiritually fulfilling but like who cares you know what I mean so again it's like you're having a different relationship with what these things mean there's there's so much going on here but let's let's keep watching and pull it apart as much as possible right let's see it and question why he was doing this Caleb quickly deleted the post Unfortunately, Zeke's claims against Caleb. Yeah, wait, good point. Walk away, man says a lot of conservatives think sex workers are a menace to society. Lots of people think sex workers are the reason marriages suffer, the the, the country suffers. There's like whole industries, whole bubbles created around making content about how like sex workers are destroying a whole population of the youth, bro. Club don't end there, as Zeke has also made the claim that Caleb inappropriately touched him oh. after the filming of their second episode together. Yeah, you're claiming he actually touched you inappropriately as well? Yeah, he did. He locked me in his house after the second filming um, when his friend who helps him film, he left. I was locked in his house and he sat me down on his couch in the living room and he was trying. Like, the reason why I was on those shows so many times is because I was looking for opportunity and he kept promising opportunity aside from the OnlyFans stuff. But he was really trying to lure me in with that. He was breadcrumbing me. And so breadcrumbing you, somebody's been on Tumblr. The second time we filmed, he I was on the couch and he would not let me leave. He would not pay me um, what I was owed for that filming. And essentially, he didn't give me the money until he gro groped me. And I need that money. To Hold on. The second time we filmed, he I was on the couch and he would not let me leave. He would not pay me um, what I was owed for that filming. And essentially, he didn't give me the money until he gro groped me. He didn't give me the money till he groped me. He locked me in his house. Okay, so he accused him of locking him in the house. He accused him of coercing him into sitting on the couch. Saying he wouldn't pay him till he let him gro or till he groped him. And I needed that money to go home to, because he knew all my personal finances. He knew how much money I had. I had no money when I showed up. I don't trust people who have no money. Okay, say I'll say this as a poor person who who used to be poor and who used to like live in credit card debt. I'll say this as somebody who used to have like sixty thousand dollars of credit card debt. I've never been too poor to get home. I almost don't believe you, and I mean to say this because no one is too poor to walk their ass home over whatever weird situation you're in. 
So my brain thinks a man's locking you in his house. Who cares about money to get home? Get out, get out of that house. But then when you tell me, you know what I mean? Like, oh, like I needed the money to get home. I came with no money. So you as a grown up put yourself in a position to come somewhere with no money. Or did Caleb say he would pay you? And then why didn't he pay you ahead of time to show up if it was for work? I'm just being cynical because I, I don't understand this lot. Like I don't, my brain doesn't follow this logic, right? But it could be a situation where, yeah, it's like a casting couch situation. Maybe, you know, he lives in San Antonio and Caleb lives in Austin. For sure. I get that. Right. I get that. Okay. Yes. A 60 K. Geez, that sounds stressful. It was, it's okay. It's all paid off now, but it was stressful. It's an hour drive for sure, bro. But listen to what I'm saying. You're a grown up in someone else's house and you came with no money to someone's house. You have no money. You have zero monies. You have no credit cards. You have zero monies. Like I need to know what you're doing with your life that you have zero monies, no credit card and no way to get out. You know what I mean? You have no one to call. You have no cell phone. You can't call 911. Like anything, like any, you can't get an Uber. How did he even get to this place in the first place? Again, I just, like, again, when I hear someone tell me this kind of story, I got to know how it happened. And again, you're asking me to believe something pretty bad about Caleb. So you better get ready to be questioned. Okay. I just want to know how you got there. Right. How do you get there? Leko, Leko, boy says 19, not really grown up. Kids make dumb decisions. I agree with that. Even adults can make dumb decisions. I want to know what that was like. How did we get there? Zero monies? Lexi says, I do feel like men who have suppressed gay feelings like Caleb seem to might be more likely to do problematic things like this, but I'm skeptical, skeptical, mostly because the way Scott is presenting everything. I agree with that too. I do agree with that. I think Caleb is more likely to make mistakes or pressure people because he himself might be repressed, not an excuse, an explanation. But because Scott is explaining the video with so much bias going in, it's hard to assume he's telling the truth. So let's see. Okay, so he is, he was 19. Zeke was 19 at the time. Still, I don't know why you're going anywhere without monies, but okay. Um. Okay, let me see. Ah, Samantha said the only time I've ever been that broke was when I was spending every single dollar, extra dollar on drugs. Yeah, see, the only time I've ever been that broke is when I was also willing to walk my ass home. So I need to know, like, what situation is this? What's happening? And I have been that broke, by the way. I've gotten $30 tickets for, like, street sweepers that I couldn't even pay. And I was, like, mortified. I couldn't even pay a $30 ticket, bro. I've been fucking broke. But, and again, okay. Boy says, I have texts between them that Scott didn't share. Zeke said he has gas to get to Austin but not back. Caleb said he would pay for his gas. Okay, well, you guys probably should have fucking involved those in the video because now it's going to bring skepticism. And two, if that was true, then Caleb should have paid him for sure. Like Caleb should have given him that money for sure. I recommend you get that money ahead of time, but I understand wanting to be good faith and hoping that they would still give you the money on the way back. So, okay, fine. Z Caleb promised him the money. Zeke already admitted that he was going to give him the money because he needed to get back home. We can believe that. I think that's believable. I had zero money because I had spent it on gas to get okay. to Austin. He knew that. Okay. How much did he uh, did he claim he was going to be giving you? Thousands. And how much the did you? The contract was thousands of dollars, and he only paid me less. He said the contract was thousands of dollars. Where's the contract? Where's the contract? Boy, you, you're right. You didn't make the video. I don't mean to come so harsh on you. Okay. Um, okay, where's the contract? So we've got a contract. He said there is a contract. Where is the contract? Let me, let's me let read it. Less than $200 for, for, for filming. While Caleb has never denied the voicemail is real, he has always claimed that the other accusations Zeke has made against him are completely false. Caleb has claimed that Zeke threatened his life and doxed him, and this is just a disgruntled former actor on the show, unhappy that he didn't want to bring Zeke back for more episodes. When I asked Zeke about that, I was actually shocked that he openly admitted to me that he had threatened Caleb's life. You're not lying? You didn't threaten to kill him? Of course I did. He, he, he molested me. Okay. Huh. 
unhappy that he didn't want to bring Zeke back for more episodes. When I asked Zeke about that, I was actually shocked that he openly admitted to me that he had threatened Caleb's life. You're not lying? You didn't threaten to kill him? Of course I did. He he, he molested me. Okay, okay. so wait, but you but are confirming that, that you said that? that. Yeah, um, he, he, him calling me a liar is him lying, but I mean, of course I threatened to kill him, but it wasn't really like, um, I'm gonna do it. It was more like, be scared. Now I have to say that Zeke's behavior of threatening Caleb's life, doxing him, and his somewhat unhinged ramblings on social media have made a lot of people question his motives and unwilling to trust his story about the things he claims Caleb did to him. If he had never acted in that way, I think a lot more people would be willing to give the benefit of the doubt to him. Now, in my own personal opinion, I've actually been in a relationship with a woman who would- Nobody cares about your life, Schaefer. Okay, hold on. Hold on. Hold on, bish. Um. Hold on just a second, eh? Hold on. YouTube. Okay, hold on. I just want to see if we can see something. Recommended me a very weird. He kept asking about OnlyFans, and I was like, "Hey, stop asking. I'm not interested. I don't do that. I don't do that." Uh, and well, that's not true. Cause well, that must have been cut. Cause he does. Oh, Caleb Hammer made a video. This is pretty good. Now wait until you hear. There's extra context where Zeke asked me to contact him for OnlyFans creators after the first video shoot, and his allegations were something that happened. After the second shoot, good news. I wasn't the only one there with him, and the other person is willing to collaborate. That he's been. That everything he's been saying since he blew up is a lie because thankfully I was never alone with Zeke. Really, really bad play on his part. Okay. So the full timeline of receipts. This is a small content creator called Phoenix. Um, frankly, interesting video yesterday. Okay, interesting. So apparently this video, February 29th, and this video came out five days ago. But check this out. Interesting. Please do your own research. I do not care where you stand on this drama. I just hate that people can only have an audio recording and fail to do basic research. Actually, one, make a competent documentary. Two, have insightful commentary. And three, have an actual reason to deplatform someone. I have, I hope I have provided more context than any of these other channels, I could not find an actual source that made more than an uh, made more than an audio recording and a few choice words. Please stop. It clogs up YouTube feed for a while. I'm at work. Okay, so here's all the videos. So interesting. This video came out before the video we're watching now, but on this video, the guy is sounding like he's taking Caleb's side because he reacted to Caleb said, "That's amazing to hear. I'm so glad you could provide the extra context because I was curious." why he just so happened to have a gap of info on my other phone. I'm excited to see where you go after one mil. Ooh. Interesting. So, okay. So, interesting. So, the guy we're watching now is anti-Caleb. This guy is pro-Caleb. And both are saying they have the receipts. So, we might fin let's finish this video. And then we might have to hop into this video and see what we see in difference for the information. Ooh, and Caleb commented on that video because it's a pro Caleb video, obviously. And then Caleb did not co like work with Schaefer because Schaefer did not make a pro Caleb video. Okay. Okay. We are, look at us, journalists. Just kidding. We're not journalists. We're YouTubers. Okay, let's do this. Let's keep going with this. And let's see. Boy says I've spoken with him at length about this. He knows why that was wrong and he publicly apologized for it. He was a kid who made a mistake because he was emotional. Critique and forgive. Look, I'm all about forgiveness. I'm all about forgiveness. I'm not saying Zeke is a bad guy, but I've dealt with a lot of, and I hate to say this, liars and people who lie tend to play the victim card because it's more sympathetic. And I think that's really, really common. And I think that Caleb could be a predator or could be innocent or he or Zeke could be the predator and be innocent. It just, it just, you know what I mean? Like I'm not, I haven't gotten all the information. I'm open to everything. I mean, I think anyone under 30 is kind of a kid. So in my opinion, like Caleb was also kind of a kid, right? So in my opinion, they're all kind of kids. 
and they're all way outside of their like understanding of people. But right now, the kinds of people that tend to have lies also tend to be a certain flavor. Let's just say that. So let's keep watching. We could be wrong. Boy says there's a Business Insider article coming out that is tied up with lawyers right now. Okay, Business Insider has been known to post bullshit articles as of late. So I don't even, you can pay to post a bullshit article, allegedly, on that website. So I'm like less interested in Business Insider being valid, given that you can pay for fucking spots there that I've heard. I heard. So let's see. Okay, let's keep going. Who had been insulted in the past, and the anger and violent outburst were something that I experienced firsthand. So, and also, I want to know how he was molested. If you're saying he rubbed your leg, um, I feel like molestation has to be specific, right? So, I'm I feel like this is very messy, but I want to see, you know, I want to see what happens. I want to know what the molestation involved. Did he touch your hair? Did he touch your leg? Did he like give you a hug? What are you, did he grab your crotch? Like, what are we counting as molestation? And, uh, you know, I want to know more details, but I don't know. Caleb could, but Caleb's already given us red flags. We've also seen red flags from Zeke. So let's keep going. Um, okay. While other people may quickly write Zeke off as a schizo liar, I don't think it's fair to immediately claim everything he says is fake just because he's acted inappropriately on how he handled this. We can talk about it if you want. I'm oh. just saying. It's very clear to me that this. Why is Papa good here? What the fuck? <laughs> why, is, why is Dan here? <laughs> why is Papa good here? Zeke guy is full of shit. Based on all the stuff that we're seeing here. <laughs> That's all I have to say, dude. Zeke's story has been talked about. We love him. Uh, ...by a few channels now, and if it were just Zeke's claims about Caleb, I probably wouldn't cover this story, since Zeke's claims have already been told several times before, and unfortunately for him, his PAX actions make him look untrustworthy in the eyes of many who see him. I ended up talking to a few friends and several other YouTube creators as well, and one thing that was brought up was that if there was any truth to Zeke's story, Caleb is probably... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Did you guys notice that he was going to say rape and corrected? That's what I mean. But that could be an honest mistake, so I'll let it slide for now, but I did take note of that. I'll let it slide for now, but I did notice it, and you know, it could have just been a mistake. You know what I mean? Acted inappropriately in the past as well. Someone who would so brazenly do what Zeke claims he did would have other skeletons in his closet. It didn't take long for another source to come forward, and I was contacted on Twitter by a former friend of Caleb who had oh. known him for years. He went into detail about their history, and while I have to keep most of his initial message private mm. so as not to dox him, his final paragraph paints Caleb in a very bad light. Uh -oh. I share all of this with you to say that everything I know about Caleb, based on years of experience at communication with- Yeah, but how do you know he was connected to Caleb? I just want to know, like, how did he verify his friendship with Caleb? Because, like, lots of us have friends that we have falling outs with. We've been friends for years, especially as young people with, like, not the greatest people. We have a falling out. You know what I mean? How do you know that this isn't a crazy person too? Like, it just happens, right? With him ...tells me that any of these allegations made against him are true. He believes wholeheartedly in his superiority to other people, which is why I believe he enjoys telling people about how wrong they are and need to do everything different with their finances. Hmm. I think he gets off on feeling smarter and better than other people, and because of his frequent hmm. and unwanted sexual comments, I am not surprised in the least that someone has reported that he has made unwanted advances and slash or similar. He's a narcissist through and through, oh. and he thinks his supposed intellectual and moral superior. Interesting. I've never, ever gotten that vibe from Caleb. I've watched so many of his interviews, and I've watched like a few episodes of the, the, the show he does, but I've mostly watched him on other people's podcasts. I've never gotten that feeling from Caleb at all. And I'm usually pretty good at picking up on narky vibes, bro. Like I suss it out. I smell it like a fart in a room, okay? That's interesting. I've never thought that Caleb was narcissistic. Interesting. Okay, I could be wrong. Interesting, though. I don't know. I've never thought that. But yeah, he thinks he's supposedly intellectual and moral superior. He's morally superior. Um, Have you met the debate bro space? Fane says he's just describing everyone's internet persona. Bro, stop. <laughs> ...make him immune to consequences or mistakes. 
This source wants to remain anonymous due to the constant death threat Zeke and others have received from Caleb's fans, but I have verified that he did indeed know Caleb for several years, and if Caleb were to claim this was a lie, I have plenty of evidence- Okay, two things I want everyone to pay attention to. Everyone's gonna get death threats, including Caleb, because of what Zeke's saying. So his death threats don't cancel out anyone else's death threats. Everyone gets death threats on the internet. I've gotten them, you've gotten them, your mom's gotten them, okay? They suck all around. Two- um, anonymous source is difficult for me, but you know, it happens, but then I don't know because again, people do change. Maybe Caleb is big headed. Maybe he's a kind of like a showy person and maybe he's like a theater kid. I don't know. There's so many things that go into this. You know what I mean? Um, but yeah, death threats are a part of the internet. Whether we like it or not is the worst and best part of the job is like you get the content creation out, but the worst part is you get death threats, right? But good news is most of them are just people who don't mean anything by it. Evidence the two of them know each other and would be able to prove this source isn't made up if Caleb were to ever claim this source isn't really who he says he is. The source ended up sending me dozens of chat messages he claims are of Caleb and if true, show a consistent pattern of unwanted sexual comments towards others in the group as well as further sexually themed comments about a 16 year old boy. I was truly shocked at just how much was uncovered. At the time of filming this video, even more is still being found. I've done everything in my power to confirm these messages are real, including sending one that has the sexually themed message about a 16 year old boy to Caleb to ask if he wanted to deny if it was real. Caleb's response was that it was very out of context, but never denied it wasn't from him. Okay, so he sent a text to a 16 year old or about a 16 year old? Uh, okay. Caleb's lawyer reached out to me after that email and asked that I not share what was in her email, so I'll honor that request and keep that conversation private. Now, before we take a look at the chat messages, I have to give some context as to where these actually came from, okay. and to do that, we have to talk about Caleb's past. Now, despite Caleb having a channel about financial audits, he actually has no business degree and instead studied music composition at Western Michigan University. Yeah, that's, we know that, right? That's not a secret. Right? We all know that watching Caleb. Like, it, it, that's normal. Like, we all know that. Like, I, I don't know if you guys knew that, but I knew that. Right? I never saw Caleb as like a, because you can't give financial advice out on YouTube. You know that, right? It's illegal to like give, from my understanding, I could be wrong. I'm, I'm in the finance bubble as like an audience member, but from my understanding, they can't legally give you financial advice. Right? That's why they always say this is not financial advice. Because you can have a finance show. But I think legally you can't give out, like you can't tell people what to do with their money. Do you know what I'm saying? I, I'm not in the finance bubble like as a teacher or something, so I don't know how to explain it. But it's like there's a line between what you're allowed to tell people to do with their money and what you can't. So I always assume Caleb and all these other guys are just giving their opinions. You know where he graduated in 2018. Okay. Following that, he began composing music and- Ugh, theater kids, music kids. He even created a YouTube channel that followed his musical endeavors as well. It was around this time that Caleb ended up joining a group known as the Millennium Composers Initiative. This group- Sounds gay, bro. <laughs> was created to bring young composers from around the world together so they could share ideas and foster growth for each other's musical careers. Caleb is still in this group to this day, and you can find his picture on their Instagram page and website. However, he no longer seems to be an active member since his finance YouTube channel took off. This group eventually started a Facebook group chat for its members to talk about their musical careers, as well as other topics, and it's from this chat that the alleged texts from Caleb come from. The source of the text who asked me to conceal his identity explains to what extent he believed the group was for. We felt, or at least I got the impression that we had very clearly agreed that it was, uh, it was a professional chat, uh, and that we had, uh, professional friendships in that. Professional friendships? So you mean you guys talked about sex? Yeah, I don't know when anyone's gonna learn. Professional doesn't mean shit. You get a group of people together, someone's gonna fuck. I don't know how many times I'm gonna tell you this. Nobody, unless you're all a bunch of fucking asexuals, Nobody's going to be out here avoiding flirtation. Have you ever fucked at work? You ever heard about the president getting a blowjob at the Oval Office? You know, you would think a president and an intern would be the most professional. And yet, and yet. So when people say like, oh, this is a professional something. This is just work stuff. Okay. 
Sure, bro. <laughs> we were approaching it in that way. We we did not um we did not really uh touch on topics uh like that. Okay, okay. General said this part is really important. Please pay attention to the nicknames in this quote professional group chat. Okay. Very much. The topics that he felt were inappropriate are what we're going to be focusing on. The first one that made several people uncomfortable was Caleb's comments about finding a 16-year-old boy hot. Now, in this chat group, everyone has uh -oh. nicknames instead of their actual name being used. I was told that Caleb picked many of these nicknames, but a few were picked by other members. Caleb was allegedly known as Super Ho Diddly Ho. So the user known as has sex all the time says, what's this hit beat you got playing? Super Ho responds with smoking a Okay, so obviously super professional usernames already. Very good, guys. Very professional. Wow. <laughs> it's gross. Uncut responds with, so is saying that 15-year-old boys are hot. Dancing says, oh, damn. Super Ho responds with 16. Uncut says, doesn't make your case any better. Super Ho responds with, haha, thinking from a- Now, okay, disclaimer, I did see this section already because I think I saw this part of Papa Gut's video. That's why I was shocked to see Papa Gut in this video because I thought Papa Gut, I know Papa Gut reviewed this part because I was listening to Papa Gut talk about this part. So that's why I was shocked when I saw Dan in this video. There must've been two videos. So I don't think I saw the original one because I swear I saw Dan already responding to this video because he looked up the age of consent in Michigan at the time and it's 16, which is not great and I still don't like it. The age of consent I think in Croatia is like 15, Italy is like 15, gross. But also like the humans are humans and they're animals and they're figuring shit out. So not my favorite thing in the world, I don't like it. But when you're raised in a culture where you normalize things, you do things. So I'm assuming that Caleb was normalized in a bubble, Michigan, that normalized 16 being the age of consent, again, you and I agree, not my favorite thing. I fucking hate it. I don't know why men like teenage boys or teenage girls. I don't know why people like teenagers. I don't like, I don't know why women do it. I don't know why the French president is married to a woman who's 70 when he, she, he knew her, her at 16. I don't know why adults are fucking weird, except that they're animals, okay? So this part, disclaimer, I did already know about because Dan Googled that Michigan's age of consent is 16. But I didn't, I don't think I've seen his other videos on this because this was the only part I remember. A picture is cute isn't bad. I don't think the person was cut because they are young. Oh, <laughs> Papa Gut did respond to an earlier video. The guy who made it came to the chat and Papa Gut told that guy he should warn Scott about Zeke. Oh, oh, damn. Okay, there's like layers of lore to this. He had facial hair, like, come on. Uncut says why screenshot because Super Ho had taken a picture of this guy's Snapchat of his 16 year old friend and Super Ho says he hot is gay, please. Okay, why screenshot is he get he hot is gay, please. He's 16 and no fucking perv shame. What a what is the age of consent 16? Yeah, so super cringe. I don't like this. I I don't know if it's yeah, I don't know if it's undead bunny says sounds like dark jokes. I don't know if it's like dark cringy joke. I'm telling you he's autistic. Because all the humor is like misplaced. Like it's supposed to be funny, but doesn't, f it falls flat. So either Caleb is a secret, like he's like either a secret pervert predator or he's making like untimely jokes that don't make sense. But also if the age of consent is 16 in Michigan, then it's normalized in his bubble. So again, we want to talk about normalization and whether or not you and I agree that we should stop normalizing adults and teenagers together. We do actually count teenagers as adults because 18 and 19 are teenagers and they're considered legal adults. So remember that we as a, a age of majority in a lot of places, right? Okay. That's a big part of this. Boy says, I am autistic, not an excuse. Oh, I'm not making excuses. I'm explaining why it happens. I'm saying a perfectly well-intentioned person can make a very untimely joke because they think they're being funny. I have made so many neurodivergent, mistimed jokes that probably sound so stupid to people. And I know they do because when I say them, the whole room stops and freezes. And I'm like, holy fuck, why did I just say that? And it's like, because you think you have a thought that pops into your head and you're like, this is so funny. It's not funny. Well, it is funny, but it's not funny to them. And it's maybe not even funny to you. So I'm saying I perfectly, the reason you say the autism might be playing a role or the neurodivergency or the social anxiety is because you're saying it's not malicious. 
I'm saying it could not be malicious. I'm saying it might just be neutral or it might be he thinks it's funny. So we're not making excuses, guys. I never want to make an excuse for bad behavior. But I think a lot of bad behavior is easily explained by culture, upbringing, mental health, or neurodivergency. I just think so much of what we call bad behavior, which is subjective, is really a root and it's a story people are telling you about themselves. You know what I mean? Uncut says, he's 16 and no, effing perv. Superho responds with shame. Uncut says, what would the age of consent in Michigan? Superho says 16. Uncut says, Texas is 17. And Oof. Superho says, shame. This Cringe. This is the message I sent to Caleb to confirm if they were real, which is when he replied that they were very out of context. I asked the informant if there was more context to this story, which he replied that there wasn't. Give a little bit more context. I, I reached out to Caleb for comment on this. He said this was... No, see, boy, that's where you're wrong. You said the big red flag is that they have been an avalanche of allegations against Caleb and he's never properly addressed them. He Okay, first of all, he should never address them. That's the number one rule of the internet. Don't address anything that's fake because it's just going to make your accusers bigger unless you have like a lot of receipts and you're ready to handle it. Like we just reviewed Dream and Dream did a really good job of it, but that's really hard. And then he's handling it worse than Miranda sings. I think that's different because Miranda, Miranda ignored it. Miranda victim blamed. She never even, like Miranda handled it so badly because it's different. Caleb is saying, I'm being taken out of context or this is just not true. Miranda didn't say that. Miranda barely, Miranda handled it so badly. Colleen Ballinger handled her accusations so badly because they were true and she didn't explain them properly. And by the way, I guarantee you that bitch is also autistic or neurodivergent or something is going on. She's stunted mentally. She's got huge trauma. Something is going on. Because look, most content creators, most streamers are not typical people. You cannot be a typical normal person and be a content creator, generally speaking. It's just, it's too much of an anomaly as a job. Right. So I think Miranda hand, or, or Colleen handled it so badly because she she almost pretended it like it didn't happen while still covering it. And it's like she didn't know how to dissect it. She didn't have the wisdom and what she did was wrong. So she didn't even know how to talk about it. It's like she tried to pretend it didn't happen. It was strange. So I want Caleb like if Caleb comes out with a lawyer, if he comes out with her seats, I would love to hear them. You know what I mean? But I I don't want to put him in the Colleen Ballinger but, uh, category yet because Colleen was like, she did just, she, what a mess. I have, oh my God, what a mess. You know what I mean? So, you know, I just, I feel like they're two different kinds of people. It was taken very out of context. Didn't give me any other <sighs> info around that. So just anything you know around this, this. I think, how old was Caleb when this was happening? Because I heard he was like 23 maybe. But I don't know. Do we know how old Caleb was when he was texting these text messages? Does anybody know that? Particular incident. Yeah, I mean, I. <laughs> uh, it's interesting that he'd say that, uh, particularly because I'm I'm not sure there's there's any more context uh, out of which it could be taken. Um, that is the extent of of the context surrounding this. Was that the the friend? Uh, with the nickname Uncut, posted this this picture of his friend who was 16 years old, uh, was posting uh, him as as a part of um, posting. He, he posted the photo to congratulate him uh, and and to express gratitude for him. Um, what does that mean? He posted the video to express gratitude for him. Like, what does that mean? Like, I love my friend who's underage. Are there people who are, why are you posting underage photos? Why are you posting photos of minors? Are you just sharing? Is Caleb making a dumb joke? Like, interesting. Okay, okay, let's see. And, uh, and, and that's, I mean, that's it. That's the context. And then Yeah, yeah, yeah. Vamp says, uh, got so confident and made a song about it. That's what I mean. Colleen made a song. She was so disrespectful. She was totally unhinged. She got angry and defensive. Like, she acted like she was the victim. And I'm like, what are you doing? Why are you acting like you're the victim? So Colleen, Colleen just just came off the worst possible because she just did everything a predator would do in terms of her reaction. But I'm not seeing that from Caleb. Caleb isn't reacting like a typical predator. So maybe Caleb is really unique. But let's see, right? Caleb saw his story on Snapchat and, and took that screenshot. Oh, and so it... Caleb took the screenshot. And posted it in the group chat. Oh. It was at that point that uh, Uncut 
questioned it and and the rest of it takes place here in this that's super weird that's definitely like i would probably go to caleb and be like you're being fucking cringe and honestly it makes you look like a predator to do this and if he goes the age of consent is 16 i'd be like you can make your own decisions you're right it's legal but legality doesn't always coincide with morals and if this is part of your morals then i think there's something in my opinion i would move away from you like, I think that's really fucking weird for adults to be commenting on 16 year olds in general or well, not in general, but sexually. And if it's a joke, it's a joke. But I expect Caleb to be like, oh, my God, I'm so you're right. That was fucking weird. So I do think like Caleb screenshotting a 16 year old, Caleb commenting on it is, again, a reflection of Caleb's processing himself, like his values, Oh, remember when he reposted the screenshot? He didn't know the guy's age. Okay, that's true. Sorry, you're right. He posted the photo, then asked how old. Okay, wait, that's a good point. Okay, wait. And it was the sibling of the person in the chat. Okay, wait, that changes things. You're right. So you're like on Snapchat, you see a picture. You're like, oh, they're cute. Snapchat, send to group chat. Hey, cute. And then someone's like, oh my God, you perv. That's like a teenager. And they're like, how old? And then it's like, ooh, the age of consent. Okay, like, Cringe jokes. Okay, we're going back to cringe jokes now. See? Ah, see? Ah, you almost got me there. Okay, so now we're back to, like, Caleb was making a cringe joke. Okay. Mm. Okay, okay, okay. This group chat. There's, there's no other context out of which it could have been taken. Now, I do have to say, since Caleb has threatened to sue me, that 16-year-olds are actually at the legal age of consent in some states, including Caleb's home state of Michigan, so maybe he doesn't think anything is wrong with saying a 16-year-old boy is hot. Despite that, it seems a lot of people, myself included, think that it's inappropriate for a then 23-year-old Caleb to say things like that. It made me Only if it's not a joke, and in general, the joke is cringe, and in general, I don't think the joke should be made, but I don't think it means you're a predator or morally horrible by making the joke. So if it's purely a joke, I don't think the joke itself is technically the worst. I think it's a little cringe, and I definitely would be like, why are you making that joke? So, I, but I, but if he means it, then at that point, I'm like, hey, I'm not comfortable with a 23-year-old who finds a 16-year-old attractive. Boy says, I got to get out of here. I think y'all are overthinking this. What? <laughs> are we overthinking a man trying to decimate a whole man's career over false or possibly false accusations? Oh, no. <laughs> Feel free if you have any questions. I'm not reaching out to some random username, my bro. But isn't that funny? Like, oh, are we overthinking a man's possible career being decimated and employees out of like a job because somebody on the internet was mad? Like, are we overthinking this or are we literally giving it the respect and time it deserves? But also, okay, love that. Members of the group uncomfortable and just last year, the influencer known as Just Pearly Things made a Ew. similar tweet saying she was obviously being cringe and didn't mean it. She obviously doesn't think 16 year olds are hotter than 20 something year olds. Nothing Pearl says is real. Nothing Sneeko says is real. They don't actually believe anything they're saying. They're obviously grifters. They're obviously just trying to be annoying. The fact that she tweeted it tells me she's brain dead. Because obviously, like, you're so dumb. But obviously, she doesn't mean it. 16-year-olds are hotter than 26 year Pearl doesn't believe this, bro. There's no way Pearl believes this. She just says the most outrageous shit. Year olds. For a brief moment in time, both people on the left and right came together and made it very clear they felt that was an inappropriate comment. Well, it's just stupid. It's not real. She doesn't believe it. Take it off the internet. It's dumb. Which eventually led to that influencer removing that tweet. There have been a number of Caleb supporters. Yeah, because she thought she was being funny and spicy and like, oh, she's so dumb. Who have been defending him this entire time. And I would love to hear in the comments below if the Caleb fans are supporters of grown men saying 16-year-old boys are hot. Yeah, I think it is a red flag, but also do they mean it? That's the problem is like, I need to know if they mean it or if they're making a joke. I don't think Pearl means it. I think there's no way Pearl thinks that's true. Have you seen a 16 year old? Like that's not, I don't believe her. And I, do, I don't even believe Caleb. Have you seen a 16 year old? And if you do find 16 year olds attractive, I, I think you're part of the evolutionary part of the human species that just like is so monkey brained. It's so weird. You know what I mean? Or if you think adults shouldn't be commenting on the hotness of kids. Let's go. 
Let's go. Welcome to the memberships. No Uta, Thero no Uta. How do I say your girl? I don't even know how to say your name, but thank you. Welcome. Video out tomorrow, tonight. I'm going to edit it tonight and then I'll have it out. Now, that wasn't the only time Super Ho made comments about teenage boys. In another post, it made it clear that oh. Super Ho has no qualms about his desire for those young teenage boys. So in these chat messages, Super Ho posts a picture of another member's Instagram page that shows a young boy, and he asks who the guy's name is, and the other guy gives him his name, which I blocked out, and then Uncut says, Caleb's boy crush, and Super Ho responds with, I would like to personally stick my penis in a hole of his. Any hole will do. Thank you. Uncut responds with gross, and Super Ho responds with hot. Yo, Caleb, Caleb says he's only 10% gay, but he sounded a lot gay. He sounded 50% gay right now. Let me. Uncut responds with, dude, he's like 14. Super Ho responds with, nah, probably around. Dude, he's like 14, but is he like 14 or is he 14? And also gross. Around the other MCI member's age, if they were, if they were there with him. Later, Super Ho says, and if fuck, 17, it's legal there. It is here. Uncut responds with, Caleb, you're 23. That's gross. Okay, I agree. Why is Uncut staying friends with Caleb? Like, Caleb sounds super inappropriate. And it sounds like Caleb should probably fucking check himself. But I can't tell. Yeah, what is this? And also, do we know this is like Caleb? I know it shows Caleb's picture. It looks like Caleb, at least in this little picture here. But I don't know the details of this. Like, have we confirmed this? Are these real? Um, not really. What, I'm 50 and I find a sexy 21-year-old. I could be a sugar daddy. I would let her be. I, age gap relationships are gross, bro. I don't like them. Superho says, not really. What, I'm 50 and I find a sexy 21-year-old. I could be a sugar daddy. I will do it. Or her sugar daddy. Has sex all the time. Responds with a uh, confused or upset meme. And then Superho says, both my grandparents' sets are 10 years apart. Six years is nothing. I would shove that cock right down his throat where it belongs. Yo, cringe. Yeah, this is super like, if this was my brother, I'd slap him across the face and be like, get your fucking shit together, bro. Get your fucking shit together. If this is real and legit, I would I would expect Caleb to be like 100% if this is him, own it and then get yourself for some therapy or prove to yourself that you're not this cringe still. Bro, this is weird, bro. Yeah, I fucking hate age gaps, bro. Um, so this is, so if he's in his late 20s now and this was when he was 23, I mean, people will severely change, right? Caleb said it was out of context, which leads me to think it's him. Yeah, yeah. So if it is him and he's, I don't think he's denying that it's him. I would say like, this is super cringe. I know boys who talk like this. I mean, gosh, I have stories about grown fucking men who apparently like are into teenagers, like in ways that I'm just so annoyed. I'm so annoyed with men this month. Oh my God. I'm so annoyed with everybody being like, um, they're very mature for their age, bro. They're very mature for their age, bro. Go old yeller yourself, bro. Literally gold yeller. But humans are an evolved animal species. And there's going to be a category of humans that are just like so fucking dumb and only think with their dicks. And I can't tell what we should do with these people, but I want them to outgrow this for their own sake because it's so annoying. Now the question is, is Caleb still like this? Probably not. Right? Like probably not. But also he needs to fucking either say like, this is a fucking joke it's fucking cringe. It's, ugh, you know what I mean? I don't like it. I don't like anything about this. Okay. And if this was my brother, I'd slap him across the face and be like, get your fucking shit together and go to church. Jesus Christ. Ugh. Uncut responds with, it's something if they're underage. Superho says anything under 16 is, believe it or not, 17 is not under 16. Has sex all the time responds with another meme. Uncut then says, still not an adult. Superho says, I fucked too many people when I was not an adult. Uncut says. Ooh, is Caleb. Is Caleb super traumatized and promiscuous? Pause. This is a. I'm not a therapy channel. I'm a philosophy channel. This is a very common occurrence in young sexually queer children 
who were repressed or sexualized young, where they were incredibly promiscuous. Almost every gay person I've known, especially men, have a story about being with an older, much adult man as a younger person, which is why the conservatives have that stereotype that older gay people do get with teenagers. So many gay men I know have absolutely done stuff with people over age. To be fair, a lot of those kids have also lied to those people about their age. That's pretty common. Check IDs, people. So I'm wondering if Caleb is like super, super traumatized, acting out in a promiscuous manner. And then, you know what I mean? Like having this sort of like relationship with sexuality. I hate to say it, but it's pretty fucking common. And then recently him saying like, oh, I'm only 10% gay. Baby, this isn't 10% gay. Habibi, this is not 10% gay. I'm so sorry. This is just not 10% gay. And also, I don't want to hear any conservative say like, oh, gay people like children. Um, Have you met straight people? 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 Okay? The sexualiz sexualization of children is so rampant in society and it's coming from all y'all. And I don't want to hear anybody point the finger when you know you're all guilty. You're all guilty, straights and the gays. Everybody's guilty and I'm watching both of you, okay? Anyways, I want to know why he thinks he's 10% gay if these are the messages he's sending. But also, you know, here's the difference too, is I know as a woman who has straight brothers, straight guys are very gay together, but they're very gay in a straight way. It's very different. Caleb is being gay in a gay way. He's being gay in a gay way. Okay, so I wonder if he's dealing with an insane amount of repression and he needs an insane amount of therapy, probably, right? It's just trying to save you from trouble. Superho says, if something is not against the law, there would be no trouble. Uncut. Uh, and also, this is why, see, the person who's mad at him, like, I don't, are they still in contact with him? Are they mad at him? Like, I just like, hey, bro, this is super cringe. But obviously, like, I mean, I have very complicated relationships with people where I know, like, that's what I'm saying. I'm not trying to judge you as a consciousness. I'm trying to say, like, this isn't the best version of you. And I'm not sure that you know that. Justifying being attracted to people that are younger because, quote, they're mature for their age. Or, again, age gap relationships over 30, I don't care. But if the person is younger than 30, bro, they're in such a, like, a learning stage of their life, including Caleb, who's 23. Like, you know what I mean? It's like, just... Okay. Responds with, I mean, you do you and do those boys. And Super Ho responds. Cognitive dissonance is saying a 17 year old is children is bad faith, is it not? It's making it sound like pedo stuff. Yeah, like nothing here is pedophilia. So I, I don't even want to have that conversation. Like if you guys are mentioning pedophilia, we're not having the same conversation. But I do think like 23 and 17 and 23 and 16 is incredibly inappropriate. And though I do know that it happens in other bubbles, I do think it is an indication that the older person is emotionally and horribly stunted. More than them being predators, they might actually just be dumb. I'm dead serious. I'm dead fucking serious. So, you know, um, yeah, I, obviously, like, there's nothing pedophilic happening. So I don't want, if you guys are throwing around that word, that's crazy, right? N nothing here is pedophilia. Bonds with, I do. As you can see from those texts, the other members of the group clearly did not agree with Superhost. Uh, Kenzie Star says black men, black straight men actually don't joke like other straight men I've noticed. If the black straight men are de denying the gay jokes and their humor, I would say that's even gayer. You know what I mean? General says, Brittany, I think the 10% gay comments might be how he markets himself. His videos draw more conservative audience because a finance is treated as a conservative bubble. True. True. See, that's so interesting. How isn't, isn't that interesting that finance is considered a conservative bubble? Maybe it's, I, that's such a weird, like it is a phenomenon though. You're right. All the financial people I, I watch, they tend to be much more conservative somehow, somehow, even the liberal ones. It's interesting. Openly sharing his desire for teenage boys. Now to make it clear, I don't care what Caleb Hammer's orientation is. Many members of the MCI group, including the informant who gave me these texts, identify informant. as members of the LG. Does this, this guy think he's a journalist? Is he like a journalist or something? He's like the informant. The informant. LGBTQ community. 
The issue here, if this really is Caleb, is his alleged interest in young teenage boys and his continued attempt to openly express this in the MCI group chat that was not intended to host this type of conversation. The informant who gave me these texts told me this type of continued behavior made himself and others very uncomfortable. On okay. another occasion, <laughs> Super Ho decided it would be a bright idea to post a screenshot of an adult video of two men having anal in the chat. Caleb's gay. Caleb's, Caleb's bisexual. He's a pansexual queen. Man, he likes gay porn, gay jokes. He's gay, bro. This pissed off everyone in the group, and few of the younger members of the group were quickly removed from the chat before they saw the image so they wouldn't have to be subjected to it. So in these chats right here, you can see several members are talking about different adult stars that they like. Super ho- That's your prof that's what I'm saying. Y'all, just a reminder that this was the professional chat and that person that Schaefer just interviewed allegedly said like, this was a very professional chat. Then why are you guys all talking about porn? Why are all your nicknames sex? Why are you even doing this? And a professional, guys, do you even know what professional is supposed to mean? Hello? So funny. Stop it right now. professional my ass bro oh talks about how kyler moss used to be his favorite adult star i wish he didn't stop he stopped a few years back now my favorite is joey mills so these Man, caleb's gay bro these texts go on for a while until uncut eventually says it's all fun and games until caleb posted a picture of joey mills getting f i love this chat got gay as fuck okay dancing gay fire says i love how this chat got gay as fuck this chat has always been gay as fuck okay so they all agree they're all gay as fuck I just made a separate statement saying twinks are my life force. Okay, they're all fucking gay. Everyone is gay. This is a gay chat. Okay, this is a gay fucking chat and we love it here. Okay, we love the gays. We're gay too. Everybody here is gay. Everyone in my chat is gay. Everyone is gay and autistic, so we get it. But like, what? How is this a professional chat, y'all? Because everybody be fucking... That's the rule of adulthood. Everyone be fucking and the drama be like high school with money. And then a few minutes later, uh, Super Ho actually posts an uncensored picture of Joey Mills and another guy to which he responds. Okay, has sex all the time, says why, delete that shit, inappropriate. There's some things you just don't send to the chat. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah, Caleb is super inappropriate. He's like very uncensored, huh? What is up with Caleb's psychology, bro? He's so, um, he's so like, uh, like can't read the room. He's autistic. He can't read the room. Like, it's weird. You know what I mean? That's so interesting. Wait, Cameron says your black shirt blends in with your black chair and it makes you look like you're, uh, you're wearing a mess of shoulder pads. What? I'm wearing a blue shirt with a red chair. Wow, my coloring is really off in my videos. Hello? <laughs> but yeah, dude, uh, Caleb cannot read a room to save his fucking life. That's so funny. You know? Interesting. Huh. Haha, -ha, changed it on you. It's Joey Mills topping. And then he says, puss. And then you can see pretty much everyone in the group is extremely ticked off that he decided to post this because it was clearly just a, a joke and then he decided it would be hilarious to post uncensored adult content in this chat. And you can see several people asking him to remove it and they removed other people in the group so they wouldn't be subjected to actually seeing this image. And Caleb ghosted us, ha ha ha. Super ho added somebody, it should be gone. Refresh, did I see it? It's just a penis inserting into a butthole. crazy. Caleb doesn't really seem, or Super Ho doesn't really seem like it's a big deal to him. Now, aside from Super Ho's love of teenage boys and posting inappropriate unwanted adult content, he also dabbled in the occasional slurs from time to time. Uh-uh. You can't go for people for slurs. I refuse to believe this. Don't fucking lie to me. You've all said a slur. Don't fucking lie to me. I'm your mother. You know you've all said a slur, okay? Don't, I don't like people who go for slurs. It doesn't count. I'm so sorry. Not in edgy teen boy chat rooms, not on the internet forums. 
I really genuinely feel like the only time a slur is taken seriously is when it's used in conjunction of like a literal hate crime. Like, because the context matters. I refuse to believe this. Okay, I refuse. Is, it, is gender a construct? Then slurs are a construct. And I believe both are constructs. See, I'm more progressive than the progressives. Everybody is living in a construct. So your slur is a construct. And I love that. And I do take slurs seriously when they're said seriously. And most of y'all are not using them seriously. And I know because you, the context. Because maybe I'm autistic, maybe I'm not, but I know context. Okay? So, what is the context? On one occasion... Because if it's a hate crime, I'll come down on Caleb, bro. He decided to rename everyone in the group to R word, including himself. Oh my God. And it's the R word. It's not even a good slur. That's a joke. Okay. So he renamed everybody with the R word slur. Wow. Crazy. Wow. So, so, so I'm telling you he's autistic, bro. I'm telling you he's autistic. Wow. Wow, he's so, he's so sassy. So he, okay, he, Rick, re, let's like say R word too. We've gone full of uh, R word in the chat. Okay, yeah, like get it? It's a, okay. Obviously he doesn't mean it. See, that's why I don't like Schaefer. His morals be crazy. My morals can't fuck with this. I can't fuck with this construct, bros. So I can't fuck with it. This, everybody knows the R word is like, it's not, Nobody gives a fuck, but Caleb is cringe, bro. He's so unfunny, it's insane. Like, he's so unfunny, it's insane. You know what I mean? Damn, rip, bro. Do you guys, do you guys see it like, oh. Elf, and then to add a cherry on top, decided to rename R Word 5 to R Word 5 Mexican. When I spoke to the informant about- Is he Mexican? These texts, he made it clear that he felt Caleb seemed to be a very callous and disrespectful individual, and he seemed to take pleasure in making other members of the group uncomfortable. Yeah. Oh, that is true. Ooh, 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 ooh. I do think young Caleb did enjoy making people uncomfortable. What category of person is this? Because this is a type of person. There is a type of person in the world who like, but not in the sadistic way, but like kind of in a funny Wait, but like not in a funny way. Caleb feels like the unfunny fat friend who's trying to be a pick me. So he makes dumb, edgy jokes to get the attention he feels like he needs because he needs validation. And I'm saying this because Caleb's talked about his weight before and talked about his body issues. So I'm thinking, what if he's the category of like, I'm the fat guy who wants to be loved. And the way I seek love is by seeking attention, good or bad. And the bad attention I'm getting is just as validating as the good intention I'm or good attention I'm getting. Something like that. Like, what if he's the category of person? Because he's so insecure to me. He's a very insecure person. You know what I mean? So, and not in a bad way. Like, I mean, I like Caleb, but I just find him to be very like working on himself because he seems very like I could, I feel like I could, and he would fall over, you know? So I wonder, yeah, I wonder if he's like seeking a lot of attention as like a validation thing. And it's just, it's so cringe and uncomfortable and he's making everyone feel uncomfortable. You know what I mean? Um, okay, you guys are agreeing maybe. Okay, uh, Hannah says, I know the exact same person or exact type of person you're talking about. I've met several. They're so insufferable. They are insufferable. They're so insufferable. And I feel like that's him. Okay, bingo, spot on. Okay, okay, okay. Because that's, again, tell me if I'm wrong, but I feel like that's what I'm seeing. And now I'm wondering if he's outgrown that maybe. He talks about therapy, so maybe he's outgrown that. You know what I mean? Yeah, but that's exactly the vibe I get from him. Which is rip. That's why I'm saying it doesn't sound like a predator. It sounds like somebody who needs a lot of love and attention, a lot of therapy, a lot of maturing. And this is 23-year-old Caleb. So this is like seven, eight, no, six years ago. This is like six years ago. People grow a lot from their early 20s to their late 20s, guys. Okay. Those texts you saw were from 2018, but when Caleb allegedly rejoined- 2018. 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24. 
Yeah, okay. The group just a couple of years ago, the informant claimed his behavior hadn't changed at all. Uh, those in oh, so two years ago, Caleb is still being... Okay. Interactions that I had with Caleb were, were my earlier interactions with him back in 2018. Um, throughout the extent of time that we were in those series of sort of uh, friendly but professionally minded uh, groups. Stop saying professionally minded. Nothing about those messages. See, I don't trust this informant because he keeps trying to insinuate that it was supposed to be a professional space. Then why was it the most unprofessional space in the world? That's what I'm saying. I don't believe any of you. You're all fucking children. I'm telling you right now. I'm telling you right now, it's just, it's so stupid. I'm, I've got a headache. I'm getting annoyed. I'm getting annoyed because the framing of the video is bullshit. You cannot frame the group chat as professional when nobody was being professional. None of you are being professional. When I think professional, I think no talks of sex, no talks of porn. You have your names or you have very serious names. What are you talking about? So again, this person who's claiming they were part of the group chat, I don't know which one they are. They were participating in the unprofessional behavior as well if they were one of the usernames that were active. So I don't, I'm so sick of this narrative. It's so stupid. Chats. Um, Caleb was uh, consistently a, a source of argument, of, um, of disrespect, of flippancy, um, and was uh, always... Um, was always acting um, with in a just in a, in in what I found to be a very uh, callous manner. Mm. Uh, become very noticeable to me that Caleb was um, was very consistent about making things uncomfortable uh, and uh, expressed that he took pleasure in in sort of that. Okay, I don't know if he took pleasure in making people uncomfortable, but he definitely was doing it on purpose. I think because he liked the attention, he definitely wanted to be the center of attention. Initiating those uncomfortable situations. Um, there was a period of a, a few years in which I did not speak to him and which in which he was not part of those uh, um, group chats. He returned to our primary composer group chat in. Um, wait, is the wait? Are these two different chats now? I thought the composer group chat was this group chat. Is he saying there was two group chats? Is this the more casual group chat? I believe it was 2023. Um, and it was as if nothing had changed uh, mm. at that time. So um, he continued to make sexual references when they were completely unprompted or unwarranted. He uh, would initiate arguments. He would not accept differing opinions. Can we see those text messages, please? Uh, he, would, he would repeatedly insist on arguing his point um, no matter how much anybody else would try to resolve an argument by agreeing to disagree. Mm. Um, and so just from, from the first time I've known him throughout many, many years, he has always been, uh, somebody who is, uh, is, is interested in generating conflict, uh, is interested in, um, making people uncomfortable and who is uh who is i i think i get the impression and have the opinion hmm. that uh that he is um a, a narcissistic individual who um who thrives off of the negative emotions he elicits in others okay could be possible i would love to see updated screenshots i because that would change if i saw caleb acting that way right now that could be a pattern. And then I would be more open to believing it for sure. As of right now, I'm saying Caleb was cringe and annoying and an attention seeker. None of that really is surprising to me that a 23-year-old guy was doing that. But I would like to see a pattern of behavior now. Uh, so, you know, narcissistic behavior outside of NPD is an abnormal in content creators or people in theater groups or music groups. I said what I said. But also, it's, like, really common in, like, high-stress situations. People have to have big enough egos to think they deserve to be there. But NPD itself is a diagnosis. We, we, we don't know how to do that. But if he's still texting the way he's texting n then now, that would be interesting. I want to see those messages, please. Receipts? Okay. 
Uh, so just to follow up, um, I'm, I'm sure you've seen his YouTube channel. So you feel that that kind of narcissistic personality that's kind of portrayed on his YouTube channel is... It- he does not portray a narcissistic personality on the YouTube channel at all. He literally doesn't any more than any other financial guy. If you guys go and watch Graham Stephan or Dave Ramsey or any financial guy, they always do that. Oh, I can't believe you did that with your money, bro. It's part of the shtick. Caleb Hammer's obviously acting when he goes... Sorry, earphone users, just like warning, earphone users. Caleb Hammerers goes, what? Why did you buy that? What? Starbucks? Like, he literally goes annoyingly high-pitched. He's obviously acting. Like, oh, come on. How autistic is the world, guys? I feel like, come on. It's obviously an act. Like, hello, he's literally, what? Starbucks? He doesn't give a fuck if you buy Starbucks. He's just doing it because it makes better views. Oh my God, it's obviously not real, bro. Same with literally Graham Steph and all these other people on their videos. They act differently than in the podcasts. If you watch these people on podcasts, they're much more like themselves and they're not going, Starbucks? That's obviously for the videos. It's obviously that. Maiden said it's not uncommon for autistics to be called narcissistic. Very true. Very true. Okay. Ugh. Anyways. Yeah, yeah, stop. You said it's cool, sis. Blow my eardrums. I'm into it. Stop flirting with me. I'm married. Anyways, but you know what I mean? Like, again, if you watch Graham Stephan or Dave Ramsey or um, Caleb Hammer on their videos, they're much more aggressive and arrogant. If you just watch them in a podcast, they're normal because it's part of the thing. Uh, you know what I mean? Liv says people get very confused what narcissism actually is because it's synonymous with any negative behavior trait. I agree. I agree. It's just like this is so silly to be like his narcissistic personality on his show. He's not exhibiting narcissism on his show at all. And as a non-therapist, non-therapy channel, I can make that diagnosis, bitch. Is somewhat true to his actual real personality? I would say it's incredibly true to his real personality. Knowing what we know now, Super Ho clearly is attracted by young- We don't know anything now. Teenage boys. We don't know that. Caleb's original accuser, Zeke, was also a teenage boy at the time of the alleged events and also has- He was 19, so it's still an adult. Like, everybody relax. It's young, but it's an adult. A similar skin tone to the picture from the chat messages. What in the white man did you just say? What did this white man just say? Is he a white man? What did this man just say? Is he- What? While Zeke's action events, teenage boys. Caleb's original accuser, Zeke, was also a teenage boy at the time of the alleged events and also has a similar skin tone to the picture from the chat messages. What? What? <laughs> what? What am I supposed to? What is? What am I supposed to? What does that mean? Somebody explain that to me. <laughs> Some somebody help me. What does that mean? I don't even. What is? What am? I'm a little. I'm a little short on. I know what I want to say, but I don't know how to say it. Like, what am I? What's the correlation? What's the, what are we, who, huh, what, <laughs> what does that mean? What is he trying to say? What is he saying? He's like, oh, Caleb's got a type. He's got a type, doesn't he? He got brown skin, teenage boy type. He's got a type. What, what are you talking about? What are you talking about? Zeke is 19. So everybody relax. The other kid was 16. Age of consent was legal in both cases. But just because they're both like brownish doesn't mean anything. You got like a little bit of a stare. What is he saying? What's he saying? It's crazy. While Zeke's actions have made him unbelievable to many people, <sighs> I'm curious if this change... Now, don't get me wrong. Okay, hold on. Captain says, I've noticed people thinking 18, 19 aren't actually adults because of the word teen, as if not knowing how numbers work. Okay. Yes, those are legal adults. And though... Okay, because it's a legal adult, I don't want to hear anything about it being illegal. I think it's okay to ask the question, should adults over a certain age be interacting sexually with people 18 and 19, even though it's legal? It's okay for something to be legal and for you to still question if it's moral. But morals are subjective. They do not say anything about you outside of your own perception of good and bad, right? 
So I think it's a red flag when someone's 25 dating an 18 year old. I think it's a red flag when someone's 30 dating an 18 year old. I think it's a red flag when someone's 50 and dating a 25 year old. I think lots of things are red flags. Who the fuck cares what Brittany thinks? If you disagree with me, cool. I personally think it's a little bit of a red flag. I'm not saying you're a bad person. I'm not saying you're a predator. I'm not saying anything about you. I don't know you. I'm saying it's probably an indication of something unhealthy happening. As you would hope, as you gain older in age, you would mature to a certain point as to not find younger people attractive. But as you and I both know, lots of adults don't mature in all aspects of their life and continue finding younger people attractive because of their maturity levels being very similar. So it's not even about being predators. It's about being immature. So again, I think it's a red flag because I would want to date somebody with the maturity and growth to sort of reflect their own age as is appropriate, which is also a bubble concept. Everything is a bubble. So again, like I... I don't need you to hear me and think like Brittany's making this prescription for all of us. I don't give a fuck what you do in your life, bitch. I'm not your mom. I'm just letting you know from my perspective, you don't have to agree. Okay? Like you do not have to agree. Okay? Changes your opinion on if Zeke is telling the truth about his alleged encounter with Caleb Hammer. Now, before I end the video, I want to talk about one more thing. Caleb's content, in my opinion, has devolved from actually trying to help people financially to nothing more than trying to mock people for their terrible financial habits. No, Caleb has one of the most compassionate and loving shows. We have watched him show so much love for his for the people he's talking to. He has gone from mocking them to loving them. He's had he wants to bring a therapist on staff so people have someone to talk to after. Caleb handled that girl we reviewed who was going through a mental health crisis. He handled her so compassionately, right? So it's just like so weird. You know what I mean? Like it's so, it's so weird that that's the impression. I don't think people are watching his videos because again, we've reviewed many of Caleb's videos and he's very, we're actually very impressed a lot of the time how mentally health aware he is. So I think that's kind of interesting that I think people are just seeing his titles and his thumbnails and they're not, and they don't understand it's for clickbait. People do this to me all the time. I will make a clickbait like title or thing that's kind of like a play on words and people won't watch the video and I know they don't watch the video because they comment on things that I address in the video and then they'll be like, oh, this is what you mean by this. So I'm thinking that people aren't watching Caleb who are his haters. I don't think this guy's watching his videos. He can't be. That's not the impression I'm getting. I've watched Caleb on the, on the podcast. I've watched his videos from beginning to end. And from what I've seen, and maybe I haven't seen enough, but from what I've seen, he's been incredibly compassionate to the people on his show. So I'm going to say fake fans, bro. He brings people on, yells at them, tells them they're stupid for buying Starbucks coffee, and even goes so far as to openly insult them in the titles and thumbnails to make... Yeah, this guy's just a hater, bro. ...make them seem as pathetic as possible. In a recent video, he even decided to make the Asian guy in the thumbnail look as inappropriate as possible, all in the hopes of getting as many... Um, did you notice that both of them are fucking edited? Did you notice that both of them are fucking stupid looking? Did did anyone care that Caleb looks stupid? Did, did anybody care that Caleb also looks stupid? ...many views as he... ...the thumbnails to make them seem as pathetic as possible. Guys, look at these thumbnails. Obviously, Caleb's going for a very exaggerated, intense thumbnail. Look at the thumbnails. They're insane, bro. They've all got fucked up faces. This one's got a fucked up face. This one has a fucked up face. This one has a... They're... Obviously, it's for the thumbnail. Half this guy's face is missing. That's literally the thumbnails. He makes very interesting thumbnails. What are we even fucking talking about? What are we talking about? In a recent video, he even decided to make the Asian guy in the thumbnail look as inappropriate as possible... All in the hopes of getting as Why'd many- Why'd you mention that he was Asian? What does that matter? This guy feels a little race baity. This guy feels a little race baity. I'm gonna call him out. He feels racist and baity, bro. Not racist, but race baity. He's baiting the racist thing. He's being weird. ...views as he can to rack up that ad revenue. This thumbnail- yes. Oh, he's a YouTuber. Wow, congratulations. <laughs> this guy's an idiot. Schaefer might be the dumbest fucking idiot ever. I'm so sorry. God bless you. You're probably someone's child. Everyone's going to human, guys. Honestly, he's probably doing his best, but I, his negative energy is bringing out a fiery bitch in me. 
And I just feel like he's being so bad faith. I find it inappropriate. I find his bad faith inappropriate. He's a YouTuber. Of course, Caleb is going to go for the most views. That's why he's got a million subscribers and you've got 100,000. Also, this is a guy who covers scams for a living and exposes people. And yet, I guarantee you, I think he's probably wrong about this Caleb thing. I have a feeling he's going to be wrong about this in the end, probably. Apparently, I could be wrong. I could be wrong. Too far, and his own audience called him out in the YouTube comments and on his own subreddit, to which Caleb then decided to take a break from Reddit and pinned a comment. Yeah, fuck Reddit. They're full of mean autists. Don't be on Reddit. The nice autists are in my audience. You should come hang out in my audience. Everyone is very nice here, and they're autistic. There, they're mean. They're mean. They, they, they're just mean. On the YouTube video, trying to push back against the well-deserved backlash for portraying an Asian man in such an inappropriate way. How is that an inappropriate? Damn, Asians can't have fun no more? There was a black guy with a distorted face? What, the black people? Like, it can, what are we talking? What is this conversation? What is this conversation? What is it? What bubble is this, yo? What bubble am I being swallowed by right now? This bubble is weird. What, Asians can't have fun anymore? Only white guys can have fun edited like thumbnails? Man, they try to take everything away from my cousins, my brethren. As a West Asian myself, let me tell you, okay? We are allowed to have fun too. <laughs> Now, Caleb has claimed funny, on many bro. occasions that guests on the show get a say on the thumbnail design and titles of their mm. videos, and that he would never create those over-the-top designs unless the guest was okay with it. But after speaking to- Honestly, though, a lot of people don't even ask their guests. They just fucking do shit. To a former guest of the show, Gia, she said something- When did she come on, and was this recent? Because Caleb started doing these recently, as far as I know. Something entirely different. Caleb put her in a jail outfit in the thumbnail, wrote scum on her chest, and titled the video that she deserves jail. Gia claims she never agreed to that and was very disappointed how she was portrayed on the episode, okay. claiming the bad parts were hyped up, which led to Caleb's fans attempting to dox her and ruin her life. Like, we did the episode, they told me to hype up my bad parts, and so, like, to make me out to be, like, the bad guy, because that's, like, kind of his shtick. And so... That yeah, that's maybe probably not the thing I would do personally, but I could see that being really good for YouTube, right? Video ended up being really, really, really bad to the point where they were trying to dodge. I also think financial shows like this do bring out some of the sickest people. Um, you guys asked me on my introspection system of the levels, like the five levels, you asked me if a lot of Caleb's guests are ones. I think a lot of Caleb's guests are mentally troubled and incredibly traumatized people. Financial health and trauma go hand in hand. I know I was the worst financially when I was the worst mentally. And as I got healthy mentally, my finances got better. And I know just like anecdotally speaking, there seems to be a correlation, right? Between like mental health and trauma and education and your financial health. So it's not surprising that a financial show like Caleb's would attract certain kinds of people. Now, I'll tell you the difference between Caleb's secret and Dave Ramsey's secret. Dave Ramsey attracts a very specific kind of conservative and serious and obviously more established kind of caller than Caleb Hammer that invites a much more reckless, young, fucked up demographic. So Dave Ramsey's callers are people who have owned homes, who maybe bought too many homes or maybe went into debt for school, $100,000, but at least got their degree and is working in their industry. Caleb's people don't even have money to put gas in their car to get back home. So if one advice I would give Caleb is the same advice I give myself, make sure your audience is medium fucked up because these people are too fucked up. They don't need to be on YouTube shows talking about how fucked up they are. They need to be in therapist offices or at church. You know what I'm saying? So I think that Caleb has made a decision to attract really fucked up people who need help and he's underqualified to help them just as a person. They're too messy, too messy. Her vibe already, I'm telling you right now, too messy. This is a messy vibe. This is not a person who's doing life in a healthy capacity. 
And like, it's not the piercings. It's not the tattoos because I have tattoos and I have piercings and I know it's not that. And I'm queer and I'm a sex worker. So it's not that. You can just tell the vibes. Look at the vibes. Very different. Okay. It's not alternative lifestyles. It's not sex work. It's none of those things make you, it's the, it's your whole vibe, bro. Okay. So he needs to upgrade his audience to being medium fucked up because he's right now he's going for too fucked up. His audience, the people he's calming, he's too fucked up. They're too fucked up. It's me. They're trying to dox my husband. They're trying to dox my family. There was like people, the people who watched the episode. Caleb himself. Yeah, people who so watched sorry, the, what? People who watched the episode were trying to dox you. Just his audience. And uh, one thing I want to mention, uh, ma'am, are you eating on the interview, ma'am? <laughs> I love her. I love. She's eating during the interview, exposing Caleb Hammer for being a bad person. Do you hear me? Do you get what I'm saying? Too fucked up. The vibes. It's too sick. She needs, she needs, she doesn't need Caleb Hammer. She needs a resort. You know what I mean? Look at the vibes. Look at the vibes. Look at how she's presenting herself. Look how she's doing the interview. Look at the vibes. Uh, ask us about the, uh, the thumbnail. And by vibes, I mean context clues and information she's giving us. She's signaling something to us. What is she signaling? All of your video, it's you in a jumpsuit. And he, the title is You Should Be in Jail, and it has scum written on your chest. Did you approve that thumbnail? Wait. TLDW, I don't know what that means. I forget. For how she's portrayed on his show, she left her special needs kid with her mom so she could live a van life in a rundown car. Yeah, that makes sense. He's attracting a sick, a very sick part of the population. And it's way above his pay grade. These types of people need an insane amount of help. You can't, they're going to cause you hell. They're going to clout. They're going to follow you for clout. They're going to ruin your life because their life is already ruined. This is not the type of person who's ready to get better. You got to shoot for people that are fucked up, but are ready to get better. Right? Not the people that are fucked up and are not ready to get better. Right? I'm telling you, listen to Mama Simon. Listen to me. Listen, to Auntie Brainy, I'm telling you right the fuck now. Caleb is going to keep having this problem forever if he does not get a healthier group of the population that needs help. They're just this group of the population just isn't healthy enough to get better at this time in their life. To want to get better, you have to really be ready. And until you're ready, you just won't be. And that's okay. I've been there. I get it. You did not approve no. it. No. Because his his the people say that he all, all of the thumbnails. And she could have a medical condition that means she has to eat on camera. Or she just likes food, you know, I don't know. They're approved by the people who appear on the channel. And you say you did not approve that thumbnail. I mean, like, we took a bunch of pictures together. Or not together, but, like, they took a bunch of pictures after recording. But I didn't, like, get to see, like, their options for that thumbnail. That's normal. That's normal. That's what they do. They don't, they, you know, they get, that's literally, when I do collabs with people, I just say, hey, what picture do you want me to use? Or, hey, can I just grab a screen grab from the live stream? And people go, yeah, for sure, whatever. And then I'm usually really chill too, because I don't give a fuck. You know what I mean? No. An argument that has been around for a long time is whether influencers are responsible for their audience's <sighs> behavior or not. Some people say no, while others think they are. I, I think Caleb is responsible for attracting the audience that he has, and he should get a new one. I don't think he has the healthiest audience and I don't think he has the healthiest guests. And I think that is a reflection of his choices. And I think he should try to get better ones. I have an amazing audience and I do think that's a reflection of my choices because I work really hard to attract really good people. I try to signal to the world I want you healthy and trying and acknowledging that we're all still works in progress. You know what I mean? But, okay, like, I think I... My audience is a reflection of my choices as a content creator. And that's why I'm so proud of my audience because it's the best one I've ever had. And they're they're just so great and insightful. Caleb's audience, he needs to replace them with a better one. And somewhere in the middle and believe that creator isn't responsible for every little action your audience does. But when you create an atmosphere of hate where you belittle every guest that comes on your show, 
treat them like they are idiots and portray them as horrible people in the title and thumbnails, your audience will see that and think it's okay for them to also treat these people the way they see Caleb treat them. I heard from several guests on the show. Yeah, but remember, if you watch Caleb through and through, he is very kind to them in the interviews. But I think he's he's actually kind of right that Caleb wants the but that's the problem is the viewers do often want the negativity but I think he could tone it down by 25 percent and get a much better audience I think I think he's just trying to stand out as a content creator but I think because he's trying to stand out as a content creator he's also inviting a very negative part of the internet and very sick people to come on his show who have all been doxxed and harassed by Caleb's fan after appearing on the show. Because Caleb creates, in my opinion, episodes of Jerry Springer that is disguised as financial content so he can get higher ad rates and better sponsors. Well, he could do it either way, but I think that he'd actually make more money if he did more positive content. I think he'd just have to do it in a way that makes sense. Um... But we've seen with like the whatever podcast and all these other things, people do make a lot more money, but so do the guests often. So huh? it's hard to say. It's hard to say the direction he should go in because obviously something's working for him. But yeah, I think it's probably not going to be worth it in the long run. Also, Caleb's really fucked up himself. So I wonder if Caleb being fucked up is a part of why he thinks this is the audience he deserves versus when you get healthier, you kind of feel like, OK, I'm going to attract a better audience now. You know, ultimately, my personal opinion is that the show does very little to help anyone who appears on it and is designed primarily. It's because those people are are not ready to get help. That's why it's not Caleb. It's these people are not ready to get help. It's very difficult to get help with finances is he's even he even said this in the iced coffee hour. He said, I didn't realize how much finance is tied to mental, but it's absolutely related to your mental health, trauma, your relationship with money, how your parents raised you, how you learned about money. There was a person on the show who got one of those money tree loans. I don't remember what it was called, which company exactly, but you know, adjacent to money tree. And it was like a, I don't even remember, like a a 200% interest rate or something. I just remember like my brain was blown. I was like, nobody taught you anything about money, bro. And that usually is an indication of a very toxic upbringing. When no one has taught you the basics about money, Somebody fucked up and it was your mommy and your daddy or your daddy and your daddy, you know? Really to make Caleb and his team as rich as possible, all of the expense of shitting on every person who comes on the show looking for help. In the description of this- I don't even believe a lot of them are looking for help. I think they're looking for clout for sure, bro. this video, you'll find my entire interviews with Zeke, Gia, and the MCI informant. Give those a watch and then make up your own mind about who you believe. Mm. Ultimately, I feel Caleb's channel is a net negative to the YouTube platform as a whole. Okay, God. See, this is the part where I don't like this. This like, I'm better than you. I'm better than anyone. I'm going to say Caleb's whole channel is a net negative for YouTube. Bro, fucking relax. Jesus Christ, millions of minutes are uploaded to YouTube. And like every fucking second and you're sitting here being like, um, actually, I think Caleb's videos are a net negative for YouTube. I think your mom's a net negative for the world. Just my opinion. Oh, but for those who disagree, I would love to hear your opinion as to why in the comments below. Jesus, cringe. Okay, that was one video here. You guys can go check it out yourselves. I'll link it in the chat. Okay, here we go. Um, <laughs> one thing's for sure, this guy's definitely not 90% straight, for sure. Hi, Caleb, I know you are here. Okay, attention seeker much? Okay. Since he collaborated with Steven... Graham Stefan? Oh, Stefan. Graham Stefan. And Money Guys, his channel has gotten weirder. I could forgive the titles, but the thumbnails became more of a kind of predatory toy channels from the mid-2810s. Weird. Well, this is some surprising news. Never post anything online that you would want the police or your mother to read. Well, maybe not my mother. See, that's like such a sex-negative like comment, right? Um... These comments are kind of weird. Okay. So this video was in February 
29th. Let's just watch like a few minutes and see what the vibe is. YouTube recommended me a very weird- He kept asking about OnlyFans. And I was like, hey, stop asking. I'm not interested. I don't do that. I don't do that. Uh, and frankly, interesting video yesterday. This is what caused me to care about Caleb Hammer. I don't know. I was going to be nice. I like literally, we made him a t-shirt. I was like, maybe he'll want to like, you know, chim cham about finance him, you know? <laughs> what I did is I basically wrote bit. the best episode of financial audit ever for him. And he shit in my face. And, and that the, was the his night worst. night before, that dude, was a huge he canceled mistake. on me. Huge mistake. 12 hours before. So because I knew nothing about this, I figured I'd create a timeline and uh, see what we find out. For those of you who don't know, Caleb Hammer is a well-known financial YouTuber uh, based out of Austin, Texas. He primarily brings on guests who have issues regarding finances. For this video though, we will be discussing a guest he had on at the time and the timeline associated with their meetings to provide an accurate yet brief account of their interactions, history, and current allegations. So the guest in question today is named Zeke, or Ezekiel. While I couldn't do Zeke justice describing who he is and what his situation is, I believe Caleb Hammer does it best. Today we'll be meeting with Zeke. At the age of 19, he dropped out of school and quit his job because he quote, doesn't want to work. His mom supports his lazy lifestyle while he just makes excuses at every turn. He really is like a reality TV show, like uh, Dr. Phil or Jerry Springer, I guess. I guess. I could see the vibe. And if you think that's disingenuous, here's a clip. Something bad happens to your mom. What happens? Yeah. Um, to be honest, I don't know. Probably just have to talk to some relatives and figure that situation out. I know my worth. I know what I'm worth. I know what my time is worth. According to Zeke, on May 10th, 2022, Caleb Hammer messages Zeke, letting him know that he's going to go forward with his application for the show. Hmm. The application states, Hey, Esteban, I would love to discuss having an upcoming episode of our show. Are you? Okay, we okay. saw this on the other video. Courtesy of Zeke. Okay, Caleb Hammer paid you November 7th, 2022, $50 for gas, $25 one hour of filming. Now, I'd recommend watching Caleb Hammer's video, uh, his first video, Okay. on Zeke yourself, but if I had a clip to best summarize it, it would be this. You quit your job after six months because you didn't want to work. You had $2,050 in your savings account. You spent that all on pretty much jujitsu uh, jiu classes and, uh, and other skills that you wanted to learn. And then through December and May, you brought in through various sources like birthday money, as you said, $5,746.8. 80 cents. That's pretty good. I didn't know that much. Yeah, but you spent five thousand seven hundred eighty-five dollars and twelve cents. So you spent thirty-eight dollars thirty-two cents more than you brought in. After that, we don't have any messages until Zeke shows us the beginning of what uh, messages he does have, uh, which for some reason starts on July third, twenty twenty-two. Now, according to Zeke, <sighs> there's more texts before this. I just think they're on my other phone. I don't know. This conveniently lines up with the application screenshot showing there is about a 54 day gap, and not only that, the messages seem to show a lack of context that seems to be some sort of meetup Caleb and Zeke were. What if Zeke has ADHD and autism and can't work? I mean, genuinely, so much overlap between homelessness, autism, um, neurodivergency in general is so difficult. I know a lot of neuro neurodivergent people think it's like an excuse for people because they're functioning and they're working and everything. But like that's the thing is like not everybody has the same relationship with it as you. And I do think there are going to be opportunities like that. What I look for instead is the character of the person. If you're unable to work and you're still not grateful for the way people help you, if you're not able to work and you're resentful at the world or yourself, if you punish people because you can't work because of your neurodivergency, I think like that says something about your character. And I think like you not – being able to work is less of the issue and more like your attitude about it is kind of key. I think sometimes people just don't know that's why they can't work. I think they do think they're lazy or they think people or people around them have convinced them they're lazy. And so I think that plays a role in so much of what's happening in the world is we do look at people and we're saying like, why don't you work? Why don't you have a job? Why aren't you doing anything? And we don't ask like why in a real way because we already come in with a pre- assumed answer we already think we know why they're not working we think they're lazy 
And so I think that's why it's so complicated or sometimes, you know, people will be like, oh, why don't you get like a normal job? And I'm like, sure. But also like, I am way too neurodivergent to get a normal people job, like working with people, going to an office, actually having to stick to a, a, a schedule that's like very like n- absolutely not. So, OK, so I think I, I think it could be possible that a lot of the people that end up on Caleb's show are also because of their neurodivergency or their mental health or their family history. They're just going to have so many reasons why everything is happening and we just don't know. So it's up to them to figure it out, but they don't even know to figure it out. And that's the thing that's hard is like they don't even know how to figure out that what's going on. And so I think that's the tool that I I think people keep forgetting is like, hey, you should check if this is happening to you or this is like what your life is like or, oh, hey, maybe you should check if this is it. You know what I mean? We're working on. Okay, they aren't going anywhere, but you still can. Happy to help cover gas. Too many schedules. Yeah, I could. How sweet. After like two, that's fine. Okay, sweet. Not how sweet. Okay, sweet. Um, when should I expect you two or three? I think you're going to like the offer I negotiated. Been a change of plans. Family needs me to spend the day with them. Probably could make a trip there next week though. What's the offer? Okay. So kind of a, so is Zeke the flake or is Caleb the flake? Sounds like Kate, sounds like Zeke's got flake. Possible. Which is possible, but like you're a grown up. If your parents make plans, but like you're also like, it, it could mean many things. I'm not going to, I'm not going to hold it against him too much. With a third party, if you continue reading. So the messages start with, they aren't going anymore, implying that there was someone that was going with Zeke to something. Oh. And it looks like, according to Caleb's text, that, you know, he was uh, mediating it. Uh, Caleb asks uh, if he still can and he can cover the gas. Zeke is cool with it around two. I'm going to speed up the video to 1.5. This guy talks beautifully slow and we love that for him, but. Zeke is cool with it and Caleb messages him after uh, the third on the fourth at 8:25 a.m. asking Zeke when he should expect him. Two, three. I think you're gonna love the offer I negotiated. Zeke says there's been a change of plans. Family needs me, so spending the day with them. Probably could make a trip there next week though. What's the offer? Sorry, this is last minute, Caleb. But family comes first. Caleb says I'd rather go over everything in person since insensitive. Family comes first. Um, but like why? Like yes, I'm a family comes first person too. But like only, but why? Because your family wouldn't cock block a bag, right? So, like, why? Is there an emergency? Something going wrong? Or is that an excuse? Oh, this is about the OnlyFans stuff. I'd rather go over everything in person since it's sensitive. Oh, so it wasn't for a job. It was for the OnlyFans stuff. Okay. So Zeke had already done the collab at this point, right? Stuff. So just let me know when you can. Because of that, I'm happy to help with gas. So so Caleb's being like super vague. Mm. Give me a date that works. And he also asks if he could uh, drive up and back down really quickly within the day, which does realistically sound a little out of the way, especially on a holiday. Not to mention he. Oh, it's a holiday, July fourth. Oh yeah, it's a holiday. What the fuck? He like quadruple texted him and then uh, ended it. Oh, so he canceled to spend 4th of July with his family, right? That's what it is. But why would you also want to meet up on 4th of July, Caleb? Cringe. With Unless you're not interested anymore. That is uh, a little pushy. Now, Zeke, uh, understandably a little peeved, uh, is kind of questioning. Whoa, you're asking me to drive three hours on a holiday when I already have plans. I know you said you pay me for some of the gas, but I'm going to, but I'm going to Austin takes me. Half a tank, which is 50 in the miles I put in the... As, oh, hold on, is he going to read it? Why he would want to drive three hours on holiday when he has plans. Uh, San Antonio to Austin is an hour and 30 minutes, but I get what he means. So Z continues, uh, he talks about how it's expensive, money, and then how it's a little uncomfortable and suspicious that he doesn't have any more context, which I can understand, though... Well, Caleb- yeah, super cringe, though. Why is Caleb being weird? On a holiday, too? The super weird. Oh, okay. General says, I think this is... When Zeke's mom is still supporting him, which makes the family obligations way more mandatory. Sounds like a shitty family. But also, I guess, like, it's the holiday, right? Like, I, I don't like family making things obligatory just because they're helping, helping you. But okay. Oh, hold on. Anyone else see this? What is it? Creepy Caleb Hammer. Oh, my God. What is this? Is this a website dedicated to Caleb? What? What is this? CreepyCalebHammer.com? <gasps> what? This is cr- 
obsessed. See, right now I'm on Caleb's side just because of this website. Like, you have to understand, if you think someone's actually a bad person, then handle it with maturity. But if you handle it in this kind of way, it makes it look like you're lying. You know what I mean? Like, this looks like a lie now. Like, it looks like Caleb is in the right. Because you're being weird. Like, this isn't how mature adults handle stuff. This is so fucking stalkerish and weird. Uh, canceled. You're canceled. Okay, so going back to the video, Zeke's texting. He was pretty upset. He said I was going, uh, let me see. Uh, okay, as well as me not even knowing what I'm getting into because you won't give me any further details or who your friend is, which just makes me a little suspicious and uncomfortable. I'm willing to, see, this is when Caleb should have stopped talking to this person. You're making them feel suspicious of you. Stop talking to this person. You're being weird. I'm willing to talk business with you, but please understand my side and perspective. I was okay meeting with you at a random at random because it fit in with me already being in Austin on that day. But now that's no longer convenient and you haven't told me anything. So I don't really know that I want to, especially after I told you I don't want to do certain things. You tell me I may or may not have to. I'm just trying to look after myself and make sure it's worth my time and that whatever I'm getting myself into is safe, so to say. So that's how I feel about what you're proposing to me. Yeah, what the fuck? Why is Caleb pushing him, bro? Caleb counters with is interesting as well. Much like the timeline in between May and June, we don't have a lot of context, but Caleb says, Oh, I thought you said you didn't want to until you learn more by discussing it in person. You don't have to do anything you don't want to, to be very clear. Okay, so Caleb misunderstood? And he thought that Zeke wanted to explain it in person? So then he sent a voicemail to clarify so it wasn't weird. Now, we're not too sure what in particular they're talking about, but this voice message might give us context. So before I give context, uh, I want to give context for this uh, audio recording. I got it from a video Zeke recorded on July 3rd, 2023, about a year after this audio recording took place. Now, he will be making comments uh, between the audio, oh. and I will be responding to those. Hey, sorry, maybe this will be easier if I just send a voice thing. Um, I, I think I understand where you're coming from, uh, but I, and that, that's why I offered to cover your gas, because I know that it's kind of inconvenient. I just think uh, from our conversation the other day, like I can tell you're a cool dude, and I want to like if there's anything, any connections that I have, which I've built a lot of connections in Austin. Mm -hmm. Anything yeah, that I'm able to kind of link you, you to, you know, I shit. definitely want to be. So, spoiler alert: uh, this audio recording Caleb uh, sent to Zeke is actually a proposition for uh, a connection he could have made in Austin. Uh, also, further down, if you can read, uh, he also tried getting in contact with a female OnlyFans creator as well. But now we can kind of peer. Interesting. So Zeke says, no, nah, I don't want to do any of that, to be honest. And then Caleb says, no worries. I personally wouldn't want it either, but I support everyone in their ventures, especially for good monies. All about the grind. Peer into the lens, peer into the looking glass and get a better idea of what's being talked about. Helpful. The main reason I haven't wanted to have this conversation via text is, sorry, I had to burp. Um, one, I'm not used to OnlyFans, <laughs> straight up. Uh, it's not really my scene. Uh, you know, I'm a personal finance dude. I don't really know anything about that. Uh, two, girl. I'm straight. I'm like... 90% straight. I've definitely no, around because I'm open-minded. I have no further comment than to just say it's funny that Zeke had to clarify when we can clearly hear that. <laughs> he, he, no, he's right. Yeah, bisexual. But go on. Um, yeah, like saying you're 90% straight is saying you're bisexual, right? Or pansexual. Or like you're saying, you're just saying what I'm more interested in. Like I'm more into women than I am to men or I'm more into, that's very common for bisexuals to feel like they're more attracted or pansexuals even. Like somebody, people have preferences. So like he's still saying it, but Caleb is also saying it in a way that he's almost like trying to insinuate that he wouldn't marry a guy, but he would fuck a guy. Maybe something. There's a way he says it that sounds like repressed. And, you know, when you get drunk, whatever. But, you know, so, and this is like a, you know, a man on my like Now, I don't know if this is a strategic play by Zeke or anything, but he kind of talks over when Caleb specifies this is a man on man thing. He's not talking about his sexuality. I think he's talking about this connection, this opportunity that is currently being played in the audio recording. Now, interesting that we didn't get the version of the audio with Zeke's commentary on the original video, but we have it on this video. Whether or not you as a financial YouTuber should be talking about this is a different story. Get yourself a PR manager, please. How many people uh, know this about me behind well, Essentially, I think, well, from the conversation I had with him, the pay will be dependent on what you're willing to do and what you're willing to do is set by you. So what he would like to do, you guys make out. He would like to do that. Ew, what bro. you guys, what he would like you guys to do, him fill you up. Ew. He would like to do that. You can say no about any of these. He would like to play with your dick. That's him, bro. That's, that's, that's fucking disgusting. That's... Now, it could be that Zeke is implying that Caleb wanted to secretly rendezvous with him, or maybe 
Uh, he has a secret OnlyFans that no one knows about. But in both cases, I couldn't find anything. I really wish I did, but I couldn't. Like, weird for me to say. I don't, you know, it's not like we're friends or anything, but that's what he wants to do. He wants to uh, give you a blowjob. Because uh, you know what? I, never I was also told I, I never found them that your face was... would be hit. That's the point of the vetting process. Now, it shouldn't have been done by Caleb. I 100% agree on that. But why would you get... Do you think he was like a really big content creator or something? Do you think he was like a famous person? And so they didn't want any of their information being sent out without the person being vetted. But then that sounded too creepy and weird. And then it sounded like very strange. Like all of it just sounds so sloppy and messy. That person's contact information, if you didn't want to meet him. General says Caleb might be too open-minded for most people treating OF connections like normal business connections. Yeah, I think that is probably more than likely. You know what I mean? I think that is probably more than likely that he is treating sex work like it's very common because everyone on the internet makes it sound like it's very common that we forget it's really not. Like, guys, I love you with peace and love, but being an OF content creator is not common. I know this like narrative that whatever podcast and Fresh and Fit keep putting out is like every girl has an OnlyFans. No, they do not. It is not normal, common, expected behavior to assume people have OnlyFans. If you're an Instagram bubble, if you're on thought bubble, if you're like in a sex positive bubble or even a hoe bubble, yeah, maybe. But no, no, the normal um, everyday person, you know why? Just look at the numbers. How many people have OnlyFans? How many people are in America? How many people are in the country you're in? Of course, most people don't have an OnlyFans, you fucking losers. Do some math. Even I know how to do math. And I can't even two plus two, okay? Them if you didn't want to go for whatever they were doing. Uh, blur it out and hit in. Your identity would be hit in. <laughs> I know about Graham um, Stefan. Um, and then if you wanted to give a blowjob, you could. I know about Graham Stefan. What the fuck does that mean? Uh, blur it out and hit in. Your identity would be hit in. I know about Graham Stefan. Um, and then if you. What does that mean? If you wanted to give a blowjob, you could. Again, there's a reason why he likes that. There's a reason and, why he likes uh, you know. Is he now accusing creamy... Graham Stefan is engaged to a very lovely woman? Is he now accusing Graham of being sexual with Caleb? What? Why is Zeke saying that? For the record, Graham Stefan is engaged to a very lovely woman. And also, they're allowed to open up their relationship. Okay. And you would beat your butt. <laughs> and you would make more for that. You can say no as well. Uh, uh, you know, you could top him. He could top you. Whatever you're Ew, willing to do. Fucking pervert, comes with more dude. money. But so you literally fu Ew, fucking pervert, dude. Zeke is sex repressed, bro. You, know, so you could literally just lay back and let him just touch you for the video. And I guess, for some reason, his subscribers love that. And you'd get paid for it. So, really, that's what it is. And, you know, there's things that I think... I don't feel comfortable talking about in this kind of situation. He doesn't want to get happy caught. to talk over in person. He doesn't want to get caught. Um, maybe I'm just that kind of person. Yeah, Zeke's on Hinge, bro. This is so much more context. Why don't? You... Okay, so Shaper for context made his video a five days ago. This video was made on February 29th. Why do you think he didn't add this in? Who's talking with Caleb in the audio? No, 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 no. We're listening to the Caleb audio that Caleb sent Zeke to tell him about the OnlyFans connection. The guy talking is zeke over the audio does that make sense so we already heard this earlier on schaefer's video that was accusing caleb of being a predator but he left out zeke's commentary because if you listen to zeke's commentary it sounds unhinged and now we're listening to zeke's commentary right of over the audio of what caleb sent him uh, so you just let me know what you think so as stated previously, uh, Caleb was vetting Zeke. Uh, now this voice is the guy who's making this video. So this is not Zeke, and this is not Scott Schaefer, and this is not Caleb. This is the guy making this video that we're watching right now called Phoenix. And even offered to uh, get his gas paid for as well. Uh, Zeke replies with that. He yeah, Alex says, how is Zeke calling this perverted when he's wanting to be an on only uh, OnlyFans himself? That's what I'm saying. How is Zeke calling this shit gross? When he literally says he's a sex worker, like what the fuck? Discord says, is this the guy who made the video? So did Zeke record separate video and overlay it on the video? Weird, he, yeah, like he recorded video of him reacting. So this guy went and hunted down video footage from Zeke, which is what was missing in the Scott Schaefer video. He's not interested and then asks about a girl that they had a previous conversation about apparently. Now, because Zeke uh, said he's willing to meet the guy though, uh, would take a lot of convincing to do anything other than photos. Caleb really just wants to know what is he willing to do. This is a business contact he's trying to make, so it's not really a friend uh, Zeke's going to be getting in contact with. He's getting in contact with someone who is uh, potentially a business relationship. Zeke turns down this uh, contact and uh, just says he doesn't want to do any of that. Uh, Caleb okay. 
is cool about it. Says no worries. I wouldn't do any of it either, but I support everyone in their ventures. Uh, okay. Talking about the grind, talking about money. Okay, okay. We didn't see. Remember how I asked for the continuation of the text messages and I didn't see it on Scott Schaefer's video? So the continuation when he said, so I was upset with for Caleb for pushing him when he said, hey, I'm probably not interested in doing that. And Caleb said, so what would you be interested in doing? And then Zeke said, no, nah, I don't want to do any of that, to be honest. And then Caleb said, no worries. I personally wouldn't either, but I support everyone on their ventures. Okay. So then it was cool. So see, why was that missing from, why was that context missing from Scott Schaefer's video? Zeke just responds with, he wants money on his own conditions. Caleb agrees. And you don't really. Okay. Um, uh, okay. We get any contact until July 20th, 2022. Uh, in which case, Caleb asks Zeke if he knows of Marie Bell. Zeke does, and she, or Caleb says that she could out him, which uh, Zeke doesn't seem all too worried about. Now, Caleb, uh, probably referring to the male model, asks Zeke again if uh, he's still not going for the OnlyFans. Zeke confirms that, yeah, no, that's off the table. And Oh, so Zeke doesn't want to do OnlyFans. Now I'm very confused. I'm so lost. Didn't Zeke literally message him saying, hey, I want to know how to do OnlyFans? Didn't, so now he's saying he doesn't want to do it. Maybe he was thinking about doing it because he thought it'd be easy money and then realized it wasn't easy money and now it's off the table um uh, maybe he wanted to do it because he thought he was easy but then when he realized it wasn't he was like oh never mind i don't want to do this mm, maybe it's that they talk about the latest episode and uh comments So while Zeke didn't respond to Caleb in October, in November, uh, Caleb asks him again, would you like to film a follow-up episode, set the record straight on your end, and see where things have gone since your episode? Paying, of course. So Zeke agrees and says he would like to make a script or uh, bullet points as opposed to just being more improvised than the first episode, which Caleb says he's not too sure how that would happen since it's not scripted, but they could get away with bullets. Okay, so when they said they were paid actors, that didn't mean that it was scripted, right? Now on November 4th, Caleb asks if Zeke's okay with Monday at 4. Zeke is cool with that and responds on the 5th. Zeke says the fourth works, but he wants to extend his time for as long as possible to make it more like a podcast as opposed to just a typical video. He also talks about extending it for a long time. Why? And Caleb just says, yeah, whatever works. Uh, do you have my address? So Zeke says he doesn't have Caleb's address. Caleb's going to send it. And then Zeke talks about Graham Stephan. Uh, something about his channel. I can't really. I don't know why these text messages are blurred for me. Are they blurred for you guys? They're like blurred for me. Of course they're blurred for you because they're blurred for me. I don't know why they're like kind of blurred make out a lot if, if you go back to zeke's original video you can definitely find better screenshots when he's scrolling through it though these are the ones i grabbed and i could read them oh that's why at the time if i looked closely but doing a script is not gonna happen i'm just gonna have to leave this here for people to read or attempt to read caleb responds to zeke saying that graham's a fan of the channel and he does upload clips to tiktok and instagram and asks zeke if he's seen him before zeke then suggests doing a recap before the episode actually starts and then uh talks about piggybacking off of graham stefan's audience and caleb's like yeah sure Zeke talks about putting his script together or his bullet points and then asks Caleb if they're going to hit past a million and then he sends all his financial statements and then the notes. Caleb responding to Zeke's are we going to hit past a million remark says depends on a lot of things mostly algorithm. Zeke goes on to explain how YouTube works to Caleb and then asks Caleb if they could meet a bit tomorrow just to understand how the video is going to go and what they're going to be talking about. Since he says I'm going to be in Austin for an acting role. It'd be convenient if we can talk about beforehand maybe 15 minutes. You can get here at four because of the, and then the message cuts off. Convenient to Zeke. Caleb's like, yeah, sure, dude. Get here at four because of the shoot before you, but we can take 15 minutes before we start. Okay, that works. I'm sorry, I just got really excited. I know this video is going to be a banger and possibly change things up for both of us. Uh, he was thinking too much into it. He was thinking it would change his life. That's never how it works on YouTube. You have to be very lucky for that to happen. I don't really know how I sound. I really don't want to come off like I'm trying to take control because that's not what I want. I want to collaborate with you in order to make the best possible products we can make. And if we can please look over the notes before we meet, I think it'll be easier for us to be able to discuss and be on the same page before we reread, record, sorry, on Monday. Dude, uh, get here at four and we can talk 15 minutes before the hmm. shoot. Zeke says, yeah, that works. Cool, thank you. And then he goes on to talk about how he's really excited. He wants the video to be a banger and he's really hoping that it'll change things for both of them. Zeke tells Caleb to reread the notes before they meet. Caleb's like, yeah, I will uh, when I can. And he asks him about after the shoot if he could talk about a couple other things. And Zeke says, yeah, absolutely. I'm interested in hearing whatever you want to talk about. No worries, just let me know whenever you have the time. And he even talks about rewatching the video and says it's hilarious. Zeke said, I don't think a lot of people understood the lighthearted vibe I was trying to give off. Also, before we film next time, please let me get a better angle of myself. I look so bad in the last one.
Okay. Caleb says, no, people didn't understand, but you can definitely clarify your case and make sure people know that this time. Caleb ends up- Okay, so they're not scripted actors. So it is Zeke's real story. I don't know why he said actors in the last video as if to insinuate like it's not real. Like it's obviously real. Okay. If, yes, we have different angles now anyways, and you'll be able to see yours the whole time. Zeke responding to Caleb says, that's what- That's so weird. You'd be like, can you get a better angle of me? I mean, I get, I don't know. What I want to do. We need to go more into how the money I was spending was for discovering what my interests are. Yeah, diva. Heather says diva. Diva, bro. And what I want to do with the rest of my life, which I view is far more valuable than going to college and aimlessly getting a degree, as in my mind, I'm doing way more than just doing nothing. Also, that is why He's I- He's so young. This is such a young person thing. Mention investing myself, as I am spending money on different things that will benefit me in the future because I sacrificed the time and money by starting early. Surely, there's no return right now, but what investment ever shows immediate return in five to ten years? I will be- it will be the best decision I ever made. I kind of want to open up people's eyes to that. They gotta stop being slaves to the system, and I think with my generation, we're figuring that out because we know our options. Zeke ends it with, bet say less, and no worries, you're good. Caleb okay. responding to that paragraph says, can't wait to hear, and he admits to getting the days mixed up, which kind of sucks. Caleb asking Zeke if he could do the shoot tomorrow instead of the actual Monday. Zeke responds and says, no, that's when I need to do my acting shoot. Caleb asks when he's finished, and he says sometime around 10, but probably sooner. Caleb tries to squeeze in Zeke around 2. Zeke says he doesn't want to make any promises because he might be out all night. Caleb just wants to make sure Monday at 4 still might work. Zeke's cool with it, and they agree. Now, the day before the shoot, Caleb just reminds him and asks if he's excited. Uh, Zeke was going to text... Wait, Tuesday says my understanding is that it's not real at all. Which part? Which part isn't real at all? Tell me. Him ...and wanted to ask if they could meet before, but he forgot that they were going to meet about 15 minutes uh, before the shoot started. <laughs> so Caleb responded on... It just sounds like very messy, like a bunch of people a little bit, like a little bit not prepared for the responsibility that was going to go into all of this. ...on the 6th, talking about how they could talk about other shoots once the November 7th shoot is done. And on November 7th at 2.53 p.m., Zeke says he's on his way and he'll see him soon. So disregarding Zeke trying to get more content out of his video, Caleb asks a bit later what his uh, estimated time of arrival is. Zeke says about 4.10, and Caleb's cool. So using my anti-doxing AI, I have covered an address, uh, but this basically just shows that Zeke showed up, uh, Caleb found him, and then they shot a video. Zeke sends his link tree, which shows up as an OnlyFans. Zeke asks for some thumbnails, Caleb asks for a PDF, and they- Well, Zeke sends a leak, leak, leak that shows an OnlyFans. Oh yeah, it does right here. So Zeke sent, so he is on OnlyFans. Bro, why does it say OnlyFans at the bottom? What? Oh, do you guys see this? So, so he sends a link tree and has an OnlyFans and he goes, why does it, and Caleb, and Caleb says, why does it say OnlyFans? Sends his link tree, which shows up as an OnlyFans. Zeke asks for some thumbnails, Caleb asks for- Tuesday says, I could definitely be wrong, but I thought he was an actor playing a character. Okay, so Scott Schaefer in the original video we watched called them paid actors, but now Zeke and Caleb and everyone are saying it's their stories that they're playing up, but it's still their own stories, right? Because now I'm confused because Zeke wants to be understood better, which means he was telling the truth in his first story. So they are paid to be on the show, but they're not paid actors. Like they're not fake. You know, so that's where I'm confused. Is Zeke saying his story is fake? Then why would he need to be seen better? Because if you're an actor, then the character, that's different. You know what I mean? Like, if he's telling his own real story, then he's just being paid to be on the episode, which you can get actor credit if Caleb is playing it like a show. I don't know. If you go on Dr. Phil, are you called a paid actor? You know what I mean? I mean, it always is a little fake, but it's also real, you know? Mm, I don't know. For a PDF and they get some business stuff done. Around three days after the shoot, on November 10th at 10.44 a.m., Caleb asks Zeke for his OnlyFans. Yeah, Alex said they're paid seat warmers. Caleb needed guests, but without an audience to begin with, he paid people to come tell their stories. Yeah, that makes sense to me. That's what they mean. He paid them so he could have guests on the show, which makes sense. I mean, Linktree. And uh, Zeke sends it. Caleb says thanks and uh, talks about how the video's popping off. At around 5 p.m., uh, Zeke says he likes the video. And around 9.47, uh, Caleb... Wait, something is funky here. So look at this. Linktree, thanks. Your video is popping off. Can you send me a link to my link? Can you send me your link to my good sir? Why is the links weird? Linktree, okay, hold on. We'll do, okay, Linktree. Okay, maybe I missed, maybe I missed only that. I mean, Linktree. And uh, Zeke sends it, Caleb says thanks, and uh, talks about how the video is popping off. At around 5 p.m., uh, Zeke says he likes the video. No, General said, did Scott not include Zeke's commentary? I didn't hear Zeke's commentary the first video we watched. 
because it came with that drive-by accusation of Graham Stephan. Yeah, what's he saying about Graham? I love Graham. Don't you come for Graham, bro. And around 9.47, uh, Caleb invites him to hop on a call. Uh, Zeke says after his streaming, and once he's done, uh, they talk on the phone, and they talk about a certain uh, opportunity. So after the call, Caleb just says he wants to be in good contact, because uh, the show is a very hush-hush uh, thing, it looks like. Uh, he says there's going to be a lot of privacy things to sign for, and it's going to be high-budget and very professional, so he wants Zeke to act professional as well. A little while after, it looks like uh, Zeke accidentally doxed himself because of uh, one of Caleb's contacts. Caleb let Zeke know and said, hey, you gotta be careful. Zeke says, yeah, I'll work on it. Zeke also responds with saying, yeah, uh, that project opportunity sounds- Wait, dox too. Zeke dox too. Z Zeke doxed himself? Oh, yeah. Hey, buddy, you gotta be safe for it. I recommend deleting this video and making sure your address is not in future videos. That can get dangerous for you and your friend. Yeah, too, yeah, too bad people weirdos care about that stuff. Well, after privacy things to sign for, and it's gonna be high budget and very professional, so he wants Zeke to act professional as well. Okay. A little while after, it looks like uh, Zeke accidentally doxed himself because of uh, one of Caleb's contacts. Caleb let Zeke know and said, hey, you gotta be careful. Zeke says, yeah, I'll work on it. Zeke also responds with saying, yeah, uh, that project opportunity sounds exciting. Can't wait to hear more. On December 29th, it looks like, uh, Caleb... What was that? Uh, uh, that project opportunity sounds exciting. Can't wait to hear more. On December... I had to re-record something. God, he flashed that so fucking Zeke fast. Zeke also responds with saying, yeah, uh, that project opportunity sounds exciting. Can't wait to hear more. On December... I had to re-record the month because I said the wrong one. 29th, it looks like. Uh, Caleb tells Zeke that he should definitely give him a call. There's some exciting news. Zeke uh, calls him and then asks for more information regarding this opportunity. Now, we don't know much about it, but Caleb says, yeah, I asked to see if 3 would work for her. Her Twitch name is Kimmy. That sounds like a very interesting development. So along with that very top secret project, there's also a Twitch collab, it looks like, in the works. <laughs> so the interesting that none of this was in Scott Schaefer's video. Beginning of January on the 3rd, uh, Caleb asks Zeke to send over the classic documents. Zeke sends them, and then uh, Caleb reminds Zeke to get some questions ready for the streamer. The next messages are on the 5th, just a reminder from Caleb, and then on the 6th, Zeke asks for Caleb's address and starts heading his way. So the shoot seems like it ended around uh, 7.51 on the 6th. Uh, Zeke tags Caleb on his post, and he's just happy that he got a collab with Twitch streamer and uh, get back onto Caleb's show so soon. So a few days later, uh, Caleb touches base with Zeke and uh, lets him know that the video isn't actually underperforming, and uh, he asks if there's any good contacts that came from the videos. Nothing much else happens until the 12th, which... What? ...so soon. So a few days later, uh, Caleb touches base with Zeke, and uh, lets him know that the video isn't actually underperforming, and... Isn't actually underperforming, but it's not actually underperforming. Okay, so it's, it's good. Uh, he asks if there's any good contacts that came from the videos. Nothing much else happens until the 12th, which looks like uh, there might have been another opportunity they were going to film for, and uh, Caleb just asks Zeke if he could confirm for Tuesday, in which case he does. So Caleb sends a reminder on the 16th for the 17th. On the 17th, looks like Zeke is on his way. After their meeting, it looks like later on around 11.06 p.m., Zeke asks for his money for the shoot uh, right there because he was low on gas. Mm -hmm. Caleb's more than fine with it, and on the 18th... Is that Sneak and Destiny? Is that Sneak and Destiny right there? Yes, it is. We know them. We know those ladies. My god. College won't guarantee success. Sneeko and Stephen Bonnell. Stephen Bonnelli! Caleb sends some videos uh, featuring Sneeko and asks about his uh, TikTok editor, in which case Caleb says it's him. Z compliments him for his editing prowess and... What? Huh? What? On gas. Caleb's more than fine with it, and on the 18th, Caleb sends some videos uh, featuring Sneeko and asks about his uh, TikTok editor, in which case Caleb says it's him. Z compliments him for his editing prowess. because he was low on gas. Caleb's more than fine with it, and on the 18th, Caleb sends some videos uh, featuring Sneeko and asks about his uh, TikTok editor, in which case Caleb says it's him. Z Caleb Hammer edited for Sneeko? Am I fucking crazy? Yo, hello, am I still live streaming here? Somebody tell me what's going on. Sneeko? What? Caleb was editing for Sneeko? Me? For what? For real? That's really good. Just learning. Huh? Caleb was editing for Sneeko's TikToks? For real, for real? Z compliments him for his editing prowess and then he- Edited for his own memes? Okay. So he didn't edit for Sneeko. He edited a TikTok of Sneeko for his own shit. Oh my god said something on the 24th 
I can't really read it. You can go back to the messages and try to figure out and decipher what that says, but he links him something and then says, hey, also, pay me more. Caleb says he's going to take a look, and he can't watch Zeke's uh, private video. So Zeke links Caleb this video on Privates It, and it's just a video on his channel of Caleb's second video interviewing Zeke, just cut up and sliced up a lot to make him kind of look better. I wouldn't say that at all, but it, it, it helps him portray himself in a better light. So on February 2nd, Zeke asks something very familiar to us. Uh, he asks about OnlyFans, and he wants to know if Caleb knows anyone to help with that. He says, yeah, what are you posting? I can engage in a hook you up with someone. And he just says, like, softcore, ludes, no tapes, maybe later. And Caleb says he's going to ask someone for him. We saw that on the other video. So after those other texts, they don't really talk again until late March on the 21st. And Zeke just wants to know if there's any update for that show. The one that Caleb talked about initially. Caleb said, no, not yet, but I'll let you know when. And that's about it for this month. So on April, uh, Zeke messages Caleb asking when he can be on another episode. Caleb says, hey, there needs to be more of a gap just to have a, I guess, variance in his finances. Zeke says, no, actually, we need weekly episodes. And then on the 5th, two days later, he says, hey, can we do an update? Caleb says, not now. The audience requests more of a gap between episodes. Zeke, thinking this is unfair, says, can I at least be included in the conversation? This is my life too. He then... What? Caleb, we need to do an update. I'm sorry, man. People have requested. Give it more time. Can I be included in the conversation? At least this is my life, too. It's a little unfair and a little weird. You hold the power. Caleb said, what do you mean? I'm just I'm just saying members of the audience specifically requested it. How about one more month? Interesting that Schaefer left this out of his video. Then ends it with, it's also a little unfair and weird that you hold all the power. And Caleb's like, what do you mean by that? He's like ruminating probably on the thought, honestly. He's just saying, hey, the members of the audience specifically requested that. How about one more month? And then he sent a audio recording we can't really hear. So uh, after that, Zeke sends what looks like to be a email about dropping his massage school classes. And Caleb asks like, hey, how's it going? And he's like, I dropped it. And then sends some payments he made towards <sighs> that. Zeke sends what looks like to be a email about dropping his massage school classes. He fits, Zeke fits so perfectly in a specific bubble. He really does. You know what I mean? Desperate to write off somebody's clout, unsure of what to do with his life, hoping somebody who's doing better than him will help him, refuses to do anything truly on his own, twists narratives, blames people, picks up and drops things, plays victim. He's probably really fucked up. He's probably got a really hard life. I think, again, like I said, financial literacy is connected and often related to trauma or bad backgrounds or parents not also being financially well off you know it makes a lot of sense you know your struggles are probably a reflection of your environment but also your internal workings and so like I'm starting to see a pattern and I'm just so fascinated that none of this was in Schaefer's video it's interesting that this is here you know hmm. and Caleb asks like hey how's it going and he's like I dropped it and then sends some payments he made towards it looks like a psychic Caleb, obviously not too happy about that, says, dude. A psychic? 200, Spotify, Spotify, Inc. California, psychics, $20. Caleb said, why? Sad face. Dude, I want you to do well. And then Zeke said, I am. I wanted you to do so well. Why? Zeke hits him back with, I am doing well. Caleb says, I don't want to just make fun of you. And Zeke responds with, it's weird, you can, but you should try saying past that. It's your personality, you need to get to know me. Like, let's talk about my mom and actual life shit I've been through. Not just- Ooh, no. No, Zeke is getting inappropriately close with Caleb. Okay, this makes sense though, that Zeke would have assumed closeness with Caleb because he was a guest on the show and had a reappearance on it. And that's one of the other issues as well, is like, listen to Zeke saying like, it's your personality. You need to get to know me. Let's talk about my mom and actual life shit I've been through. You're 19. Relax. And also, like, maybe you have been, but, like, boundaries and, like, hello. Oh, man. Mm -mm 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 -mm. Surface level of me being spoiled, you know? What's YK again? YK? You know. Oh, you know. And then he sends some memes and videos. Caleb says he has to do some work, but he'll get back to him, and Zeke continues sending stuff. Zeke sending his secret Instagram, uh... You, follow, you should follow this account. Can you send the link? I don't have transportation or the account. Yeah. Got to type it in. How would you film here? No way to drive. Secret account. Have you started doing the real OF stuff? You said you would. Requested to follow. Caleb asked if he'd 
actually started any of the OnlyFans stuff yet and request to follow his account. Uh, I don't believe Zeke has his OnlyFans or at that point started it, but he did say so, so it makes sense for Caleb to kind of touch base at where he is um, job-wise, especially if he said he wanted to pursue that career. I assume responding to his request with the OnlyFans stuff, Caleb asks, how would you drive here? And Zeke's like, whoa, whoa, whoa there. Think. What? You can at least offer to Uber me. We are collaborating after all. And Caleb responds with, that's a very long Uber. And Zeke's like, dude. I mean, understandably, I wouldn't want to pay an Uber that's roughly like two hours long. Zeke sends like a ChatGPT picture and then says, I am the revolutionary. I'll change the world. I hope you see that. And then on April 12th, he talks about when he could schedule another video with Caleb. Caleb responding. It'll yeah, it's just mental health. Ultimately, I feel bad. I'm sure Zeke is, you know, he's obviously like mentally unwell. You know what I mean? To some extent, this is just inappropriate. He probably was writing a lot on Caleb. He probably hoped that Caleb would really like change his life which is also part of the like mistake in my mind. But him saying, I am the revolutionary. I'll change the world. I hope you see that. It's like, oh, yeah, yeah. Star says, this is sad. Yeah, now I'm just sad, bros. Um, Yeah, I'm just kind of sad now. And Caleb is saying, oh, be a couple months. And he's saying, that's too long. We have to do one soon and or never again. I'm sure you're fine with that, but your fans like me. And then it's like, okay, how's the TV show? Do you want me again or no? It's like he's he's riding so hard on Caleb. He's putting all of his eggs in this basket, and that's a mistake. Caleb, Caleb, I hope he's realized now he has to be really clear with people. Like, just because we've collabed once doesn't mean we're going to collab again. Mostly because, like, you know what I mean? That's the problem, though. It's, it's difficult sometimes to figure. You have to learn this the hard way. It will still probably be a couple months. Zeke says, that's too long. We do one now or never. I'm sure you're fine with that, but your fans like me. He and by the way, the fact that he's even messaging people this often is kind of crazy. Yay says the fact that Caleb checks in with people he's tried to help on the show is so nice, especially if he checks in on other people too. This isn't weird at all. Well, I think he's doing too much. I think he's doing too much. I think he should be, uh, I don't think he should be doing it personally. I think he should have other people doing it for him because the parasocial relationship can happen with guests. I think that's what's happening. I think Caleb didn't realize like the guests on his show could have a parasocial relationship with him or even other content creators. Do you know how many content creators I've had to tell them like, hey, your boundaries are out of control. You're having kind of a parasocial relationship with me. Like you're having a relationship with a version of me that's that's wrong in your head. And it kind of it's not like this, but sometimes it can feel like this where it feels like, hey, I think something inappropriate is happening. Now, Izzy says boundaries, right? The dilemma is I think Caleb doesn't know how to put down boundaries. The irony of this is I don't think Caleb himself knows how to put down boundaries. And I think this is contributing heavily to what we're seeing. Caleb himself has got to learn how to put down boundaries. He's obviously super struggling with it. And I hope he's learned a lesson from this situation. Because genuinely, like this is something you have to learn the hard way as a content creator. It is true. I've had to learn this lesson like the hard way. Oh my gosh. I have I know with peace and love, people think they're the exception. Oh, I know how not to have a parasocial relationship with you. But like people really struggle and they don't mean to struggle, but it is a part of like, it's just a part of life. So I think Caleb probably thought like, yeah, Caleb probably thought his guests would be able to handle it, but nah, bro. Yeah, yeah, yeah. General says Zeke's third appearance on Financial Audit included a guest appearance by a Twitch streamer to help launch his Twitch career. Caleb did feed into it some, for sure. Caleb's making a lot of mistakes, and I hope he fixes this about himself. But we'll see. Maybe Caleb is just toxic enough, though, to relate a little bit too much to his guests. You know what I'm saying? And text on the 13th and the 29th, trying to see if Caleb wants to have him back on or how the show's going. And yeah. Caleb responds on the 25th saying, hey, I do, but I told you it's been too recent. We can't have the same person on every two months, but the answer is absolutely yes. And then Zeke sends a whole paragraph. I told you it's been too recent. We ha can't have the same person on every two months, but the answer is absolutely yes. I understand that it could be seen that way, but my life updates very frequently. And so I can't guarantee that in a few months I'll be able to tell the same story because I'll probably be in another position. I'm only so focused on making a new one right now because I'm trying to catch the momentum of the show. And I believe if we wait longer, the audience retention is already going to be down. People who do not have successful YouTube careers, lecturing a YouTuber who's doing pretty well is so annoying to me. Like, is this guy even a YouTuber? What does he know about audience retention? 
Like, what does he know about YouTube or streaming? Is he a successful streamer? Like, what is he... What's happening? What? Most people won't won't talk about the previous episodes as too much time has passed. I think if we make a follow-up updated episode, it can possibly catch a new audience on top of the one you already have. Nope. Once someone tells me how to do my job on my channel, I'm going to cut you off, bro. I hate that shit. People are so nice. It's like when people literally will give me, they're like, um, and I'm not talking about you, so don't think I am, but people will be like, oh, Brittany, here's my suggestion on how you should do your streams. I'm like, shh. Are you a streamer? They're like, no. I'm like, shush, shush. are you a YouTuber? They're like, no. I'm like, shush, shush, shush. shush. I make a living doing this. Do you make a living doing this? They're like, no. And I'm like, shush, 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 shush. Shush, shush. and those same, same people have the audacity to be like, um, Hassan's a horrible streamer. Hassan is one of the top streamers. May I be such a horrible streamer as to be as popular as Hassan? Are you stupid? Like people with all of their best intentions will be like, Oh, you know who I, like, they'll be like, they'll name a streamer that's successful, like a literal top streamer. And they'll be like, they're so bad at streaming. You don't want to be like them. And I'm like, um, I don't want to be like them because I'm not them. But like, also, obviously, I love people who are good at their jobs. You can't look at someone who's good at their job and then be like, they're bad at their job. Like, um, their job is to give views and their job is to be successful. And they're doing those two things. So like, shh, shh, shh. no talkie, no talkie. Okay. Shh. And also I learned that the audience doesn't know what they want. Meaning as the content creator who doesn't want to be a slave to her audience, I have to make the content I love and hope to attract the audience who also loves those things, which I think I've successfully done. But okay. Okay. The audience that doesn't feel, because usually the feedback I get is from the audience members that are like, I feel like your content's not for me. And I'm like, probably not, bro. And they're like, but I want you to make content that's for me. And I was like, yeah, but I don't want to make content that's for you. I want to make content that's for me and attract an audience that also vibes with that vibe. The problem is, is people think it's about them. You know what I'm saying? I'm, I'm dead serious. And Mary says, you have to be about your business and letting your guests talk like this to you is not professional and isn't setting a good tone that someone knows what they're doing. I don't think Caleb knows what he's doing. I think he's still learning and he's still new at it. And I think that this is going to be a very important lesson for him to learn as a guy in business. Also, did you guys notice my flowers in the background? Aren't they pretty? Are they so cute? Oh my God, thank you. Okay. Zeke says, yeah, I get that. But my life updates so frequently, it can't be the same uh, a few months from now. So I'll probably be in a different situation. I'm only so focused on making a new one right now because I'm trying to catch the momentum of the show. And I believe if we wait longer, the audience retention is already going to be down. And most people won't talk about the previous episodes as much. I think if we make a follow-up or an update episode, it can possibly catch a new audience and help retain the ones we have. Caleb says, actually, the channel isn't slowing down. Growth is at the fastest it's been in a while. I'll let you know. See? 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 Don't lecture the YouTuber who's doing well. I hate that shit. People, people have such audacity, bro. They really think... They really think they know what the fuck is going on and they have no clue. Shush. Be quiet. Shush. Know when a good time is to have you on. We are deep in our stats and we will let you know very soon. Just please stay patient. You know I enjoy having you on the channel. But there is that other series I'm working up that we could have you on pretty soon. Zeke seems cool with that answer and then says, yeah, he's trying to move out of his mom's house and then he's trying to pursue full-time streaming and maybe move to New York. So this loser who can't move out of his mom's house, who can't figure out how to fucking stream, who can't figure out his own shit, is just waiting for Caleb to save him. Caleb is not your mother, your therapist, or your god. Zeke isn't a bad person, but he's incredibly inappropriate and incredibly damaged. This is so inappropriate. So inappropriate. Thank you, Ingrid. You saw them on Instagram, bro. Cute. I love these flowers. They're so pretty. Look at them. I love them. Now, May 1st, Zeke immediately hits up Caleb seeing if they can do an update. Sends a bunch of stuff. And P.S. Just a reminder that Scott Schaefer left all of this out of his video for a reason. I don't know. Maybe they're not real. Maybe they are real. Are they real? I don't know what's happening. Caleb's like, I do have an idea to get you on in August. $700 speeding ticket and credit card payment over run. Bro, pay your shit off, bitch. We all had to do it. Pay your fucking shit off. I've had speeding tickets. I've had debt. I get it. It's hard. It's annoying. You feel like your whole life is ending. You can't pay rent. Everything feels like a mess. You have no money for food. It's just a mess. I get it. I get it. 
this is life. This is life. You know, this is life. That's when we got. Now, May 1st, Zeke immediately hits up Caleb saying if they can do an update, sends a bunch of stuff, and Caleb's like, I do have an idea to get you on in August, that's when we can have you on again. And Zeke says, well why? Caleb responds with, you will be co-audited with a 4 million subscriber finance YouTuber. Zeke, always down for collaboration, says, yeah, sure, what do you want to see by that time? And Caleb simply responds with, progress. And Zeke, thinking, you know, what do you mean by that, says, in what capacity? Caleb just says, yeah, from what we talked about, Zeke doesn't want to do college or anything, and Caleb just says, improve finances, life direction, and your job, that's it. Zeke goes on a tirade about self-actualized, self-taught learning is the future. Might be boring then, to be honest. Right now would be the best content. Imagine if you wanted to see me when I was at the top, but wouldn't you want to see me right now when I'm at my lowest? Zeke ends it with, that's what I think. Yo, wouldn't you want to see me when I'm at my lowest, bro? <sighs> Zeke, my bro. He's content brained, bro. He's content brained. His brain's melted from thinking about content and going viral. And Caleb's like, do better. We want you on the show. Because like... Zeke doesn't understand. Nobody wants to see you come on for a third time and you're still fucked up. When you come on the third time, they want to see a story. Well, everybody loves an underdog, but the underdog has to end up being the top dog at the end of the story. Right? And Zeke doesn't get it. Zeke thinks people want to see him being fucked up for the third time in a row. No, now they're going to get burnt out and they're not going to care about you. I think makes financial audits so fun and interesting. I've never watched any other episodes, though. Have you done? What? That's what I think makes financial audit fun and interesting. I've never watched any of the other episodes, though. So Zeke, who's giving Caleb advice on his channel, lecturing him about views, telling him he knows how to make the show better, has also never watched a different episode on it? Damn, mental health is so real, bro. Struggle is so real. Trauma is so real, bro. God, these people be fucked up. Amara says maybe that's why Zeke is coming for Caleb. He thought Caleb was going to be his come up. Oh, for sure, bro. And now he's bitter. 100, bro. 1,000, bro. For sure, bro. Alex says, I want to see people making better financial decisions and progressing so I can have examples of normal people during the work. Exactly. Same, bro. Yeah, rip. Rip a Rooney. This is so sad, bro. Done any reaction content yet? And Caleb just responds with progress. Do your best. May 19th, Zeke sends more stuff and then a video of what looks like a new house. He talks about how he got kicked out of his uh, mom's onto his grandma's farm. He has no job. So his mom kicked him out. And now he has no job, no car, moved out, kicked to grandma's farm, no job, no money. Here's my link tree. Here's the OnlyFans. No money since his website that he has now and his link tree, as well as some contact info and some other uh, questionable information that Caleb may or may not need. What? Some other uh, questionable information that Caleb may or Is this his sleep schedule? Like, this is his screen time? Oh, his screen time. Okay, thanks, Brody. I think there are important stats to be looking at. Is he going manic? Is this, like, not manic. Is this, um, is this, like, a mental health? Like, is he having an episode of some kind? It's just so inappropriate. He could just be, like, mentally ill, underdeveloped. I mean, he's young, right? You may not need. Ugh. <sighs> Did he send Caleb? I'm live on Titch. Come watch me. Oh, hey. Um, something I hate is when people send me their fucking Twitch streams and they're like, watch me on Twitch. And I'm like, don't you know that it sends the signal that you're just like clout chasing? Because it's like inappropriate. It's like me. Hold on. Who do I know? Even, even if somebody's my friend, I wouldn't go to them and be like, yo, watch my stream. You'll really like it tonight. The What you want to have... You want to have the Oprah situation. There was a guy who was making YouTube content for like 15 people, literally. And one of the people who was watching him was Oprah. This is how the story goes. And she was on YouTube one night, and I'm sure this is like a little bit of a fable, but she sees this young man and goes, someone in her crew, she goes, reach out to this young man. I want him on the show. And then he ended up working for Oprah. You want one of those situations. 
You don't want to be spamming Oprah. Hey, Oprah, watch my stream tonight. You'll really like it. Hey, Oprah, don't do that. Even on my Discord, I have a no spamming your links rule. There's an appropriate place to share things. But I, you know, if you're, it sends the wrong message. One, it's desperate. And two, it means you don't think your shit is good enough to organically grow. And let me tell you a secret about cringy starting off Britney YouTuber. When I was starting off on YouTube, I also thought I understood how to grow my channel. So you know how videos would, okay, you probably don't know this. At the very beginning of YouTube, guys, there were video responses on the bottom of people's popular videos. And I thought, because I saw other people doing it, the best way to get noticed was to put your videos at a, as a response to those videos, um, even if it sort of even didn't go with the subject matter, right? And I was probably like 18, 19, 20 years old. So I was young too. And I was like, this is how I'll make like a YouTube career. And you know what? I did get noticed. I got noticed as the girl who made video reply videos that were not appropriate placed, like appropriately placed. I did build a reputation and people did know who I was. And they're like, oh, I see your videos. They're always put as response videos to other people's videos, but your videos don't always like match the video. And I'm like, yeah. And I was sitting here thinking that's what we do, right? Because we just want to be noticed. It sends a signal of like clout farming. It sends a signal of like desperate. It sends like a signal of like, I'm not organically growing on my own. I'm like desperate to grow on somebody else. And that was not what I intended to do, but it was what it was perceived as. And so I had to like recontextualize how I was planning to grow. You know what I mean? So again, my real, like, I know what it's like to be young and to think, Oh, if I just get a big YouTuber to notice me. And then of course, I did get big YouTubers to notice me. I did do lots of collabs with people, but I wasn't growing because I didn't have a thing. I didn't have the thing that made people keep coming back to my channel until I figured out that thing like four years ago. And it's been great ever since. I love my shit. My content's the best it's ever been. I'm having a great time. I'm organically growing. I don't have to even do collabs to grow. Like everything feels really good. And I'm at a stage in my career where it's awesome. But let me tell you that it doesn't matter how many big people shout your name off to the roofs, like the rooftops. If you don't have good content for people to watch when they come back, they're not going to stay and watch you. So Zeke can get promoted by Caleb a thousand times. But unless Zeke is good content, no one's going to watch him. And that is a very hard lesson to learn. Because people think like, oh, if I was an OnlyFans creator with a million viewers, I would keep them. Oh, if I was given a U channel, YouTube channel with 4 million subscribers, I'd be successful. Well, then ask Boogie why he's failing. You think if I'm just given the opportunity, I'll excel. But you have to make that opportunity by proving you even belong there in the first place. And newsflash, most of you aren't meant to be there. You will fail. Zeke will probably fail as a content creator because he didn't even do it for the love of the content. My husband said the sweetest sweetest things to me. He said the sweetest thing to me the other day. He said, you know, you and Asmin are very much alike in one regard. And I said, oh my God, stop. I love him. In what regard? He goes, you guys just like making content. And he's like, you'll probably make content and there won't be an idea of falling off, which is true. When I hear Graham Stephan talk about falling off, I never even process that as a possibility because I've been making YouTube content since I was 18. I don't plan to stop. I love making content. Like for me, I just like making content. It's not about being the top streamer or the top YouTuber. And that is similar to like an Asmin and I will probably always be making content. But other people always talk about how, oh, they won't be doing YouTube and they, they'll they probably move along and they'll probably be doing something else. That's great. I love that. But I think knowing that about yourself is key. Zeke can't even stream without needing it to follow with viewers. I just like making content. I just like doing it. You know what I mean? I just like think it's fun. So I end up doing it. You know what I mean? I think this is my special interest maybe. Like I just like doing it. So I just think there's something you got to know yourself. Are you the kind of YouTuber who's just doing it for money and clout and then you're going to bail, which is fine. Or are you one of those people that are like, uh, I'm just going to make content anyways because I like it. Same with being naked. I was already getting naked for free and people were like, you should start an OnlyFans. I was like, oh, I should start an OnlyFans. But like I was already naked because like I just like being naked. So like, why not make money doing it? You know what I'm saying? And now I'm focusing it as a career, but not a career like Ludwig talks about this too. Like Ludwig says, 
you get popular doing a thing and then eventually you do YouTube for you and you kind of fall off, but now you're making content just for you and for the audience that gets it, but you're not the big streamer you used to be. Like Ludwig always talks about falling off and people are like, why you say that? What are you saying that? Like, you'll always be like Ludwig. You could always be popular. And Ludwig is like, why? Why do I want to be? You know? Rashad in the chat. Yes, more clout. Rashad, I will give you all of my clout. Go watch Rashad, everybody. Here, take my tens of tens of clout. <laughs> but anyways, I think I definitely identify with that idea of just like to be here to be here. Vibes all around. I can pay my bills. I'm grateful. You know what I mean? Like, who can ask for more at the end of the day? Okay, let's keep going. We're almost done. I feel bad for Zeke at this point. It's obviously like he's got a rough life. But also, when is Zeke going to be a man, a grown up? I don't know his gender. When is Zeke going to grow up and recognize like, hey, congratulations, you're an adult now. And the world was never going to come save you, whether it was Caleb or your mom. Your own mom kicked you out, bro. You think some fucking gay boy on the internet's going to come save you? Got to do this on your own, bitch. Now, June 1st, 2023, Caleb reminds Zeke, hey, are you ready to film with a major YouTuber in August? Zeke has been born ready. But Caleb's like, wait, he's not here yet. And Zeke's like, 20 minute episode then, cool, thanks. Caleb wants to talk about it, and he's like, yeah, uh, whenever, I'm busy right now though. And Caleb wants to try to work things out, and maybe even bring him in for a live stream that he wants to launch later that month. But hold on. At 7.20, Caleb says, dude, I'm now being told you're trying to start stuff on your Discord server. What the hell? And to think I was going to work with you again? Oh! Dude, I'm now being told you're trying to start stuff off on your Discord server. And to think I was going to work with you again. To think I would ever work with you again. I'm going to send serial killers after you someday. Mark my words. You sexually abused me and took advantage of me. You're going to receive justice for all the, your wrongdoings. It's all over your social media as I suggest you disappear before you disappear. I could bring you in a live stream before that. I want to launch later this month. What? And Zeke kind of starts going off. You har okay, you've harmed my life and left me with more trauma than I've had when I went on. What are you possibly talking about right now? You just threatened my life? Question mark. You're done for. I don't want to give a fuck N word. You're a dead man. Tell everyone. Because you, you've, okay, because you came on and received negative attention, question mark, and he says, you fucked me over, do you not get that? Uh, how, Caleb said, three question marks. You grabbed my dick and threw $50 at me because I wouldn't let you come on right away, question mark, took advantage of me, say hi to the police for me. Oh, so he's saying the molestation was that he touched his dick. Took advantage of me. Say hi to the police for me. More than that, I'm coming after your soul. Rotten hell. Caleb says, I have no idea what you're talking about. You seem to be having a... I have no idea what you're talking about. You seem to be having a manic episode. First of all, everyone always thinks everything is a manic episode. But he's definitely having something. Okay. Deny, deny, deny. Won't be able to do that on your deathbed, buddy. Caleb said, you're scaring me. I'm in mind to call the police about your for, for your threats on my life. This is not a joke, dude. This is not a YouTube video. He says, everyone will know the truth, and I hope you live in fear until the day I murder you. Call the... What the fuck is this? Who's Scott Schaefer, and why is he so bad at his job? General says Scott Schaefer surprised Zeke admitted to the death threats. Bro, what are we talking about? This is unhinged. Mental health and my love and compassion goes out to people who are losing their minds because it's so difficult. It is so difficult to be in that position. I wouldn't wish it on my worst enemy. Okay? But hello? Call the police. Do it. I already have. Truth of what? It's so obvious, Caleb. You're the real monster. Wake up. You need to change. You negatively leave an impact on the world and its people, I will purge you. Caleb said, I'd love to tell you what's so bad about me. If, if that's the case, I try to be helpful as I can to people. I receive an endless amount of messages each day from people who have turned their lives around from watching the show. And I actually wanted to help you and was giving you a clear path forward. Jesus. 
Nova says, I'm sorry, who the heck is this? Leo Skeppy? Stop it. <laughs> um, like, huh? That's, oh, I can't read this word. It's too, it's unclear. I, I can't tell what the script is. It says, uh, Caleb says, whatever you're going through right now, I hope you get the help you need. If anything I can do, please let me know. I have had a manic episode in the past, so I get it. Has he? I'm shopping right now. Sorry, you good. Okay, this was like time has passed by. My reception is bad right now. I don't think I can answer the phone. He said, you know you stole, cheated from me, right? You owe me money, fam. Thousands of dollars I won't, I won't negotiate. I met you a year ago. I think it's time you make things right. You really fuck me over, you know? <laughs> See, why would Caleb keep talking? Like he keeps, yeah. Izzy says Caleb needed to cease talking immediately when he th he's threatened death. Yo, Caleb is autistic. I'm sorry, he's something because he's not reading the room. He cannot read the room to save his life. He can't read the room when it comes to a dick joke and he can't read the room when somebody is threatening your life. Caleb, disengage. It's like this man cannot read the room. Disengage, block, a report to authorities. Disengage. What are you doing? Okay, you owe me money, blah, blah, blah. Okay, defam defamation on my name, cheating, stealing, not to mention everything else you've done. Do I need to publicly come after you or are you a man of his word? Hammer Media, pay $40. Your head on my shoulder and now that you, the viewer, know the situation in its entirety, warts and all, you can dive into the allegations alleged by Zeke. If you remember back to the audio recording I mentioned, uh, the video was posted about a year after the first shoot. Now we lack a couple key pieces of information that we could have made use of, uh, namely the money for the last few shoots and the missing texts that were conveniently not on Zeke's phone, but we could live without them. So other than Zeke getting offered plenty of opportunities, whether he wanted to stream, do OnlyFans, or make videos, Caleb seemed to only help Zeke consistently throughout their year exchange. And remember, there were three total videos that were uploaded about Zeke on Caleb's channel, arguably more airtime than most other guests Caleb bring in. So why is this relevant to the allegations? I'll be getting into that in my next video, dissecting the allegations and everything Zeke accused Caleb of doing and not doing. Now- What? I have to watch a second video? I don't want to do that. There may be a third video made, though that dives into two totally different people who thought the best way to make content is to piggyback off of false allegations while doing minimal to no effort on their part. Let me know what you guys think of this video. No, what I want to do... Um... Today will be okay, me. That's that video. I don't want that video. I want. Okay, so this is his his um. Oh, I guess it's okay. I want us to watch Zeke's video just to give him a chance to tell his story, and also. Uh yeah, let's see. Also, I don't think anyone on the internet knows how to handle mental health. The way people have, like, gone after Katie, I think, has been really gross. The way people are going to probably go after Zeke is probably really gross. Look, I don't do this in my time. I don't know about you. But I actually have grown out of this decision to, like, go after people on Twitter. I don't fight with people on Twitter. I certainly don't engage with people. I wouldn't leave a message on this man's YouTube channel. And I recommend you don't either. If You know, and I don't have an audience that I, like, quote, quote, send after people because that's just so immature. But I really think... Um, it is in bad taste to justify going after people that are obviously like mentally unwell. It feels too much like punching down. I mean, you can punch, you know, go for Pearl Davis and go for Sneeko and go for all these other fucking people. I don't care. And I love Sneeko. You know, I do. <laughs> I'm rooting for Sneeko. Okay. But to be better one day, but like, okay. But like, don't go to their channels and be like, blah, blah, blah. like, come on. You don't have to do that. You don't, I'm not telling you what to do with your life. But, like, I just think it's not very mature. Okay. I just think it's – and I'm very immature. But, like, I just – I don't want to – okay. So I don't, I already saw the comments on Zeke's video. That's why I said it. Where he's like, dude, you're being such a child. Get real. You're fucking crazy. You're mentally unwell. Don't, then why are you messaging him? If you think he's mentally unwell, why are you going to his video and telling him he's mentally unwell? Ignore him. Shh. Shh. Okay, this is Caleb himself. I'm um, Caleb. God, this is Zeke himself telling his story. <clears throat> um, hello. Uh, I'm Ezekiel's. Uh, maybe you know me as Zeke. 
maybe you know me as Stevon or Stevon Zeke or Stev. I'm going to speed him up um, just a bit. I'm Zeke from the financial videos. It's a character. It's, um, I don't think people know that. that it if it's a character, then you're not really in need of financial help and you don't need to work with him and you can move on. Which part is a character? That's the question. Because if it is a character, which part is the character? Is the part where you got kicked out of your mom's house a character? Is the part where you quit school a character? Is the part where you can't keep a job a character? Is the part where you have an OnlyFans that said you don't want to do OnlyFans a character? It was a back... It's a reality TV show. And a lot of people hate me because of the character I played on there. But um, I'm here right now to tell you all that, um, to come out about... Um, him sexually abusing me um so he knew everything about my financial situation he knew what i was going through he knew how much money i was making everything right and he kept offering me to do only fans or not not just only fans he kept asking about only fans and i was like hey i'm straight i'm straight stop asking i'm not interested I here's his link tree Oh, hold on. It might be OnlyFans. I'll, I'll open it on a different tab. Okay. Ezekiel's kick.com, Venmo, cash, join his server. Venmo, Ezekiel's.com. Okay, let me look at the Ezekiel's.com. Okay, he's not paying for his domain anymore. Pay me on Cash App. Ooh, Cash App. Also an interesting decision to have in your bios because it screams, I don't have a real job, so I need you to give me money which is interesting. Tip jar, Ezekiel's, granted, donation support. So basically it's all like, just give me money for nothing I'm providing you. We love that. Instagram, TikTok, Twitch, Zeke, King of Cool. Are any of these? Okay. Reddit. I'm not seeing an OnlyFans here, but I don't know if he called it something different. And therefore... Okay, I'm not seeing an OnlyFans on his link tree right now. He's got like 20 things though. Holy shit. So I don't know if I'm missing it somehow. Tip jar, Ezekiel's. Okay, not available. The store is not available. Okay, there's no listing. So even his listings for things are empty. Um, okay. I'm not seeing an OnlyFans, so he might not have one here. He does have a kick. Um, and it has nothing on it. So his kick has nothing on it. Venmo, pay me, cash app. Interesting. So he has all the ways to pay him and none of the content to provide. His YouTube channel is the one. Okay. Even his TikTok has nothing on it. Okay. Interesting. Yeah. So e-begging. Yeah. Annoying. Gross. Yeah. No, no, no. Not cute. Okay. So this is his YouTube channel with 300 uh followers subscribers and 5000 views on this video from July 4th 2023 2023 wait what are we in 2023 oh we're in 2024 i know what year we're in shut up <laughs> okay i don't do that i don't do that and he kept asking he kept asking and um well we know he asked a couple times but then he stopped asking so we saw the text messages, right? The only reason I really worked with him is because, well, he looks like a professional financial video guy, right? Um, but the only reason I worked with him is because I needed exposure. I really don't know how to get my name out there. Um, I've been trying to be consistent online with my own posting and creating my own stuff. Um, that's besides, the, I mean, that's why I'm on the videos. Like, it's obvious that I'm there for attention. Yes, but like, getting attention without having any content for people to follow is like it's like the people who joy love is blind because they want to get internet famous but they like end up being the bad guy on the show it's like this isn't going to help you have like a good reputation with the internet how are all these people so desperate for views and clout and don't want any of the consequence that comes with it or any of the work that goes into it um and and so multiple times he, he docs Caleb as well. I haven't seen any of that. Did he? Had texted me, hey, I have this opportunity, this guy, blah, 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 this guy. Um, and this guy was him. This guy was uh, him. And he was like, are you? Uh, but we don't know that. I don't have any proof of that. Are you interested on guy and guy and all this? I was like, no. And I kept having to change the subject. The second time we filmed, um, he had asked, uh, he had told me about previous, like a previous 
TV show or a reality, like a, a thing where they were going to film uh, people and their daily lives. And I was like, okay, like, cool. Like, that'd be streaming. Like, I would have my own stream show. Like, I would have my own TV show. And I mean, yeah, they just don't think that far enough. They don't. They don't think a far ahead of it at all. Did you hear him? Oh, he said we'd ha I'd have my own TV show. That's not what he said, bro. It never. I, that's why I kept talking to him because he never. He kept saying the opportunity would come for me. He wanted me to do it, and then he never gave me the chance. Okay, but based off the text messages, see, that's what I'm saying. Like none of this is true. Man, there's always this person in the group. There's always this person in the group, bro. There's always that person who's a leech, doesn't do anything on their own, e-begs, asks bigger content creators to like give them a boost, has nothing to, to provide their audiences. Bro. It's like, there's always this person. And you got to see them coming. This is, if I can give you any tools in life, it's to be able to see these people coming before they hit your life because they will ruin your life. They will ruin your life. They try so hard to ruin your life because they have nothing going on in theirs. I'm serious. I would, I would, oh my God. I'd rather deal with so many other kinds of people. These people are the worst. They are some of the like worst kinds of people. I'm sorry. They just are. Alex says, Kayla posted, this man has posted my address and has threatened to kill me multiple times. I've blocked him everywhere, but he always finds a way to get to me. Yeah. They're like, he's basically a stalker. You know what I mean? He'll make videos about him. He'll talk about him. He'll play victim, but he has like absolutely nothing to offer. He reminds me a lot of my stalker, which is why I just like love and compassion. It's mental health. This is just like an unhinged person. And look, you're a biological creature on, on earth. It's going to happen. Your parents might not have anything to do with it. Like you might have so much wrong with you and you're not going to get the help you need. And like your parent, his mom kicked him out. I always think that's interesting when your parents kick you out. Because yes, sometimes your parents do kick you out because they hate you and they're horrible people. And sometimes you're the horrible person. And plus, he's an adult. He's an adult. He is 19. He has, you know what I'm saying? Like, yes, your mom could be a horrible person. But given the context of Zeke's character, it seems to be a Zeke problem. Um, in the original posting, I'm not really after the money. I'm after him losing his platforms because of what he's done. And like, it's just negative. Like, are you serious? You can't. And then they take the moral high ground and they pretend they're better than everyone else. I don't know why Scott Schaefer with 100,000 plus subscribers ever thought to take this man's side. What are you doing? What are you doing? Watch, you can't tell that he's like a weirdo. He's a fucking weirdo, bro. He's a fucking pervert. Um, that, that's, that's why I was so angry in all those videos. That's because it's just ridiculous. I can't wait to get interviewed so I can get my story better together because i've never talked to anyone about this i've it's all been in my head i hadn't known what to do i mean i'm a i i don't know what to do man um i'm not mentally ill stop saying that uh everyone on reddit was saying that because of the way i'm posting things i'm posting things for for drama i'm posting things for drama because hey you know what's a really good idea if you're um a victim of molestation is to post things for drama and associate it with your story do you know what's definitely a good idea is to say this person molested me and also I'm posting things that are fake for drama and I'm not actually mentally ill. I'm doing it for show. You know what really convinces us that you definitely are a victim of essay is you admitting that you're mixing in an essay story with a fake story. People saying you're mentally ill is actually giving you a lot of Le what are we doing? We're giving him a lot of compassion and leeway. We're actually like giving you a way out and you're not taking it, which is kind of mentally ill or a lack of introspection. Now, is he a one or is he mentally ill? Or maybe he's just a 2C and doesn't understand. Hey, you need attention. These motherfuckers are out here disregarding my story because they, they don't like me. Simple as that. Let's, let me show you the Instagram. So, I mean, I really am an artist, and so that's how I chose to do this. Yo! I'm going to kill you as in I'm going to dethrone you. I'm not going to let you have your, your little your platform anymore, bro. David versus Goliath. It's over 850,000 followers. 750, I don't even know, man.
So he, here he's, he doesn't pay shit. He pays, are you serious? $50 to get shamed to, to tell you you're someone who you're not because that's all he does. He can, he's a bully. He's a big time bully, bro. And so that $50 for gas, that's what happened. Um, let me tell y'all what happened. So he kept asking, Hey, well, you know, only fans, you want to do this? You want to do that? No, no, no. I needed money. Right? So I was like, sure. You want to touch my leg? That's what he told me. He was like, how about this? How about this? I'll take a 10 second video of me touching your thigh. I don't even have to move. He's just, he, he put his hand on his thigh and look, I'll show you right now. He was like, okay, how about this? Uh, he, cause he kept asking and I was like, no, 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 no. Like stop asking. I've never been in a situation where a man won't let you say no to him where he forces you on, on like, I don't know. So he was like, how about this? You let me just, let me touch your leg. I'll give you a hundred dollars instead of the $50 that was original. You're saying Caleb paid a hundred dollars to touch your leg. I mean, do we believe this? I don't want to discount a victim's story, but like, I just don't believe this. I was like, fuck, dude, like 10 seconds? Like shit, 50 bucks, 50 bucks, bro? Like to like, to like get touched? Hell yeah, right? Hell yeah. No, no. Yo, he kind of looked like Sneeko right there just for a second. Just for like a second, his like facial expression. I'll give you $100 instead of the $50 that was original. I was like, fuck, dude, like 10 seconds? Like shit, 50 bucks, 50 bucks, bro? No, like does that look like Sneeko? <laughs> Just the bottom part of his mouth. That's so to, funny. Like, to like get touched? Hell yeah, right? Hell yeah. No, not hell yeah. But so I was like, this fucking guy, he won't leave me alone. I'll, I'll just, you know what? An extra 50 bucks. He's just going to, he's just, he's going to, he said he was going to put his hand on my leg, right? And take a video. And I was like, okay, okay, but fine. Let's do it. You want, you want, I'll give you what you want. And so I was comfortable doing that. Um, I, I was also comfortable maybe doing like nude photography, but I'm, I'm a model. Why wouldn't I be comfortable with that, right? I'm not comfortable with being touched. That's a difference. That's why I was- Do we believe this? Like, it's hard to believe him. He just sounds like every fucking liar I know, bro. He sounds like every fucking liar I know. So I don't know if this is my bias playing into it, but it does. It sounds like every liar that I know, this is how they talk. This is their, like, the way their totality is. You know what I mean? This is how their evidence presents. He just sounds like every, like if I was to put him in a category, I'd be like, ah, you're lying. I know I can't, like, you know, you're just, you're lying. I don't, mm, no. Like if he was one of my callers, I would refund him and tell, and tell him we're not doing calls, blocked. Or I would take his money and say blocked. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm sorry. I don't, with peace and love, I just don't believe him. I don't want the worst for him. I'm not going to send him bad messages. I don't think you should either. I just think that, it doesn't feel like this is an honest story. And I really do think people who lie like this have problems. And so like, don't go bully him. Don't, don't go, don't write on his messages. You know, you're mentally ill. It's like telling a fat person they're fat. It's like people know what they are, even if they won't say it out loud. Eugenia Cooney knows she's underweight, guys. You don't have to tell her. You know, like all those people that write messages to Eugenia Cooney that are mean, you're not a good part of society, bro. I mean, everyone's kind of good, but like, you're not my favorite. I don't think you're my favorite part of society. You know what I mean? Tuesday said lying about what? That he was touched? Yeah. Do you think he's lying? I mean, he's lying about other things. So it makes sense that he would lie. And he admitted to lying. He said, yo, I'm not crazy. I'm not mentally ill. I'm posting for clout and views, which means he's exaggerating things, which means like he's already admitted, like, you know what I mean? So is he lying about the, that's the problem when you lie so much, it would make sense that you would also lie about being touched. I mean, lots of people lie about lots of things. Lots of, like, it just, it is normal for people to lie, guys. Humans lie. They lie about everything. They lie about all kinds of things. You know what I mean? What was the video for? It wasn't a video. He's saying when he was at Caleb's house, Caleb trapped him in his house and knew he had no money to go home. So he said, Caleb told him, I'll give you $50 for gas if you let me touch your leg. And then he touched his penis instead. That's what he's accusing Caleb of. Yeah. But General says Caleb claims he was never alone with Zeke and someone else can vouch for their interactions, but it would also be possible for that person to lie for Caleb. That's true. That is true. That's the problem is like, who's lying? That's, that is a huge problem, right? Okay, let's talk about OnlyFans. Let's talk about these other models. Let's talk about all this shit because that's the opportunity I thought he was offering when really he was just trying to get in my pants and be a fucking pervert. Like he was using his platform, his, his power over me because he knew how much money I had. He knew that I didn't have money. He knew that I didn't have a fucking shit. Once I got to San Antonio, that those $50 he gave me for that video, for the exposure that I was getting, that I was getting paid in, that I wouldn't have any money when I got home. And you know what? He didn't even give me the $50. He, after, after I, when I, so, so he locked me in his house, right? And then he locked me in his bedroom. 
And then he was like, okay, don't worry. Wait, where'd the bedroom come in? Because he told Scott Schaefer in the video that he locked him in his house. But now he's saying he locked him in the bedroom? And did he call 911? Did he report it? Did he tell anyone? And I'm not saying that's always evidence. Like, lots of victims don't report it to the cops, you know, because the cops suck at their jobs. But not all cops, just most cops. Okay. Mm -hmm. Other people have done this with me. Uh, there's been other people. Like, he, he manipulated. He also said $100 for a leg touch on video. That's what I heard. Damn it. No, I don't know what was the video. See, I can't tell. Is he changing his story now? Because we've watched three videos. This is our third video now. Hmm. I wouldn't call paid acting lying. I don't think any of us would call that lying. But he himself keeps going back and forth about what was fake and what wasn't fake. And then he told us a story that the text messages disprove. So it's it's how he's telling the story, right? The paid acting isn't the lying part, right? Belated and gaslight lit me into everything. And he was like, um, you don't look so comfortable. Are you, are you, have you, are you okay? Blah, blah, blah. And I was like, oh, okay. If I just want to get over with because I want money, right? I don't have, I work. Like, I don't think people understand how hard I work, but. Um, but like, do you work? Because, like, do you work, though? Um, so, the f just the simple fact that he pressured me into, into, into doing something I really didn't want to, just, that's what pisses me off. And then the fact that he did it, when, so let me show you. He, he was, he was touching my leg. I have trauma from this, by the way. I have, like, energetic, like, body trauma. My body. You should probably go to therapy, bro. But he went to a psychic and said, right? Like, he was, gra he was touching my leg, right? Okay. 10, 9, 8, 7. Hey, buddy. So he was willing to sell his body for money. Is that what I'm hearing? So what I'm hearing is for $100, he was willing to be a sex worker for a second or like sell his body for a second. You know, everyone's got a price. This is a big philosophy conundrum. They say everybody has a price. And I would say I there are some things that you can't pay me enough for. And people don't believe you because... They see time and time again that for the right price, people will do something. And that's interesting. I find that really interesting. So the question I would ask yourself, like I would meditate on this, what is your price, right? Because I always wonder this, like when people say like everybody has a price and I'm like, no. They're like, come on, Brittany, you would do this for $5 million. I was like, what do I need money that bad for? And someone will say, well, you've never been someone who didn't have money. Are you telling me to sell my soul for money? Is that where your morals are? Because I could just die instead, girl. Why not just die? Well, you value your life so much you're willing to fucking get traumatized over $5 million? Or you're willing to throw away your dignity for $5 million? Who cares about money, bro? You could live a perfectly good life making middle, middle class living, like, stressful, but it's life. You know what I mean? Sierra says, does he work hard in the sense that a neurodivergent people work hard just to live a normal life? Is that what he meant by work? I don't know. Because he said he also didn't have a job. And he said he was living with his grandma. So I don't know if he actually has a job. You know what I mean? He clearly does. He did He did that job three times. And finding acting gigs, I imagine, is a hustle. That doesn't mean you work hard. Working hard is actually going to work. It's actually working and paying your bills. You're not working that hard if you're like not contributing to the household if you're not paying your bills if you're like leeching off other people he literally keeps saying he has no money because he's not working so you working and pretending you're like trying to get acting this is another type of category of person that's usually this person i'm working really hard i'm trying to find a job i'm doing really a lot but you're not you're not doing any of it you're not actually doing it then there are the people who are actually applying to 100 jobs a day walking from job to job working their best trying their hardest but then there are people who lie and go oh i've been working really hard i've been trying to get a job no you haven't bitch you've been sitting at home his screen time was eight hours he showed caleb i have no job i have no life i'm sitting at home all day okay 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 i'm just saying like he seems to be the category of person who's probably not the best narrator, in my opinion. Ready, set, six, five, four, three. Oh, hey, stop. 
I stopped him. And then he was like, what's wrong? Oh my goodness, what did I do? Blah, blah, blah. He started, he started playing victim. And I was like, this fucking guy. I didn't know what to do. I hadn't been in that kind of situation before. That's why I let him because I didn't know what kind of situation, like I didn't know what situation I was in. I was like, I like, I didn't know. Like, I, it didn't feel real. And so after that video, I didn't really want to talk to him anymore. I, didn't, I was, whatever, like, I didn't, I was lost in my own head, dude. And it's just, he knows what he did. Look, let me show y'all. On his Instagram, after I told him, hey, you hurt me. You did this to me. You mean after you threatened his life? Which is like, I don't know. Can you threaten the life of your, no, you really can't. That's the problem is like, is threatening the life of a person who attacked you valid? I don't know. That's kind of like a weird argument to make. Look how bad he looks. Hmm. looks he looks awful so now he's going after his looks are you is this your are you just making fun of how your alleged molester looks like what's happening what is this right now that was that was after i told him like you know you sexually abused me right here's the chats less than 200 dollars to get touched 50 dollars. he didn't even pay me the 100 dollars. less than 200 dollars to get sexually abused and taken advantage of do I publicly come after you or are you a man of your word? So he threatened him and extorted him for money. So he blackmailed Caleb for money and said, do you, are you going to pay me or am I going to expose you? That's what he decided to do. He's blackmailing Caleb saying like, hey, if you don't pay me, I'll expose you. Does that sound like a victim to you or does it sound like a fucking psychopath? Because I stopped him. He was like, oh, you only get $50 now. And then he made me sign the NDA and then all this shit. He's trying to. Oh, there's an NDA involved? Oh, I would love to see that NDA. I would love to see a lawyer get involved. Let's go. Look, if Caleb's a predator, take him down, girl. If Caleb is a predator, take him down. There's an NDA involved? Where's any of this paperwork? Because I would love that. I would love it. Blow Caleb's fucking career to the, you know what I mean? But if there's an NDA involved, get a lawyer involved. You got a big case on your hands. You know a lawyer would take this shit. They do it pro bono because they know that you're going to get paid out. Big YouTuber connected to Graham Stephan, connected to all of these very famous people. Let's go. I'm going to keep it hush, hush. That's why I'm like, what do I do? I don't know what to do. And then everyone online is like, go to the, uh, go to the public, uh, police, go to the public, uh, police. And it's like, fuck the police. They ain't doing shit. You have to take it to fuck the police. Like drama alert, bro. Take it to scarce. Take it to scarce and Keemstar. Nah, I'm sorry. Bullshit, bro. None of this is real. I'm sorry. Scarce and Keemstar, you're a bad person. You're a bad person if you, like, not literally. I don't really believe in bad people. But you know what I mean? You're a bad person. You're kind of a bad person if you look, what did I say? When you go to Keemstar. I'm sorry, I'm blowing up my mic. You go to Keemstar. You know what I'm saying? Wouldn't Zeke get sued if there's an NDA? Well, I think Caleb's going to go after him legally. You know what I mean? <sighs> fucking the other financial youtubers because this is the truth it's not allegations it's the truth this is what he did to me and and so the first he he was supposed to send me the, the first video i was supposed to get thousands of dollars and and he, yeah i would like to know if caleb ever followed through on that if there was a contract there should have been some co sort of contract or some sort of signing nobody has shown us a contract isn't that weird like nobody has shown us any contracts about anything you know, General says, I'm trying to make space for the possibility that Zeke is an imperfect victim, but he makes it difficult. Yeah, I mean, same. I would love to see receipts. I would love to see contracts. I would love to see something. I would love to see him go to the law. I would love to see something. But it's just like something here isn't adding up. He didn't. This is how much he paid me. So he lied. Uh, it's just unbelievable that he has the followers and platform he does. Um... Let me, let me show y'all everything. Where was the thousands of dollars been mentioned concretely? Well, that's the problem is like, is, uh, they keep showing this video of how he was going to make money via AdSense for the year. But like, do we have that in writing? You know what I mean? Do we have that as truth? We just saw it on a post and we saw it in a message, but like we need that. Um, I think, I think we need to be a little bit more for it to be legal, right? Like, I don't know. That's the problem. It's like, I'm a little confused. Did he ever send the, the payment? 
Again, Caleb should not talk about any of this publicly until his lawyer says it's okay. You know what I mean? What is this this is for the drama, by the way. Like, literally, I'm doing this for... He said, clearly, I'm doing this for the drama. I could bring you on stream before, then launch this month. Dude, I'm being told now that you're trying to start shit on Discord. And he go and he's like, he's like, I'm doing this for the drama. Which part is for the drama? The music? Or this, where he says you sexually abused me? See how I'm getting, I'm going to get fucking triggered. I'm not literally triggered, not medically triggered, just like annoyed. Okay. Which part is for the drama? Explain it to me because I'm autistic. I'm not autistic, but explain to me like I'm autistic. Okay. He just said, okay, I'm obviously doing this for the drama. Which part is for the drama? Is it the music? No, like, <laughs> everything. So he made this public and he posted it. This is for the drama, by the way. Like, literally, I'm doing this for a show. Like, this is interesting. I'm doing this for the show. Doing what for the show? Yeah. Alice says the fact that he keeps talking about money and not the fact that he was abused is worrying. Well, okay. So again, like I want to know what part is for the drama. Because I'm an actor. Jeez, I got to turn down his stupid music. Okay, so he's like, I'm going to kill you. I'm going to serial kill you. Is that the part that's for the drama? Because he's an actor? Guys, he just said... I'm playing this up for the drama because I'm an actor. This is his abuse al allegation. He's he. This is his messages to Caleb. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Not because I received negative attention, because he he fucked me over. He took advantage of me. The whole time he was trying to fuck me. He would. I think he was going to break me. Actually. I don't know because <sighs> this guy's so bad at internetting. On the 4th of July, hold on. I will. No. Yeah, special holiday episode, guys. Um, where am I looking for? Uh, yeah, here. He on the 4th of July a year ago. This was after the first video. And this is after I told him I wasn't interested in doing any OnlyFans. He said that there might be a TV show. I was like, okay, cool. Like, I'd be interested in having my own TV show. Yeah. No, and you fucking... Did you hear him? Did you hear it? There might be a TV show I'm working on. And he goes, yeah, I would love to have my own TV show. Don't... That's not what Caleb said. Bro, do you hear me? Do you hear this? This is what I'm saying. He's crazy. Caleb said, oh, I have a TV show possibly in the running. You might be able to be on it. And the guy goes, yeah, I'd love to have my own TV show. That's not, he make. do you know what I'm saying? It's unhinged. He's making it about him. He's saying, oh, I got my own. That's not what Caleb said in the messages. He said, I'm working on a project. Maybe you can be a part of it. It's not your TV show. That's what I'm saying. Habibi, you're unhinged. And so that's why I kept talking to him because the TV show, the TV show. And look how he texts, unless you're not interested anymore. You're asking me to drive three hours on holiday when I have plans. This is 4th of July. You see, and it ugh, I don't need, y'all go read it for yourselves, man. But look, as well as not even, uh, not, as well as me not even knowing what I'm getting into because you won't give me any further details or who your friend is, which is him. He's his friend. He's covering for himself. Um, he's at, he's acting like a nice person. Y'all want to hear that? Y'all want to hear that voice audio? Y'all want to hear that voice audio? Oh, we heard this. This Goodness is like me. the. Just to show. Yeah. Oh, yeah, he definitely has ADHD, right? This kid, he's been twitching, bro. You know what I mean? Oh, y'all, it's real. Just to scroll through everything. I'm not pissed. I'm disappointed in everyone. I'm disappointed in his community. I'm disappointed in the people who have commented negative things to me. Um... There's more text before this. I just think they're on my other phone. I don't know. Hey, sorry. Maybe this will be easier if I just send a voice thing. Um, so we've heard this before. This is what got played in the last video. I, I think I understand where you're coming from. Uh, I, and that, that's why I offered to cover your gas because I know that it's kind of inconvenient. I just think uh, from our conversation the other day. like, Oh, no, this is a different one. You don't have to do anything. You don't want. No, no, no. This is the same one, right? Hold on. I can tell you're a cool dude, and I want to, like, if there's anything, any connection. We have heard this before. ...that I have, which I've built a lot of connections in Austin. Mm -hmm. Anything yeah, that I'm able to kind of link you, you to, you know, I definitely want to be helpful. 
the main reason I haven't wanted to have this conversation via text is, sorry, I had to burp. Um, one, I'm not used to OnlyFans, <laughs> straight up. Uh, it's not really my scene. Uh, you know, I'm a personal finance dude. I don't really know anything about that. Uh, two, real. I'm straight. I'm like 90% straight. I've definitely no, around because I'm like, open-minded. Um, and you know, when you get drunk, whatever. But you know, so, and this is like a, you know, a man on my was like, not many people know uh, this about me. But essentially, I think, a well, the conversation I have with him, the pay will be dependent on what you're willing to You've do. You've already heard all this. He would know about any of these. He would like to do, not like we're friends or race would be hit it. Uh, you know, him, he could talk to you of that, and you I'm I think dead. Just because, um, yeah. Okay, we've already heard all this. I mean, that's easier you now. I have a better have understanding of what it is. Anyone? He didn't tell me really what still he updates wanted. Where, and I was know, like, I... Why is he playing two audios? He's so bad at this. Probably Film wouldn't be too interested in that. that. So like, it's just like... I, I'm trying to maintain People a healthy business relationship with him so that I can back use back him. I'm manipulating him because he's manipulating me. You get, you get, game is game. Right game now. is game. But, um, but, um, I mean, see, I'm trying to ask, like, oh, I'm trying to show him, hey, I don't want to do this. Stop fucking asking me. What about the other girls? Stop, like, you know what I mean? Like, leave me alone. He's like, oh, no worries, blah, blah, blah. And then he drops this. What would you be willing to do with him? Get felt up, maybe a blowjob? I can't believe I'm typing these things. Nasty man. <laughs> Nasty man. No. Why is he messaging him? That's what I'm saying. This is so inappropriate. He's like messaging him while it's happening. Yeah. Yeah, I think he's just kind of unhinged. Oh, no, seriously. Like, he's weird. I don't, like, can y'all not tell he's weird? Like, he makes sexual jokes in all his vi videos. Like, the reason people like him is because they feel better about themselves by watching other people get put down and him bullying them and saying, well, you fucked up and you did all these wrong decisions. Oh, this is so like, on, this is so like virtue signally to me. I don't like it. My brain doesn't like any of this. My brain really doesn't like Zeke. I don't like him. I don't think he seems reasonable. I don't think he feels safe. I definitely wouldn't want him around me. Um... He's yeah, he's Discord says he seems very troubled. Yeah, he just seems really troubled. Which happens, you know, could be genetics, could be environment, could be mental health, could be trauma. He could just be a fucking bad person. You know what I mean? And bad is subjective. So, you know, Brittany's version of a like a, a category of person I don't want to deal with. This is like the person in the tribe that fucks everybody over. Because like you're not being reasonable. Okay? You're just like not being reasonable with anything you're doing, you know? Uh, Amber says, can you not tell you're weird? Pop meat kettle. I know. It's like he doesn't think he's weird. That's what I'm saying. Like, bro, we're all weird. And making sex jokes can be weird, can be not weird. Depends on the culture in the bubble. Depends on how you do it. I've never noticed that Caleb Blake makes a lot of sex jokes. And he even said he didn't watch Caleb's show. So I'm very confused on how these people have very large opinions about Caleb's show. But I don't even think they watch it. You know what I mean? I'm just telling you. I don't. Tuesday said this is literally how all these men get away with these creating these environments for decades and getting kids into foot fetishes. I don't know if you're talking about Caleb Tuesday, but I think you're wrong. I think this is a convenient way to assume that's happening. And maybe I'm wrong. I just don't think Caleb is doing it. I don't think Caleb is Weinstein. I don't think he's Nickelodeon. I think he's probably not. And if he is, then we should out him. But I think the evidence coming out doesn't make any sense. The people who are making videos of him aren't including all the text messages, all the context. If you look at the way that he is acting right now, this guy, Zeke, super inappropriate. He was very inappropriate in the messages. Caleb was keeping a distance, was trying very hard to have a collaboration um, that was like reasonable. So I just, I think, I think you're wrong, but I think your heart is in a good place. I think we want to protect people from predators, but we also want to protect people from false accusations. And so it's hard to know without the proper evidence. But right now I'm not seeing, I'm not seeing enough evidence to name Caleb as a predator. You know what I mean? General says, to be fair, Caleb did have some BDSM merch. I mean, like, great. I am a BDSMer. I love BDSM. Tuesday says, did you not hear the voice recording? I've heard it three times now. And I'm a sex worker. So if you think sex work is unethical, if you think doing sex work is bad, then I'm sure you have that opinion. But like the video, the audio evidence as told him he could consent not to do it. You don't have to do it. You know what I mean? Um, he was a little awkward, but he gave him, he told him he didn't have to do anything he didn't want to do. That's how sex work negotiations can work, though I think they work usually better in different structures. Um, yeah, I don't know if you're just like, I, I don't know what the video, the audio seemed fine. 
like a little awkward, definitely like awkward. Uh, I think it was inappropriate that Caleb was doing the negotiations on behalf of his friend. I think that was the weirdest part. But otherwise, uh, sounds like a normal thing. If you do X amount of things, you get paid more or less. That's usually how it goes. Uh, kink.com, the more extreme you're willing to go, the more you get paid. Like, that sounds pretty normal. Um, yeah, I'm not sure. The video was definitely awkward. The audio was awkward. But I'm, again, predator is a very strong word to make about somebody who's a sex worker. Because you could just be doing sex work and you might not understand it because you don't do sex work. These are all adults. They're all consenting. Nobody's forcing them to be in the same room together. Um, <clears throat> you know what I mean? So, yeah, I think Caleb needs to have better boundaries. I think he obviously needs to work on that. Let's finish out this video so we can end this. I'm better than you. Not that he's better, but like it's ego. It's all all control. It's all a power game. I can... It's so obvious. I don't understand how people... It's it's really not. I think this is a normal narrative that liars do, is liars will claim a, a power imbalance. And look, I feel like I'm very empathetic and sympathetic to real victims because I think we need to be in the world, but I'm just not getting anything authentic from him. And maybe I'm wrong. I would love to be proven wrong. I would love to see just something that makes sense in this story. You know what I mean? I haven't come out and like made videos about that and shit. I, like, I think it's disgusting. He has a platform and that's what I mean by murder him. That's why I mean, I'm going to kill you because I'm going to end your career. I'm going to not like, you don't deserve, you don't deserve your followers. Yeah. Nobody deserves anything. Bye. Yeah. See, unhinged, unreasonable, not okay. Not okay. Like it's not okay. I don't think that narrative is it okay. I don't think the way he talked was okay. I don't think anything about the way he's expressing himself is okay. And I think the way that um, now that we've seen so much more of the evidence in context, I'm just not seeing any pattern of abuse from Caleb. I think Caleb needs to have better boundaries. I think he needs to be more professional. I think everyone around him needs to be more professional. Just a reminder that no one engaging with Ze uh, Caleb has been professional. Zeke wasn't professional. That group chat with the musicians was not professional. No one is acting professionally. So I'm not really sure what anyone is talking about, right? Tuesday say there is a power imbalance. Do you know there are power imbalances with parents and kids? Should people not have kids because there's a power imbalance? It was completely inappropriate to position sex and especially in that sexual type of way. Sounded like he got off asking alone. Um, well, it wasn't for Caleb. It was for a friend. So I think you maybe missed some context. Caleb was not engaging. Caleb listened to his consent and backed off. Caleb, as far as we know in terms of the evidence, never pursued him sexually. There was no evidence that Caleb pursued him sexually. So you need to give evidence of that. Caleb was never talking about himself as far as we know. Caleb ignored the text messages, stopped texting him over a period of time. Zeke eventually sought him out over and over again and bothered and pestered him. You know what I mean? So I don't know what you're talking about. Okay? Like, I don't think there's an inappropriate power imbalance between two adults who engage sexually if both adults are of sound mind and can consent. I don't think it's inappropriate. Personally, I think you are missing some of the context of the video, or maybe I am, but this just isn't enough to condemn Caleb yet. You guys are going to have to give me more than that. Sorry. You're going to have to give me more than that. There's just too much uh, that Zeke took out of context or lied about or twisted a narrative of. We have no proof that Caleb was ever engaging with Zeke sexually or ever pursued him sexually. And so, yeah, Zeke was the one who wanted to do OnlyFans. Zeke is the one who reached out to Caleb. Zeke is the one who wanted to possibly do collabs. So, you know, Star says there seems to be very internet. It seems to be very internet to say power imbalance. Yeah, well, I think people don't understand that, like, what is a power imbalance, right? And when is it inappropriate? When it's inappropriately handled. Power imbalances naturally aren't necessarily negative. It's if you misuse the power imbalance, then it's negative. And the question is, when can you misuse the power imbalance? Well, when you do, right? You know, Bryson says, I can't understand defending this guy. He probably needs professional help, not the online validation of strangers. Yeah, probably. I know we all want to help and I know we want to look out for victims and I think we should. 
I think we should be very careful about malicious liars who are willing to play victim for clout, which does happen. Everybody knows a liar who will go this far and they often end up being very unhinged people. My stalker was very similar, played victim, made up thousands of stories about multiple people, had to be taken to court by multiple victims. It was a, such a mess. And it was very similar where they just like, they claim they have evidence and then they see the evidence and there's nothing. And then they claim things that couldn't even possibly be true. You know what I mean? They couldn't be possibly true. Like they accuse me of like sex trafficking them. Um, I'm literally like on the internet every day. I'm working every day. I never see you. How would I even have time? And also like who, I don't even have time to like brush my teeth. Like everybody relax. It's just like they'll make up the most salacious like accusations against you. And you're like, what are you talking about? And they're usually people who ask you for help. Help me. I need you. I need you. But then you notice that no matter how much you help them, they're always in trouble. That's the kind of person Zeke feels like. It feels like no matter how much help Zeke gets, he's always going to be in trouble. And that's a person who like got to, has to decide to help themselves because they'll drown you. They're the kind of people who are drowning. And when you go to save them, they pull you down with them. That's my assessment right now. I'm happy to be, you know, open-minded and change my mind on it. But Zeke feels like a person who's drowning and he's going to do whatever it takes to pull you down with him. That's what it feels like. That's my final say. Remember to eat the cupcake, everyone. Thank you, Alex, for the reminder in chat. Cupcake emoji in the chat, guys. Cupcake emoji in the chat. Okay, with that said, what I want to do is I want to give you some Elvin. Okay, let's go. What time is it? 1.30? I got to go. It's really late for me. I'll clip this and pull it up for people that missed the original part of the live show. But damn, this was wild, bro. Wild, bro. I, uh, I just think it's obvious that I think... um. Yeah. It's a bummer. It just really breaks my heart. But humans are evolved animals on a planet, in my opinion. And he is just this kind of category of person. Anyways, shout out to whoever is the actual victim in this story. So why's my life a mess? Please tell me Cause I'm sick of thinking Yeah, I'm sick of reaching out for the truth And living life as a fool Then 